when I got reincarnated as a spider with my goddess volume, 01 by Noel Alicia. Prologue. Hey, you there. You. The one reading this book right now. Have you ever wondered how a spider felt when you squashed it with a mop or a rolled newspaper just because it squatted somewhere or inhabited the tiny corner of your room? Summer vacation was close at hand and the school had just announced its emergency closure a week before the scheduled date. The weather that day was boiling and there was an endless desire to stay as cool as possible. My body was heating up, and I was sweating profusely because of the heat but one would be surprised to see me running along the corridor with a large blue colored box, the sticker of a munchkin cat with a thumbs up and a tinned bottle in its left hand. On the sides of the box, drinking the latest released cola with a refreshing touch of mint and sour coffee, was driving me crazy, as if it was surprised to see my jealousy and saying that why don't you go and get one for yourself. Was this my responsibility, or maybe the heat got to my head and running under the sun may even dry the sweat? No despite being a holiday there was no rest but an urgency to meet the deadline. If you look inside the box you will find lots of choco bars, cold drinks, instant noodles, potato chips and cake. Was it the preparation for a summer trip with family or friends the source of this chaos? Definitely not because I did not have the luxury to call someone my family. Both of my parents died in a car accident. You don't need to feel sorry for me because I was just six years old back then and was taken under the protection of my mother's only elder sister and her husband. At that time I used to five cry all the time but the moisture of tears in my eyes soon dried off and what remained was longing for affection and love which was met by the disgusted looks of my uncle and aunt. For them I was just a burden. A load that had nothing in his possession, a being that should not have existed. At first I was miserable and hurt but soon I stopped feeling anything when I learned that my uncle had his eyes on my parents' business company for a long time and now his happiness knew no bounds. But to stop the outbreak of gossips in society he had to take me under his care, as for friends, I had none. I entered my small room and placed the box on the chair and lying on the bed took a deep breath while one could only hear the creaking voice of the slow-moving fan and failing to find any window but gawk at a small hole in the left corner of the room where a tiny ray of light lit the undersized wretched cube. But for me it was the only place where I had known peace. It was devoid of any human greed and malice. What remained was not happiness or joy of freedom from outside noises but emptiness and loneliness. For the whole summer vacation I had taken the oath not to leave my room or step outside the house. I had already collected a bundle of manga and light novels to read and bunch of game which I bought at a very low price from a second hand shop. I was all set. Unfortunately I blew up all my pocket money I had been saving for six months. But there was no regret. If I could shut off myself from the world, it helps me to avoid the hateful statements of my uncle and aunt. Six. As my eyes rolled through the tattered ceiling it passed through a corner but halted and returned back, as if to report an anomaly, presence of an unidentified living being. It was a spider, an eighth-legged arthropod that belongs to the class of animals named Arachnida. A close inspection revealed a well-knitted small white cobweb, while the spider looked like a minuscule white speck on a brown sheet. I made a decision and announced it to be my roommate. It was a profitable one-sided agreed agreement. A win-win situation. While the spider gets a place to live and insects to feed upon, I would be saved from loneliness and most important of all rid of all the mosquitoes that disturbed me in my beauty sleep. One and a half month passed and it was a victory. All the conditions were met in Delhi. My roommate kept its end of the deal till the very end as per the agreement. But sadness was the only feeling that melted and dripped from my face. My days of peace were over and next day was school. Most of the student would hurry to finish their vacation work or contact their friends and discuss about how they cannot contain their excitement to meet their other friends. I am quite a studious child as a matter of fact and evidence to prove my point I completed my vacation work in the first week of holiday. Some may consider it a smart move for future plans, some may say to take it easy. But I just did it on instinct. Maybe a certain someone would call me and ask for a favor of lending them my homework. 7. And maybe we could become friends. It was a mere wishful thinking. Only my partner, Miss Ellie, the white spider, 
would understand me, even though we did not speak to each other but we could find solace in our own small world without any outside intervention or interference. Both of us were afraid from the outside gusty winds that can blow anyone away from their goal or perilous water that can drown anyone in their foolish desires. Both of us strived for a life of isolation and somehow appreciated a life devoid of authors' hate, love, affection, envy, care or anger. We were comrades accomplice and partners who shared same thoughts and aspire for same dreams. Ellie my best friend, I has made up my mind to keep Miss Ellie safe and stop others from killing or hurting her. If I had the opportunity to make any wish then maybe I'd ask for the universal rights of Spider. You must be thinking that I have gone crazy but soon you would realize, no I'm sure that you would join me in this campaign when I will be done with my story. I tore a sheet from back of a rough copy and jotted down the points which I and Miss Ellie agreed upon. It was daybreak when the alarm rang. I wiped off the drool from my face and the preamble addressed to the welfare rights of Spider which we drafted yesterday. Fifteen minutes later I was sitting at the back of the school bus alone while the school bus was filled with noises of students chattering and laughing together. 8. Chapter 1 Did I die in the first chapter? Suki Kondo Present Ma'am, I struggled to stand from my seat at the end of the classroom, taking care not to hit the shelf above my head and answered to the roll call. Even the teacher had difficulty in pinpointing my location. One may conclude there could be an optical illusion at work or the seat was totally in another dimension. But to shed light on your ignorance, the feeling was simple, as if I was just invisible to other people. My long dark black hair usually covered most of my face. I barely spoke in the class or participated in cultural activities. One would doubt my enthusiasm and blame me for my lack of interest. But you should not forget that these things are done in group and I was already considered an outcast, a nobody I in everyone's eyes. No one ever tried or bothered to establish relation with someone who always looked gloomy and had no care in world to look after their appearances. But this was actually the result of the isolation I faced. 9. From others because I transferred in this school during midterm examination just after I had lost both of my parents. Frustration and anger had overpowered all my other emotions and sadness had stripped me from the ability of making contact with anyone. My confidence stats were rolling with numbers in negative day after day. I may have been sad in the starting but later I got used to this silent treatment. I would go to school in the morning and quietly sit in my chair and spent all my remaining time in the library and borrowed books every week. After all I was a premium member of my school library. At dismissal I boarded the bus and came home. Even in the storehouse of my uncle's home in which I lived, there was nothing special to do. I read books, light novels, manga and played video games all day long and after dinner I would go to sleep. Not to mention I also like to read historical, biography, journals, research works and sometimes even philosophy. For some it might have been a dream come true, but if you would have noticed from the above description then, most of the days of my life I didn't spoke to anyone and sometimes I would forget or unable to recognize my own voice. 10. Moral Education Class one of the duties of a good citizen is to develop a proper standing in society and strive for equality, lending the weak a hand, abiding all the rules and regulation, taking care of your surrounding and forming good and healthy relationships with everyone is what will transform you into an ideal person. Whenever you find yourself in trouble you must always seek the help of people whom you believe in or respect the most. They can be your family member friends or even me. Instead of leading a lonely life you should move forward and look outside the box to find your worth, understand other people and aim for things that truly makes you feel happy. With these words my moral education teacher closed her book and stared at everyone's eyes in anticipation for something unique to happen. The class bell rang and maybe the class representative Homura Kenta took the hint of the eager face of the supposedly esteemed person in class. He stood up and started clapping and the class followed giving our teacher a standing ovation. The teacher smiled at everyone and walked out of the class. For some it would seem a touching scene. A class of students who had an unprecedented magnitude of admiration for their teacher and a teacher who was passionate to bestow every drop of their life experience to help her students. What a piece of crap. Tiru. It was so boring. 
I found those lines written at the end of our moral science book. 11. What followed was burst of laughter at the small exchange of words between Kenma, Sakamoto, Akane, and Ryuji. It was all a setup, a rehearsed plan, a necessary evil of society, a way of survival. While the students earned the teacher's favor, especially the class rep Kenta, and leniency in exam checking, the teacher gained respect points from students and increase in popularity status among other teachers and create a cool impression in front of principal to obtain an item called bonus paycheck or a permanent effect of increased payment or an abnormal status of holiday. It was recess and we were allowed to either eat in class or cafeteria or play sports on school playground after taking permission from the sports committee. Some students went outside with rackets in their hand to play badminton. Some formed groups among them and started criticizing the teacher and made fun of her oratory skills. Seeing that there was nothing unusual I entered my own small imaginary chamber free from all unnecessary talks and outside intervention. I took out a light novel from my bag and as I started turning its pages to find the bookmark, I wondered what it means to be an ideal person. Maybe it could be a role model, superstar, and sports champion, academic or maybe even a hero. Is being alone really a bad thing? It's not that I am unhappy with my present condition. If I want one thing it could be for everything to become static, to spend time all alone and do everything I like, no one to stop me. I believe that no one has the right to judge you if you want to remain isolated by choice and not forced into it. If being an ideal 12 person obligates one to form false relationship with others just to meet the requirements and approval of society, then it is better for me to be alone than indulge in those nonsensical activities. There was a sudden pause in my overflowing thoughts and a sheer pain and a feeling of fear filled my head. I looked up and focused my eyes in between the strands of hair which covered it and identified three of my classmates, Sura Kendo, Tama Donjo, and Saki Honda, the three class delinquents, or rather devils who finds joy in making other people life a mess. Saki putting more strain in her hand started pulling my hair a lot harder as if to gain my attention, while the other two stood smiling. I always wondered how I had wronged them that they felt a moral obligation to make my life hell. Once I found that all the screws that attached the desk to my chair were loose and on the verge of their falling. Someday I would find ants crawling out of my lunchbox which I prepared for myself in the morning. Sometimes I got scolded from my teacher because of the missing homework notebook from the staff room. Or someone would spray a jet of cold water on my head in toilet or spread some kind of jelly on my seat and recently the pair of sports shoes missing from my school locker was probably one of their adventurous and thrilling exploits too. Did you take my shoes? I looked down on the floor waiting for a reply. And what if I did? Are you going to complain? And where you don't need them? Right. You never attend physical education classes, do you? Sura shouted at me and with her eyes signaled Dharma. 13. It was true. I always took my leave from physical education classes because for the first part my body was weak and could not endure all the vigorous exercise which our new sports teacher made us practice. As for the sports I was the slowest runner in the entire class or maybe in the entire school. Even the team activities were traumatic because all the teammates would ignore me or otherwise kept their distance. If I screwed up then they would shout at me. So at the end I had to withdraw. What? Are you reading even during recess time? Tama snatched my book and shuffled through the pages, as if looking for my hidden notes and uncover my dirty little secrets. By the way I had none. Did you know your new shoes were a perfect fit? It was better than eating dust in a loner's locker. Don't you think girls? Teehee three of them started giggling. Hey, we need some money to buy lunch so why don't you lend us some? Haven't you heard teacher told that good students should help each other? Saki jumped straight to the point as always. Eh sorry. But I can't now. If I give you what I have at present then I won't he have any cash to spend on lunch till the next week. Words barely came out of my mouth. How could you refuse? Don't you see by helping us maybe your pathetic loner life could change? We will be your friends if you keep lending us money. Saki started pulling my hairs harder as if she wanted it to snap in two. Friends with these freaks. 
bullies who enjoy stealing, making fun of elders and indulge in gambling after school. Well it's million times better to remain a loner than to accept their absurd offer. 14. Anyone would have felt the same way I did. Frustration and anger had already crossed the red line but even a small show of these feelings on my face would make matters worse and so I held back. Even if I let my steam off, at the end I would be beaten to pulp by them after school. The weak will always be trampled and ostracized by the strong. There was no denying this fact in the current situation. Ah, no. I won't be able to lend you any. Sorry. I tried my best to pull back my hair but my strength was no match for the female brawler of our class. There was no doubt I was the weakest one. Whoa. There is a cute face under that unscrupulous bush of hairs. Since you are trying to hide it anyway, maybe giving you a scar on your pretty face won't hurt much. Sigura put her left hand in her side pocket of her skirt as if she was about to take out a knife and start slashing and waving around it like no one's boosiness. I almost started crying, tear rolled out through my eyes and stained the wooden desk. Tama eyes shone brighter than ever and she quickly tore some pages from my novel and held them in her hand in front of me. Suki, please don't cry. You see girls, how kind I am to my fellow classmates. Take it slowly the fun has just begun. All three of them started hooting and laughing much louder than before attracting everyone's unwanted attention. A gathering of oblivious spectators who are trying their best in pretending they haven't seen anything. Are you sure you don't want to hand over the money? Just because you have got a pretty face you think you can deny us? Are you looking down on us? Do you fantasize yourself a queen and consider everyone here beneath you? Why don't you speak? 15. Anything? Saki hands now moved to my collar and lifted me from my seat. Her strength was Herculean, there was no denying it, but one should not forget that a fragile girl was being choked in between her hands. Stop this at an instant otherwise I have to report it to the class teacher. Homura shouted at the three of them, you are no fun class rep. Saki threw me in my seat as if I was an empty can. Destined to be squeezed and tossed in the garbage. I don't think Suki has a problem here. See she isn't even fighting back or complaining. It's a small exchange of greeting between classmates. Girls let's leave. Suki I am sure we will have a nice talk soon and we'll be able to sort things out and strengthen our bonds. Then Tama slowly approached my ears as if to deliver a secret love message. Your cooperation in Futur will be greatly appreciated and if you value your well-being then make sure this commotion ends here. Tama slowly whispered in my ears, but her words left me with a sensation of being pricked by hot and cold needles. The three girls slowly walked outside through the door as if nothing had happened. The only thing that remained was silence, after Saki banged on teacher's desk before leaving and the ghastly scene of disarray chairs and benches which stood in their path. And this is ladies, how you maintain order at school. Homura spoke as if to vanquish the eeriness that lurked in the silence. Wow, Homura you are so cool. Class rep is the best. 16. Saki should be thankful to Homura for stepping in. The room was filled with praises made by the girls, Siaka, Akane and Seitumi that surrounded Homura. It was the clear perfect picture of bees buzzing around a sunflower. Thankful to him for what? I thought to myself. He only made the matter from bad to worst instead of completely resolving it. Making me look like a helpless kid in front of the whole class and earning praise of everyone just to quench his thirst of fame and popularity. Truth is no one cared about me. Not a single person stood from their seat to confirm my condition and reassure me. Complaining the teacher was useless, since they won't take action quickly but leave with a warning which only welcomed more trouble and beating from them. Bell rang and everyone settled in their seats, while I picked up my book in shreds, from the floor and dusted it. Soon the teacher came and classroom continued as usual as I quietly vanished from the corner of the room from mother's eyes as if nothing out of the ordinary had transpired. 17. The Time of Doom The last bell of the school rang. Everyone stood from their chair and said in unison. Thank you teacher. I put all the books in my school bag and when the class was empty I hurried out of the door to the school gate and boarded the old school bus which had a painted school emblem on both sides and name of the school painted in blue. 
As I stepped into the bus I saw the bus driver holding his head in both hands and a face filled with fatigue and eyes demanding sleep. It was clearly a sign of acute headache, while everyone was seated in front in groups and chattering various incidents that occurred in classroom and things they did during their summer vacation. Yes they were gossiping about me, even when they knew I was nearby, it didn't bother them in the least. I quietly covered my face with my left hand and took my seat at the back. It was the longest seat available in the bus but I was still sitting alone. After the teacher in charge counted the number of children till 20, she signaled the bus driver to move. There was no response. She yelled again. Yes, yes. The driver responded as if he was already taking a nap. The bus started moving and took off at full speed in no time. Mr. Driver had been working as a driver for school for more than 10 years and so no one paid any heed to his health condition. Just when I thought I will be able to meet my best friend Ellie after reaching my home without running into any more trouble. Three of my classmates rose up from their seat and came and sat beside me. 18. They were Sigura, Tama, and Saki. While everyone in the bus understood what was going to happen, they came to the conclusion that it was wise to remain ignorant. While Tama rolled her hand around my neck, which gave me the feeling of a snake trying to circle around me. Sigura as usual took of my bag while it got stuck in one of my shoulder. I tried to resist but to no avail. I was just too weak. Just hand it over and we may not hurt you. Sigura said while she struggled to remove the bag which got interlocked along my shoulder. If only I was stronger and more confident in myself. If only I had more self-esteem and not a self-deprecating personality. If only I had a more faith in my own talents. If only I was more determined towards achieving my ambitions and not wish for mere dreams and ideals to come true. Then maybe this would not have happened. Maybe I could have stopped them. I felt so helpless and pathetic. There was no one I could call for help or turn a night to seek aid from a friend or family member. It was the same as always. It was the feeling of being abandoned. I always have been alone and neglected. There was no place for me in this world to begin with. No place where I was needed. No place where I could find peace and love. If only I could make a restart. If only I had tried a little harder to make a change. Life had been very unpleasant and unfair to me. It hurts a lot. I wanted to give up and run away. If only I could find myself again at the start line. Then I promise I will never give up before I achieve my goals and stand my own ground until I have seen them to its end. I would never give up or lose again the sight of what is precious and dear to me and protect it with my life till the very end. 19. I won't hoe LD back or make petty excuses for myself ever again or give up until I can say I did it. If only there was a new beginning. HHH. No, why don't you all just leave me alone? I stood from my seat but lost balance and tumbled into the corner. I was shocked. It was not the pain of falling or the surprise that everyone including the teacher ignored me and had already accepted my doomed fate. From the side window I could see, huge oil truck breaking its way through the traffic and heading in our direction. For some reason our bus seemed to be unstable and was running above the speed limit even in the presence of several speed breakers. As I was collecting my thoughts and ignored the glares of the three delinquents, I started feeling my body lighter for some reason. The metal body of the bus started shaking and making weird cracking noises like a madman. Just then there was a sudden decent and the feeling of flying in the air was overtaken by the feeling of getting smashed into the floor. Most of the student fell from their seat including the delinquents, serves them right, I guess. I wonder how the marbles felt when I once dropped a box filled with them on the floor. The feeling was mutual. Some students started picking up their fallen goods, some heralded their abuses to the driver, while the teacher went to the driver's seat to check on his condition. She was dumbfounded and at the same time horrified to find him unconscious. His head was covered in blood. Was the bus driver playing a dirty joke? But things were not over yet. The main event that brought the doomsday upon us was just about to take place. 20. A loud horn rang like a death bell in everyone's ear and next was the feeling of numbness that wrapped my body. Somehow the inside surrounding of the bus went silent.
but the noise of the horn from the oil truck approaching us could still be heard more louder than ever and the chatter of faraway people who stopped along the pavement to watch the horrendous scenario that was about to take place was easily heard and deciphered by us. Everyone's eyes were fixated at the center of the huge frame of the front mirror. The impending doom was clear as day but no one could scream or run. There was no escape but, boom, 21, CBC TV News. A metropolitan public school bus was involved in a head-on collision with an oil truck this afternoon. The accident occurred on Tuesday, July 13, 2021 around 3.30 p.m. at Ailey Upper Road in the Central District. Officials say that the school bus was unexpectedly running above the speed limit with unstable and ambiguous directions. After taking a flight from the speed breaker it lost control and rammed into the oil truck. There was no time between the collision and blast from the oil catching fire in the truck. It was all too sudden. Everything happened within a few seconds and there was no hope of rescue. Was the response of one of the witnesses of the gruesome accident. 20 students from Class 2C of the school, school teacher Yuma Ayuka, bus driver and the truck driver are reported dead. According to Assistant Deputy Fire Chief Kenji Takagi, it seemed that the safety measures inside the oil truck were not functioning properly which led to the immediate leakage of oil, followed by the blast. All the victims were dead before the ambulance or the rescue team arrived. Prime Minister Takeshi Kigaku said it was really a heart-rending situation happening in my hometown. Proper precautions and various measures will be taken as per the instructions of the government. Strict action will be taken against the offenders by concerned authorities. The government will lend hand to all the families who lost their loved ones in every possible way. 22. Boys. Homura Kenta. Class Representative. Natsu Kenchai, Kenma Takeshi, Sado Fujibayashi, Sakamoto Sanda, Ryuji Uka, Okera Noishima, Kanata Aizawa, Akihiko Totsuka, Hashima Katsuragi, Girls, Siaka Tenma, Akane Kirigashi, Seitumi Yakta, Delinquent No. 1, Sura Kendo, Delinquent No. 2, Tama Donjo, Delinquent No. 3, Saki Honda, Haridake Tree, Karaiba Chioda, Yumika Furata, Saki Kondo, Information flashcard class 2 C 23 chapter minus 2 the pantheon r dot dot r I tried to scream but I couldn't hear my own voice I was just now in an accident is my body even okay and are my ears okay why can't I hear anything why cannot I feel any pain am I going to die I tried to open my eyes and prepared myself for the worst but the sudden appearance of strong rays of light flooded my eyes and blurred my vision for an indefinite period of time as I tried my hardest to make out the surrounding and was first time pleased to see my other classmates were we really okay I touched my body from bottom to top and was relieved to find it in one piece not even a single cut or bruise but how is that possible? Weren't we just now the victims of an unfortunate road accident? Am I dreaming? The number of unanswered questions only increased further when my vision was reconfigured to its normal state. I and my classmates were standing on a huge white marble platform circular in shape and was floating midair without any support. There was no land to be seen. The whole area was drenched in a white light, which had 24. No source in whatever direction I looked. But the light brought a soothing feeling to my eyes and my skin felt warm. I calmed myself and started registering the information in my brain. The sky was clear with no clouds. It was an unusual ending space and the clouds at our feet made it more unbelievable. All the students were in healthy conditions and have come to their sense which was quite obvious with the fuss they had started to make. I pinched myself and felt the pain which gave me the creeps that is this method really viable to draw the line between reality and dream, because just then an angel with white wings spread across its back descended on the platform out of nowhere. Most of the students were first startled and took a defensive stance to see an alien being but after a short while, seeing no signs of hostility they ran towards him in hope of getting their illogical questions answered. Hey man, where are we? Did you bring us here? What do you want to do with us? Sir, can you please tell me where my parents are? Some of the students started crying. Some went to the edge of the platform and played tricks of jumping. Some girls crowded near the class rep who tried his best to clear their doubts by reassuring them of his own position in class. Are we dead? 
Did the bus accident really kill us all? 25. Is this the place where people are judged before they are being sent to heaven or hell? Is this really it? I want to go home. The word home caught everyone's attention and they started raising their voices to force out the answers from him even if it meant they would have to fight. Some of them like me stood at their places waiting for an answer to clear our doubts and afraid to be a part of an angry mob which had resorted to vandalism. The angel's face showed no sign of discomfort or surprise. He quickly grasped the situation and came up with the best solution. He flew high up into the air with his white feathered wings spread out in the sky. A loop of light radiated from his back, which caught everyone's attention and distracted their minds. He was truly a mystical being. The perfect picture of an angel with wings and white gown which went below his feet and even covered his own shadow. Children of the mortal race, please listen to my request. Follow me to the Pantheon and all your doubts will be cleared. T has words from a non-human character played like a beautiful sonnet in my ears and made me unable to deny his petty request. Every student became silent, some wiped off their tears and moved to the middle of the platform and then looked back at the angel. The angel then looked upwards and flew much higher than before into the white sky. Suddenly the platform, before we even realized, was moving upwards slowly yet it seems to have been maintained a steady pace. 26. A massive temple surrounded by huge marble pillars, statues and torches came into our view. This shining new temple despite giving the vibe of being an ancient one towered over the immediate landscape, where there was nothing beyond it but a sea of clouds. A terrific series of huge brick stone stairs stood in front of the temple. The only thing up above us was a circular rainbow, with a blue inside it deeper than anything I'd ever seen before. The angel landed in front of the stairs and started climbing up the humongous pile of blocks. No one made a sound among us. It was pin drop silence, one never witnessed before. The feeling of fear, confusion, amazement frustration and sadness had overwhelmed our reasoning ability. With a bit of hesitation we followed the angel in a single line without any instructions. What was surprising was we reached the top of the colossal stairs in no time at all and there was no sign of fatigue in any of our muscles. Every minute spent brought terror and bewilderment at the same time. Is this the so-called pantheon the angel mentioned? We dragged our legs through the entrance, and suddenly our surroundings changed. We were supposed to be in a building, but the place looked more like a castle courtyard. There was a lush green lawn, flowers I had never seen before which can hold anyone spellbound, and a large fountain too. For some reason I was captivated by the water which flew in the fountain system. The water was so pure that it was transparent like a super expensive glass and at the same time one could see his own reflection. But what surprised me was that the whole area was empty and no one was there to enjoy this scenic landscape. The angel climbed small flight of stairs on a stage which I was sure never existed a 27 second ago. He stood at the side as if waiting for someone important to arrive. My dear children, I welcome you all in the holy land of God's. There is no need to fear. All your questions will be answered, so please ask without any hesitation. An old lady descended from the sky again out of nowhere and had grayish white hairs, with a physical body of a 70-year-old woman. It was such a pleasure to hear a pure and humane voice after a long time. There was no doubt in my mind she was a goddess, the kindest soul I have ever met yet. We started looking at each other to choose our representative and all our gazes extrapolated at a single point where the class rep stood biting his nails. It was kind of unsightly but no one minded. He had a charismatic personality and was intelligent and quick-witted but a lustful person too at that. There was no time to vote and Homura who felt the pressure of everyone's gazes stepped forward. Are we all really dead? What is the reason of bringing us all here? Homura hurriedly finished the sentence and took a step back. The presence of a heavenly being commanded respect and devotion from every soul with no exception. My name is Gaia, the goddess of Mother Earth in this holy sanctuary called Pantheon. I am sorry to inform you of your demise in the unfortunate accident. I am sure you all are grieved to realize that you will never be able to see your loved ones. 
Mere words cannot heal the wound of hearts nor undo the present and dry up those tears filled with grief and loss. The reason you all have been summoned here is to give you another chance to live again and be reincarnated in another world. Of course you can refuse and move to the spiritual realm. The goddess put forward her proposal, 28, and looked at us with the most caring and sincere eyes I had ever seen. I was hooked up to her appearance. She was old and had wrinkles on her forehead and face but it accentuated the majestic presence of a person who has been an expert in his field for a long time. She was a pro at this. We were surprised and at the same time not. It was quite obvious after seeing the angel that we were no more part of the living world. But what caught our attention was the part where the goddess mentioned the word reincarnation. Can it really happen? Will we get another chance to live? Weren't these my thoughts just before I died? So I pinched my cheeks again to confirm and draw a vague line between reality and fantasy. I started slapping my cheeks and drumming my head to get rid of any hallucination. I was not embarrassed in the least because some people performed the same exercise and other followed because they thought it was reasonable and totally normal. Oh my little darlings don't fret over. I know you are all worried about your family and are unable to collect your thoughts and are overwhelmed by it. Your state of confusion is totally normal. I know death is irreversible and we must steel our hearts to accept the truth with all our being. Please take rest in the rooms we have prepared for all of you and decide your next course of action. After hearing your decision we will be able to talk in details later. The words of the goddess struck a chord in everyone's soul. Lady Gaia looked towards the angel standing on her left side. The angel disappeared and then reappeared in front of class rep and signaled to follow him. It would be hard to get him used to this sudden materialization and dematerialization. It seems that he doesn't like to talk very much. But he somehow enjoyed taking us by surprise now and then. 29. We formed a line and again started to follow him towards a small entrance. We all had our own doubts and thoughts, but for now all have concluded it was best to go with the flow and follow the orders of the supreme beings. At that time I looked back at the small stage and saw two other figures descending from the sky and each stood beside Lady Gaia. Were the goddesses too? I wondered. But I soon lost their sight as a new landscape presented itself in full grandiose. Are these the human children chosen by the divine system? How fascinating. Things are starting to get interesting sooner than expected. Goddess Hera and Goddess Artemis presented their thoughts. I agree. I hope these children rise to our expectation and make the best out of it. By the way Artemis what are you doing with that thing? Lady Gaia too spoke her mind without holding back. A young girl, tall and slim wearing a knee length tunic, with hunting boots, a quiver and was armed with a silver bow and arrows neatly placed inside a quiver tucked at her back and had a huge fat wild boar tied to her right shoulder. She was definitely goddess Artemis Huntress goddess of the moon and lady of the wild things. Her auburn hair color and silver eyes were elegant and her beauty was mysterious but real. But the most concerning aspect was her massive strength to hold on to such a huge boar without any hesitation with those puny thin arms of her. She sure is a hunter through and through. 30. This piece of juicy meat is for the feast tonight. I will I'll ask Lady Hestia to prepare the best dish with this heavenly beast. She held out the boar in front of the two goddesses, as if she was waiting for their praises. Sure we will love to feast on one of your esteemed spoils of wild hunting. Goddess Hera spoke in her sweet and young accent. The three ladies started moving in the exact opposite direction of the students while continuing their conversation till they vanished from anyone's sight and the courtyard was left empty again where the flowers fluttered and danced in the cool breeze. 31. Mount Olympus. We had no idea what the current situation was. We quietly followed the angel until we passed through an archway to another building, or at least, it was supposed to be another building. Surprisingly, we ended up in another outdoor space, if you could even call it that. I could see the ever-present sprawling clouds in the distance, but there were blooming flowers beneath my feet. I could see a few ivory pillars, much like the ones from outside the Pantheon, jutting out of the ground here and there. Since the pillars were supporting only a huge single slab of marble, they kind of reminded me of Egyptian-style architecture. 
but what waited at the end of the hallway was an entrance to a new world completely out of everyone's imagination. As the same teasing source less light pulverized my view and as per the usual routine the scenery presented itself in full glory, the gigantic Mount Olympus stood before us. A flock of mysterious birds with feathers as white as milk flew up high in the sky as if welcoming us after our tiring journey had came to temporary halt. For some reason I wanted to hug and feel their warm fluffy feathers, but maybe some other day, I took a peek at the face of the angel out of sheer curiosity, and I could tell through the sinister aura radiating from his body even though he was wearing a poker face, but inside he was laughing and howling at his full voice. Be amazed you pathetic lowly mortal humans. Imprint this in your weak mortal memory because you may not find a treasure of this grandeur again. The serrated white mountains loomed in the distance under the clear blue sky. The legs of the mountains were very wide. The peaks, 32, of the mountains were like harpoon tips shrouded in ghost grey mist. Just as we approached, a chute of snow detached itself and went trundling down on its other side. It slid over the knotted edge and then went crashing into the chasm below. The silence that followed was spine-chilling. It froze our marrow to think why we had been brought to such a dangerous place. The angel was startled too by this unexpected avalanche but reassured us that there was nothing to fear with his smile and we continued to follow him. I concluded that the heat had displaced the snow from the tip of the time-chiseled mountain. It sure was summer even in the divine realm. As we reached the bottom of the mountain, my gaze fell upon a flight of golden stairs which traversed and ended exactly at the middle of the mountain. The angels started climbing the stairs. But we students have become too impatient to think how much time we will have to continue to walk. But no one resisted the supreme being. Not because of fear, but the eccentric situation which each of us found ourselves and the fact we have died had already drained our mental capacity. At mid-mount in an unexpected huge expanse of flat land caught our attention but the true surprise was the settlement that occupied this half plateau. It was an old fantasy setting of a prehistoric city which took pride in its rich culture and heritage but there was much more to it. I welcome you a LL to the holy city of God's Cardlia. A place of unimaginable blessings, every treasure man holds valuable will pale in comparison to the magnificent city of heaven. Precious stones lavishly adorned the towering walls that firmly surrounded the Cardlia city. The city had no need for the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of 33, gods illuminated it. At the gates of the city there was no barricade or door, as if showing the hospitality that anyone may enter to seek shelter. I wondered will the streets and houses be made of gold, but I was glad that was the not the case. The god of architecture sure was not extravagant in his constructs, but something about the material used in the construction bugged me, as if the road, the buildings, were they alive. Even in this chilling breeze a warm sensation from the walls and street enveloped my body. It was as if I was in a heaven-made kadatsu. As we followed the angel, we saw several gods and goddesses passing by us or looking at us up from their balcony as we continued our tiny procession. The houses were neither very tall nor short, most of them were two-storied or three-storied mansions. After taking a straight path and a left we came to a halt. We finally reached the hotel or maybe an inn or whatever they call it here. When we entered through the door, the scenery totally changed. It was not at all what one would visualize after seeing the outside infrastructure of an old-fashioned three-storied building. Then we were given the instructions by our extraterrestrial guide who found comfort in seeing our stupefied looks of amazement and praises of this divine realm. In this city you do not need to learn the routes because the streets always keep on changing. Just remember the destination in mind and you will be guided by the roads themselves. This inside space is a pocket space connected to another dimension and has 20 floors, with a single room on it. Each one of you will get to occupy one room. Every room is equipped with a kitchen and a bathroom and all other amenities like food, books, water, air required by there. 34. Mortal race as stated in the holier scriptures of the ways of life of the inferior races. All of you are required to appear in the general assembly at 6 p.m. So be prepared five minutes prior and I will come here to escort you to the assembly myself. The angel stopped and took a long breath and cleared his throat. Amazing. 
What an awesome navigation system in this outdated town setting. What a relief. I will never get lost in my life again. For those who don't know I am very bad with direction and learning routes. I mean very bad, maybe the worst. I had got many times lost and always had to seek the help of locals or police from time to time which was the reason I never traveled much or ventured outside the house on earth. Could it qualify as one of the reasons for me being a shut-in? And what's with this freakish extra-dimensional pocket space? If such a thing existed on earth then maybe the price of renting a house would go down and there would be no homeless people and earth could support a much larger homeless population. Why don't they share this technology with the people on earth? Ah, I think I get it. Isn't it pretty obvious with that stupid name of the book he mentioned? He really thinks he is the best. Lost in my thoughts I came back to life or maybe after life, considering that I am already dead. I saw that I was standing alone in that long corridor. Where did everyone go? I should hurry up and get to my floor. What a bother, everyone had occupied the lower floor and some were complaining that the upper rooms got smaller and smaller. After climbing a hefty amount of stairs again I reached the 20th, 35, floor. As expected for some reason it appears that the building is a triangle and not a square. Hence the rooms got smaller and smaller as one ascended. The admiration I had for the god of architecture shattered in pieces. What use is this pocket dimension and navigation system if walking is the only thing they could do? It is so tiring, to monotonously climb stairs since we reached the Pantheon. How dare they call us inferiors if they cannot provide us with a van to travel or install escalators and lifts. As I held the knob of the door, it shone with a red color and a click sound as if it registered me as one of the tenants. It was a smaller room but much bigger than the miserable storehouse I lived in. It was amazing in itself that the room had a sci-fi vibe to it. There was a small kitchen and a pantry. I took out a packet of potato chips and poured a glass of apple juice and enjoyed the delicacy on the massage air which was totally unexpected. All hail to the god of hospitality. I took a bath. And the another pretty interesting thing I saw was there was no tap. Is the god of architecture really does not care. All I wanted was a bath after a tiring day. I looked inside the small opening in the wall and searched for flowing water. Ah, my eyes. It's too cold. Stoo pit. The water gushed through the hole and striked at my eye and then suddenly stopped. 36. I get it. We just need to think of taking a bath and water would itself come out running at full speed from the shower. Similarly you can also control the temperature. It's pretty funny if you think and enjoyable at the same time. I soaked myself in a fur towel which was so smooth that I kept it rubbing on my cheeks after drying my hairs with a hair dryer without using electricity. I used the same logic again. The image of hot air manifested itself from the hair dryer. I thought I was using magic and it was fun too. I found a pair of ironed clothes in the drawer. After wearing these new clothes, I watched myself in the mirror, but the little smile on my face disappeared. The girl who stood before me was cursed throughout her life by her adoptive parents. The abuse was constant, raising a child in that environment was unthinkable and I was warped by it. Stupid brat, always got that sad, nasty look in her eyes. We can't kill her so why doesn't she T.R. White take her own life and spare us the trouble? Remarks like this had become a normal exchange of words between my uncle and aunt. I had a single photo with my parents when I was little. The photo depicted my parents hugging me in front of our old house. I don't remember their faces even in my memory. The ones in the picture are they really my parents? I don't even remember the voice of my parents and how they felt about me. Did they too want that I was never born? Were they kind to me? Did they really love me? At least I would like to think they did. There was no person on earth who could have mourned over my death and my little cousin who liked me during her adolescence. 37 started avoiding me after her middle school due to the instigation from her own parents to stay away from me. Severed our bonds. Maybe she would have felt a little bad after hearing about my death. Will anyone even remember me? I looked up and the unconscious and dusty black hair covered half of my face. To look straight at someone I had to focus my hardest but looking down at the ground was the easiest since making an eye contact with anyone gave me the chills. 
What if the person started hating me? At least if I don't make any contact then there will be no dilemma of being liked or hated. I blocked these thoughts and then curled up my hairs. The mirror depicted a beautiful young albino girl with a skin color so white that is rarely seen in the country. Long velvet black hair caressed my pinched in cheekbones and offset my red lips. Black emotionless eyes in which one could look and experience the abyss itself. I am truly a beauty. Should I apply for role modeling? I am sure I can capture anyone's attention. The granny at the confectionery shop always told me how lovely I was to look at and scolded me for hiding my face under those untidy and sun-scorched hairs of mine. I too wanted to dress up fearlessly like other and show my face to the world but this attractive looks and lovely body of mine was covered in an invisible blanket of gloominess and drenched in darkness. I tried to smile but my face did not change whatsoever. I then tried to force a smile but it looked more horrible. I quickly put down my hairs which crashed in front of my face and covered the sides and forehead down to the eyes. I jumped on the bed and covered myself with blanket. I was afraid, did anyone see my gloomy face? Will they start abusing me with? 38. The same abuses as my uncle did? I scanned the room and there was no one. I then slowly put my head on the pillow. I was really tired and maybe out of my mind too. To think that that I would be able to overcome my shortcomings and insecurities. Even after being dead I was still worrying about my dismal looks. Then again the bright source less light wrapped the entire room not even leaving my own shadow. I didn't find any tube light or hidden bulb. How am I going to sleep? It was already 4 o'clock. Is there even night in this city? The lights got turned off. I thought about a bright room and the light reappeared. It was fun to repeat the same activity without using any kind of switch. Does this room have its own consciousness? I looked up at the roof and there was no hole or the ceiling appeared broken. It was but anything smooth as cream. Is reincarnation really possible? Will we really get another chance to live? Will I find happiness? family and friends this time? Will everyone be given equal opportunities? Are there really no demands from gods? Is it really a free service? Will all of my classmates agree to this? I wonder how they feel about being dead. Are they sad that they have to leave their parents behind and other people who love them? Well I had no attachment to my previous world. I was totally devoid of friendship, companionship, brotherhood, love and care of family members. I can only remember anything but pain and disappointment. What will the new ORLD be like? 39. I don't remember when my eyelids fell down and sealed my vision and sleep overtook my brain and body. Will I wake up and find myself that I was dreaming all along? 40. Suki Kondo's room. I was in dark and nothing was visible. I thought my eyes are shut, so I tried to pull up my eyelids. Then out of the blue I found myself levitating in the sky. The sky was crimson red and was covered with the flicker of lights which rose high up from the fire which ravaged the land. Beings clad in armor were clunking axes and crashing war hammers against each other. Arrows were zipping and hissing through the air. Some were sobbing and sniveling with fear. Swords were ringing against each other. A legion of knights attacked the center of the opposing party lines. The septic smell of death hung over the battlefield. It was a battle of head-clasping horror. The acrid taste of blood rose up and overwhelmed my nose and I was about to puke. What the hell is happening? Why am I witnessing a war? Am I dreaming? First I thought that it was Earth, but it was not. There were trolls, beastmen with werewolf skin, rabbit ears and fox tails, fallen angels with black wings, devils, minions, minotaur, black demonic beast chained to ground kept howling and demons with horns and their hands drenched in blood with faces splattered with red sanguine fluid roamed all over the place. The other party consisted of humans in night suit holding swords and shields, angels with spear, bow and arrows, but there were some people with overwhelming presence that commanded force and the flow of the war. Dressed in attire I had never seen before. Bodies untainted with the gore of war and emotionless faces they lead the troops to their death by the hands of the devils. Were they gods? Am I witnessing a holy crusade? 41. These gods displayed battle skills that were difficult to follow while the enemy got torn apart and turned into mince meat. I was horrified and frightened. My body shivered with goosebumps. People were dying and their cries of pain and anguish were made heard to me intentionally loud and clear. Stop this. I don't want to look. Stoop. 
I kept on shouting but no one heard me, my voice choked as my neck felt tight and sore. My face was drenched with my own tears, blood gushed through my veins in response to the increasing heartbeat. I tightly clenched my chest to stop the pain. Why is this happening to me? IT will all be fine. A calm voice rang in my head and I felt a warm embrace but there was no one near me. The sensation of being hugged felt so warm that I responded and tried to hug back. I opened my eyes and my gaze fell upon a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, long pure white hair that extends to her back with bangs that cover her forehead. The left side of her bangs slants to the right, while the right side of her bangs slants slightly to the left. She also has beautiful clear crystal blue eyes. She was dressed in a white combat dress. A garter belt on her waist with two sword sheaths on its sides, a crown-like bonnet, which has white feathers on both sides, armored shoulder pads that have a short white gape. She held a black and a white sword with various marking and intricate carvings which I couldn't make out from far. She sure has to be a goddess. She was cutting through the enemy lines as if victory was already in her grasp. No one could stand against that kind of power. Even the very thought of delaying her forward march seemed futile. 42. But what surprised me was when she turned her head around and smiled at me directly looking into my eyes. How is she able to look at me? At least no one else can. Did the previous voice belong to her? Who is this person? Somehow I feel like I know her. It was my first time I maintained an eye contact with a stranger for so long and the impression of her smiling face was inscribed in the depths of my hearts. I wanted this moment to continue forever. The reassurance from a stranger I never met before but her smile was so genuine that I was able to smile back too. But everything came to an abrupt end when things started fading. Wait, who are you? I shouted with my hands stretched but there was no response. I found myself lying on the bed of the room on floor 20 in the city of heaven Cardlia, drenched in sweat, breathing heavily and hands stretched out reaching for something far out of my reach. Somehow I slept the entire time and when I looked at time it was already 6 o'clock. I was going to be late. Will I be scolded? I washed my face and without drying it ran out of my room and down the stairs descended to the ground floor in one breath. My hair still untidy and a bit messed up which I tried to straighten down with my hands. Please God of architecture just put up a lift at least, maybe I can petition a demand later. 43, 44, Suki Kondo. I saw all my classmates standing outside the building, most of them were discussing about their reincarnation the city of heaven and about the gods and angels they have seen or met up till now. Most of them were excited to attend the general assembly. Everyone had finally made up with their situation and had accepted that they were dead and were looking forward to their resurrection in another world. Is it going to be a fantasy world? Who knows? W will there be magic? I would love to use swords in that world, after all I'm a state kendo champion. You sure, that's what you want? Maybe we can make a harem? Let me see you try, as if anyone would fall for you in the first place. Ha 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 bursts of laughter were heard everywhere. Everyone had same thoughts running through their minds and they kept on blabbering the same thing. The angel appeared before us as it descended from the sky and brought the widespread wings close to its back. Children of the mortal realm, you all will now attend the proceedings of the general assembly and meet the almighty. 45. World God who has the highest authority in all the three realms of divine, mortal and hell. You all are expected to behave and exercise utmost caution while making queries and requests. The angel finished giving his instructions and clapped two times. We were depressed that we had to monotonously keep on climbing stairs again, but our eyes lit up when a gondola with a swan head levitating in front of us appeared. We boarded the vehicle one by one while the angel stood outside. How is this gondola going to move without a driver? The gondola soared up high in the sky. Ah, my bad. It's just that simple autopilot. Some tried to look from the side while maintaining caution not to fall. We soon reached a height where the city of heavens on the gigantic mountain looked like a hole and the buildings played the role of colorful pebbles rolled out in an orderly arranged pattern on the floor. Beyond that there existed nothingness covered with clouds as usual. Some were frightened of the height while some were posing in front of the gondola. Are they still afraid of dying? 
I wondered. The cool breeze dried the water splashed on my face and an expression of joy naturally formed for the first time. Somehow I was smiling. How could this be possible? But I had already forgotten all about the strange dream I had just before. What mattered now was to talk out the details about our reincarnation with the gods. Till now the angel was flying at the same speed beside the gondola, but then it looked at us with his expressionless poker face, and flew like jet leaving a trail of disarrayed cloud in its track. But I could clearly see the smirk on his face and his thoughts were written all over puny mortals, standing on a flying gondola. You can't fly can. 46. You. Flying is so fun. You are a yay. Ha 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 ha. Our swan shape tribe made an excellent parking in front of a building with a city hall looks. We climbed out and stood on a platform. The angel had reached the destination before us and gave us the looks of you are late, mortals. May the divine punishment fall upon you. That's not fair. Weren't we in this together? We climbed the stairs again but this time they were made of blue crystals and had a blinding luster at its edges. We found ourselves standing in a courtyard once more, but this time we were inside a building rather than a garden. We dispersed and observed the place, running around while some were still standing and chatting. We were in a closed room, with stages on three sides and railings of golden color, while the middle front stage was still higher than the sides. Suddenly we heard a loud trumpet which continued forever and with deafening drum beats, followed a multitude of gods and goddesses who stood in a line in front of the railing. Realizing our demeanor in front of the supreme beings, we were ashamed and the class rep tried to bring us back at the center. We made four rows and five columns and stood facing the middle stage where the person who stood above all was going to appear. While we looked at the audience, they all consisted of beautiful ladies and handsome men. Some of us tried to make an eye contact with them which were met with smiles instead of ignorance. While some of the gods tried to wave hands back at us, this small exchange of greetings had lightened the mood and got rid of the tension that was driving the room mad. 47. Then Lady Gaia appeared on the middle stage and said, The almighty world god will now make his appearance. She then took a step back and moved forward to stand at the left front corner of the stage. A bright light formed at the center robbing me of my eyesight and played with my senses. When it subsided there stood an old man holding a scepter in one hand while the other hand worked as a perch for an eagle. A tall and thin man, with silver curly hair and beard so long that they could be tucked into his belt. He had a very long peculiar nose with an orange tint at its end. His eyes could be described to be a brilliant soul-piercing shade of lightning blue, with a twinkle of kindness and mischief. He had an almost unearthly calm and relaxed demeanor and almost constantly gave off an aura of serenity and composure. He was clothed in a long red robe fastened to his shoulder and a crimson red cloak that made him look like a great wizard. A wreath of olive leaves served as his crown. He was old in body but was surely young in mind and spirit. My dear children, I welcome you all to the General Assembly of Gods. Your demise, even though was unfortunate and unexpected, but there is another chance for you to get back your life and get reincarnated in another world. So tell me what you wish and it shall be fulfilled. I gulped down the saliva collected in my mouth and did not know how to act. Just then Homura stepped forward and said, We all have decided that we will accept the offer of being reincarnated and abide by all the rules laid by the gods. 48. Wait when they even decided that. No one asked me. What about my opinion? Will I not get a chance to speak my mind? They did not even bother to tell me. For them they visualized the class as a group of 19 students and always left me out. Whatever there is no reason for me to refuse till the conditions are normal and can be easily followed. The almighty world god made up a mischievous smile as if he was about to reveal a hidden devious plot. I am very pleased to hear your answer and respect your decision and resolve to live again and experience the hardships of the new world. So let's talk more about this world and how this reincarnation system will work. He then took a deep breath and continued with his explanation. The world you are going to reincarnate is called Alga the Sanctum of the Holy Crusade. Ephraim started to murmur about why such a solemn name for a reincarnation world. Yes, you heard me right. This is a world of magic, 
Unlike your previous world, the laws of nature in this new world are quite different and can be changed according to one's will using spells and other supernatural powers. At these words everyone started cheering and whispering to each other. Our lives are set. World of magic. I wonder we can become the strongest wizards and enjoy luxurious lives out there. I will start with flying magic, but these whispers soon shut down when the almighty world god continued. 49. Ahem. Hundred years ago in a holy battle the gods of divine realm passed their judgment on the devils of the hell. At present this world is in peril and chaos with the world neglected and no god to look after it. We all have decided that you will save this world. Wow, is it really the fantasy trope we read in novels and watch in movies? I will be a hero, and save the princess of the kingdom and boot all the evil. What are you talking about? I am going to do that. You will be my side companion and tend to my horses and carry the luggage. They should have only summoned me. I can do all that. Fighting is my hobby. I will be victorious in all wars. Hey boys, who do you think you are? Girls are braver than boys and can be heroines too and save the world. So just shut up, huh? I commend your high spirits. But here is the real deal. You will not save the world alone. Each of you will form a contract with a god or goddess who will support you on your journey to save the world. The duo that makes the most contribution in saving this world will be awarded by the divine realm. In the victor party, the god will be given the opportunity to become the in charge and take control of that world and ascend to the upper echelons in the divine realm, while the human will have one of his wish fulfilled of whatever they desire. At the end of these words the assembly was in an uproar, not only the students, 50, but the gods and goddesses started talking among themselves and raised several questions. What? Why? A hero with a goddess on journey to save the world and get one wish fulfilled. Can it get even better now somehow? I doubt. What are you talking about? Of course I am going to save the world with my goddess not you. My wish will come true. What will L be your wish? I don't know. Maybe to become rich and have a harem of girls of actresses from Earth. You scum can only think about that. You can even ask to become a god yourself. This opportunity comes once in your life after all, so make full use of it. The endless fantasies of my classmates continued while the gods have their own personal agendas. How interesting! A chance to take control of the world and ascend to upper echelons. I am not going to miss it. Entertainment is always so cold in the Ivine realm, but this sure has a packed punch. I am looking forward to the events that will soon unfold. The world god raised his scepter to gain back everyone's attention. The hall fell in complete silence and looked up to the world god, waiting for his further instructions. 51. One week from now you will be reincarnated in the Isle God. All of your reincarnations will be based on your personalities as judged by the divine system. Some of you might be reincarnated as prince or princess maybe adventurers or knights. The god or goddess assigned to you two will reincarnate themselves as someone near to you like relatives or world leaders and guide you on your journey. The gods will have restricted use of their divine power and may be able to fully use them only in case of emergency. At this the world god stopped and turned around his head and confirmed something with Lady Gaia. He then continued to explain on the rules and our lifestyle that was to be expected in the new world. As I have said before T his world has magic unlike your previous ones and people still live by the rule under their king and queen with knights protecting the honor of their country. The divine system will all provide you with unique skill that will be in conjunction to the type of divinity of the god you sign your contract with. Your development in magic and strength will be based on a skill level system created and are monitored by the divine system itself. When more than half of you reach the age of 18 and above you can freely complete your mission without any intervention. The hall yet again usurped with murmur and chatter of gods and mortals alike. Just shut the hell up. Let the old man at least complete what he is saying. Why no one is talking to me? Does my opinion even matter to someone? 52. Their skill, level system and a unique skill bestowed by the gods. What bliss. So it's save the world by playing a game. I wonder how much I can level up. I will probably max out everything. The gods had their own personal issues colon. What? Restricted access to our divine powers. 
It sure is a pain in the ass. Somehow this statement sounded a bit inappropriate for a god. I wonder which department he handles. But for now, never mind. Working with the mortals to save the world, quite a handful task. Indeed, we have to even bestow a unique skill. The momentum of the hall meeting was going haywire, so the world god tapped his scepter on the floor twice, while the eagle who was lifelessly sitting on his shoulder, now glided through the hall ready to attack anyone who broke this heavenly silence or interrupted him. Finally, the twenty gods and goddesses who will descend in the mortal realm with the children will then now choose their partner. Just step forward and take the hand of the child you wish to make the sacred vow of saving the world. For the first time silence still continued after he had stopped talking. So we don't get to choose which god or goddess we want to serve but are chosen. That means it will affect our unique skill too. I thought to myself and considered other variables that might affect our selection. 53. Just then a beautiful goddess holding a bow in her hands ascended from the right stage and took the hand of Hurry and smile at her. She had been chosen by the goddess of hunting wild animals Lady Artemis. A god with a built-up body, grey beard and a trident in his hands jumped from the stage on the ground and ignoring everyone took the hand of Hashem Akatsuragi. He had been chosen by the god of seas, Poseidon. Then suddenly a beauty, superior and outstanding even among the gods stepped down from the stairs. What a relief at least some gods know the usage of stairs is better for maintaining health and is better than scaring others by flying or appearing out of nowhere. She has long silver hair, silver eyes and white skin like that of fresh snow. A perfect golden ratio and her silhouette even in the dress she wore were just too attractive. Her clothes were in large parts colored white and red. They exposed most of her stomach and breasts. She also wore a beautiful pair of shining gem ornament in her hair. While everyone's eyes were laid on her she walked without a care in the world as if used to such kind of attention. She grabbed the hand of our class rep. Homura Kenta had been chosen by the goddess of lust Freya. Then a strawberry blonde hair girl with a fair, flawless skin and a curvy figure epitomizing feminine beauty, came forward and took the hand Yumiko Furata. She was the goddess of love, Aphrodite. A blonde hair guy with a quick and pace ran forward and made a quick stop before crashing into Okara and Oishima he held his hands. Until then I wasn't able to see him. He was the messenger god Hermes, who had the most peculiar outfit, wearing a pot-shaped hat and winged sandals. 54. Several gods and goddesses had jumped, flew, walked, disappeared appeared into the ring and had already chosen their partner. Even though we were not made clear on what basis or qualification we needed to be a partner of a specific god or goddess, we were still more than happy to be accepted by them. While all these things were happening so casually, a sudden sense of fear and despair fell on my face, when I realized that for the first time after coming to Pantheon all the eyes were focused on me. Holy crap, what the hell? I was still standing alone and even the assembly hall filled with hustle and bustle of the eccentric crowd, felt like a lonely desert where I couldn't find a single oasis after traveling for months and had run out of water supply just a week before. Should I pretend that I hadn't noticed anything and ask directions for the washroom, but then I realized that I hadn't even talked to anyone after coming to heaven. Should I ask my classmates? No. No I can't. They will just try to pull my leg or even worse ignore me. How about one of the gods? The entire hall is filled with them. Would they mind if I ask such a trifling question in such an important meeting? Is there even a place here called washroom? Should I make a run or try to hide my face which was already half covered with my black hairs which were a bit of a mess since I was unable to comb after waking up to catch the running train? All my classmates and even the gods were giving me all weird looks and their gossips about me took a humongous jump. What she was not chosen, by any god or goddess. How is this possible? 55. She is just as pathetic as she was in school. Was she even in our class? Maybe I never noticed. Me too. She is the one in our class who always got bullied by other students while we all just sat and enjoyed. My goddess she is one of our classmates and is very shy and afraid to interact with others. It is as you suspect my dear god. She is just a weakling. The weakest one among all of us. So what is going to happen with her? If no god or goddess chose her, are we already cut short with one competitor? 
it seems so my lady, but it's all the same for us, yea, she is the weakest one after all, so no god or goddess would try to waste thy our time on her, even though I was standing there, the way they casually talked about me made me angrier and sad at the same time, am I really this pathetic, but this was something not new for me, not wanted by anyone, left all alone again and again, there was no one who chose me nor did I get an opportunity to choose anyone, but for once I really wanted it, this one feeling of being embraced and hugged by someone as if I had just experienced it a while ago, to be needed by someone and a place to belong to, 56, are my chances of living a happy life really over before it even started, please just give me an opportunity and I will prove myself and work hard to protect what is important to me and save the world with my own hands, so please, someone, anyone chose me for once in my life, 57, goddess Athena, today the general assembly was filled with both energy and joy, humans visiting the divine realm for reincarnation with a god or goddess was a very big deal after all, opportunities that keep you entertained in an immortal body in divine realm for a long time were just too few, also the opportunity to take control over a world and ascent to upper echelons of the divine realm was a big opportunity for new gods and goddesses like me who belong to the lower echelons, in the wars of holy crusade on Isle Girl hundred years ago I lost my family when I was too young, my father mother and big brother were the victims of the gore of the war, after that my family lost all its power and authority in divine realm, with me as the only surviving member, no god wanted to bother with a low level god child, with no guidance my divine powers were not that great and grew up to be the most infamous non combater nt weak god, often the other elder goddesses tried to make fun of me and used to make me run errands, I was just too weak to stand against them or refuse their most trivial demands, I had to bear it all, after all no one would dare to go against the wishes of a god from the upper echelons, usually I used to go and close myself up in the library and read books all day and night, this was my only escape, the only place where I could find peace, my own divine salvation, even though I was alone and wanted to talk to someone more than anything and share my sorrow, my work of interest, discuss with others about their life and what future held for the divine realm, but in this life of isolation, friendship does not exist, at least I was happy to be alone since it was better than to face those haughty goddesses who, 58, always made fun of me and saw me as a tool to relieve them of their boredom, after the announcement of the almighty world god a new chance presented before me to become stronger and bring back the lost glory of my family, but I was a non-combatant god, I can't even lift up a sword properly let alone think of saving a world. Maybe if I choose a strong human, who may gain enough power from my divinity even though of my incompatibility with the combat aptitude, I searched harder and harder and checked whether my divinity matched with the wavelength of anyone's soul. But it wasn't a success. Was there really no one who is fit to be a match with me? Do I really have to spend my life alone and as a weakling forever? I closed my eyes and searched for the one again but the tag of failure kept blinking in front of my eyes. I opened my eyes to count the number of students and try again. Time was of the essence but then I noticed that almost every human child had been chosen by one of the gods or goddesses. Did I really let the opportunity slip by my own hands? Did I really lose even before I tried? Was this my only chance to get to know someone better? In my heart I knew I desired no great power or status. What I really wanted was someone to accept me with all of my faults, weaknesses and strength. All the other gods only looked down upon me so if I had to turn to humans for companionship then I accept them as my equals. Even though I am weak, I cannot fight in a battle or even support my partner but it's fine. Even if I do not win I wanted to spend time with someone to know them better and travel the world and compare it with the knowledge I had gained, 59, from books in all these years. So please anyone just lend me a hand, help me, save me. My eyes had been shut but I could hear people laughing and making fun of someone. Was it me they were laughing at or maybe someone else but who? A pair of warm hands caressed my shoulder, as if someone was trying to relieve me from my stress. But is there really someone kind here? But before I even felt it I was pushed forward. But somehow my foot landed on the marble of the lower floor where in front of my eyes stood a girl helpless and afraid of whatever was in her sight. 
I turned my body in a circle and after inspecting my surroundings I saw that everyone's gazes were fixed on that girl. She had not been chosen by any god or goddess, but why? I used my divine eyes to analyze her soul and saw that there was no energy radiating from it but there was complete darkness, an abyss that sucked all light in its vicinity and peered back at you and if I continued any longer I may not be able to find my way back. Is it even possible for such an existence, was such a living being really alive with no soul power at all? It seemed that she was about to cry. No one wanted to be her partner and she was left alone. From the looks of her and other classmates it seems that they all looked down on her and treated her as an outcast. No one is even moving from their place to comfort her or lend a helping hand. Has she been really alone all this time hiding her face from the world with her long black hair and her weak looking but gorgeous body made her look like a fragile small kid who had been abandoned by fate and the world itself. Her body language of hiding her face with her hands, her body shaking with fear from everyone's hateful 60 comments and piercing gazes, the feeling of wanting someone to fill the emptiness in heart, she was just like me and I was just like her. I wanted to help her as a fellow comrade, who had suffered the same fate, but I cannot choose her because we are not compatible. This left a distasteful tinge on my tongue. A goddess and human left all alone in the darkness and thrown away from the society who considered themselves above us. Were our opportunities and wings of hope really cut short before we even got to take our first flight? Don't lose hope. Embrace and protect the ones whom you hold dear to yourself. A voice rang in my head, and I looked back to trace its source. But there was no one nor does it appear that anyone else did it. By this time my presence on the ground had attracted attention to humans. Gods or goddesses they all were just too chatty. But no one was observant enough that this very moment the future of a goddess and a human relied on a slim thread of chance and glimmer of hope that can be snapped into two at any time and lost in the shadows of forever. Isn't that the non-combat goddess? Is she trying to participate and save the world? How hilarious. She doesn't stand a chance. She is too weak. But is she really going to pair up with the only left child who has not even a flicker of soul power? 61. It doesn't make a sense. Two weakling forming a team trying to save the world or are they trying to commit suicide? No worries, they will be eliminated on the first day of their battle. We can still count one competitor less. I cannot put it any better. Haha <laughs> a crackle of laughter had filled the hall. But I did not mind. What mattered to me was the voice that asked me to protect those who are important to me. I closed my eyes and used my divine eyes again and peered into that abyss again. What is this? Have I been teleported somewhere? It's too dark here. Athena tried to move her puny, slim limbs and legs but they did not possess the strength to even stir the air. So you have come. I could hear the same voice again that asked me to do this. Where am I? Who are you? Answer me. Before my own words even reached my ear, I heard a huge screech sound and cracks appeared everywhere in this dark dimension. Crack, crack, crack. 62. My eyes were suddenly blinded by light brighter than divinity itself entered through these cracks and flooded the entire case where I could helplessly only shout for help as I drowned in that holy sea of radiance. My eyes opened in the Hall of General Assembly again and to my surprise a tiny but bright light formed at the center of the soul core of that girl and it was in perfect sync with my divinity. I felt a strange connection between the light that drowned me and the light which was in the girl's core. At last I found my partner. Without any trace of doubt or confusion on my face I took the first step towards a girl who needed help and a savior to rescue her from all her worries. 63. Suki Kondo. I was just about to cry so I closed my eyes to hold the tears back. I did not want to shame myself any more especially in front of the gods and lose face. If I had to earn my place then I had to be brave even in the face of utmost hopelessness and face my problems head on instead of running. I steeled my heart and tried to look forward in hope of counteracting everyone's opinion and stop this criticism. How dare they call me the weakest one. It was difficult. My head was lowered every time, just when I tried to make contact with anyone. But I was not going to give up, because there was never going to be a next time. My thought process soon collapsed and I regressed back to my original timid self seeing that the attention of the hall has transferred to another person. 
It was a goddess looking at me straight in the eye and I could feel the same insecurities in those shining yet sad eyes of her. Who was she? Why is everyone bad mouthing her of being a weakling and a non-combat goddess? Those eyes of everyone as if they're looking down on her. I clearly understood the meaning after being subjected and suffered through the same treatment several times myself. This goddess had been subjected to the same harsh conditions of being isolated and bullied by others. Left all alone and no one to care about you as if you never existed in the first place. I steeled my resolve and looked back in her eye. Maybe she is different from others. Maybe she will accept me with all my weaknesses. This goddess, who had green eyes and long blue hairs, was for some reason trying her hardest to look at me and I felt as if my soul was being pierced every time she closed her eyes. She wore a white and pale blue 64 outfit, long brown boots with a light brown design and a belt tucked with a piece of white cloth. I steeled my resolve and wished with all my heart and prayed to whomever these callings go to please chose me. A warm sensation had stimulated the center of my body and as it spread in my limbs, abdomen and head. I felt as if my calls had been answered. A faint smile appeared on my goddess face as she took her first step towards me. The warm sensation burned much brighter as if to fill the deep hole that formed inside my heart in these years. I steeled my resolve and for the first time without any hesitation looked straight in the eyes of the person WHO needed me the most in this entire world. Both of us moved forward our corresponding hands to make a proper handshake. But all this time, our eyes were looking at each other where tiny droplets had formed in each eyes and were just about to drip. These droplets were the symbol of the long-lost happiness we had been searching for and testified our long wait till the very end and return from a place of no hope. Both of us understood the excruciating pain behind these tears but the feeling of joy was clearly visible in our smiles too. What is your name? My name is Saki Kondo. My name is Athena. The Goddess of Knowledge 65 Information Brochure Beneficiary Deity Job Profile Homora Kenta Freya Goddess of Lust Natsu Kenchai Prometheus God of Fire Sado Fuji Bayashi Aries God of War Sakamoto Sandakranos God of Time and Eternity Ryuji Ukate Kami Kazuchi God of Swords Okeren Oishima Hermes the Messenger God Kanata Aizawa Hefa Estus the Smith God Akihiko Tatsuka Loki God of Mischief Hashima Kachuragi Poseidon God of Sea Kenma Takeshi Erebus God of Darkness 66 Information Brochure Beneficiary Deity Job Profile Horidakatari Artemis Goddess of Hunting Yumika Furata Aphrodite Goddess of Love Siaka Tenma Diana Goddess of Forest Akane Kirigashi Orpheus God of Music and Poem Seitumi Yuk Twikolos God of Nightmares Sura Kendo Astera Goddess of Justice Tama Donjo Over Goddess of Beast Saki Honduino Goddess of Blood Kariba Chioda Kali Goddess of Death Saki Kondo Athena Goddess of Knowledge 67 Chapter Minus 3 An Eternal Vow Most of them couldn't believe thy our eyes and what they were witnessing was beyond common sense for them. A non-combat goddess and a shut-in weak girl teaming up to save the world. Don't make me laugh. The more you think about it the more ridiculous it sounds. Yet again this controversy was going out of hand and almighty world god was losing his patience. He made a threatening smile and concluded the meeting. Everyone could feel the life-threatening pressure or force whatever you call it. I was suffocating under it, as if life was slowly zapped out through me. Since all the gods and goddesses had chosen their partner, they have to work well together and know each other better till the next week before the reincarnation ceremony to avoid future frictions between these sacred relations. I announce this meeting of General Assembly has come to its end. I hope you all will join the feast tonight in the Pantheon. 68. At these words all the gods and goddesses as audience left in a blink of an eye by vanishing into thin air. Can I do it too? Maybe I will try it later. Most of us were still talking to our god and goddess and introductions were in order first. Most of them had already become over-friendly with each other and were talking casually like old buddies. Some were pumped up to demonstrate their prowess in weapon-wielding and martial arts, but in our case things had gotten a little awkward. The touching union seen in that pure lustrous way of introducing ourselves were just out of our domain. Social interaction, talking to friends, etiquettes 
manners and way of expressing ourselves while talking were just out of our league. We both knew of our limitations without saying a word and so were looking in opposite direction afraid to approach each other out of embarrassment. I didn't know what to do and my mind was ringing with Christmas jingle bell songs for some reason. When all the other pairs had left the assembly grounds, Lady Athena broke the silence and said, For now let's go to my room. Okay. But this trick did not work either, and we still stood standing like fools on display. Lady Athena felt two ghastly gazes upon her and she started moving quickly towards the exit touch gate and I followed her. But this time I won't lose my way because all this time I had been holding the hands of my goddess Athena. 69 The huge sacred hall where gods assembled to make decisions to rule and govern the world was now completely empty except for the two supreme beings, the almighty world god and Lady Gaia. Was that really a surge in soul power world god? It seems so that way. But such tremendous amount of soul power how can a human even hold this tremendous power in one place? Could you identify the person W who released this power? Since I was caught by surprise I could not pinpoint the person, but it was certainly one of the children. It's unbelievable that someone possesses soul power equal to the upper echelon gods at such a young age. But this batch of children, almost all of them possesses incredible powers too. I agree, though there could be some disappointment. For example the little girl who paired with Lady Athena had such weak soul power as if she could vanish into thin air any time nowhere to be found. How she was able to live this long on earth is still a mystery to me. All her life force should have been drained at a much younger age. I am afraid that they do not sound much promising in this endeavor to save the world. Mysteries do intrigue this old man. But sometimes these mysteries may open door to possibilities which even the brightest minds cannot perceive. For now we will wait and observe the children. I hope the future we had been waiting for all this time will bloom itself in the most beautiful way. 70. The two of them then two disappeared in thin air. When will I get used to these stupid teleportation freaks? Just install some lifts or escalators instead of stairs. 71. Goddess Athena's room. I and Lady Athena directly teleported through the archway into her room. It was five times the size of the room I was allotted with. The same source less light as usual was hanging around in the room. I did not bother myself with it anymore. Sometimes maybe you should just give up on logic and start counting backwards in number system starting from the very end. Sounds ridiculous, right? Ha ha, -ha caught you. Ha ha. While a family frame photo hung above a double decker bed whose woodwork was maxed out to its very details while the silk bed sheets were just so smooth that you wanted to rub your cheeks with it all day and never got bored. The other three sides of the wall were covered with gigantic bookshelves laid in with books, using every little corner of this equipment to its maximum. I was just amazed to see these many books. A goddess of knowledge is sure to have her own personal library. Could she even be the librarian of the library in this divine realm? As usual there was an awkward silence lurking all over the room now. Since Lady Athena was a goddess and she had to guide me towards saving the world, she thought to take the initiative and start a conversation. We gods had been given the task to select the children from the mortal realm from whichever place we saw fit. This week we had to monitor your class and select those whom we believed would fit perfectly for this job. What do you mean? This piece of information came as a surprise to me. 72. We had been keeping an eye on all of your activities at school. Isn't this privacy invasion? I thought to myself, maybe in this modern era people are always being watched. If not on earth then either from heaven or hell. Maybe the gods are not aware of laws and the personal rights of human beings or they just don't care. We had to keep an eye on your class for a whole week and select children who are capable of wielding unique powers. Now when I see you up close, I remember I saw you then in the girls school washroom where three children splashed water all over you and ran away. At the time I got so confused about what to do after seeing that you were all wet. So I used my divine powers and being the goddess of knowledge, I efficiently placed an information command on the lady warden to carry a pair of sports uniform to the washroom at that point of time and give it to you after seeing your condition. Sorry, for telling you this and my inability to prevent that felony from happening. That was all I could do at that time. 
Please forgive me for my incompetence. All of my brain cells were disrupted at these words and I brainstormed to restore my previous memories. After she narrated me this incident, it did really happen in a strange way. Just at the end of recess the three delinquents splashed water from the other side of door all over me. I was reduced to a state where I could not go to class or even ask someone for help. I had to wait till dismissal or someone comes barging in. But in a very peculiar way I heard a knock. Yes, what's the matter? I am the school warden. Here is your physical education uniform. 73. Wait how did she know I was even here and what about my conditions? Did the delinquents tell her? I ruled out this possibility since they won't be so kind to me ever in my life. Maybe she saw them committing the deed and wanted to help me somehow. But now I realize that the one who came to the rescue was my goddess Athena. My heart had started beating faster than ever because this was the first time ever. Someone helped me out of my necessity and not made fun of my situation and instead took action. Um dot dot you. Thank you, my lady. But it hurts me that you call yourself incompetent. What you did means a lot to me. Why do you say so? It's just as you described. While many gods and goddesses were monitoring us but out of all those you understood my situation, and helped me out by resolving the problem with the most delicate and proper way without hurting anyone, I will never forget your kindness. Ha ha ha. Listen Saki you don't have to talk to me in such a formal manner. We are partners who are going to be reincarnated together, so we should treat each other as equals and be friends. Wait. What a god and human equal, by looking at other gods and angels it didn't appear to be the case. So, why? At this lady Athena with her left hand lifted the front part of my hair which covered my face and for some time after staring at my face, with her right hand she pinched my nose lightly. 74. It's not fair, you are so beautiful and have such a pretty face. You even look more adorable than most of the goddesses I know. Even your skin is so white and soft like silk. Why do you even hide it in the first place? And yes from now onward yes we will be friends. This was totally a new experience for me. I did hear it quite a lot from stranger and from my classmates or far off relative that I am quite pretty. But hearing from a goddess made me feel that she genuinely felt that way. The most important part was that she really wanted to become my friend. I was really in heaven. It felt like a huge burden had been lifted from my chest. The reason I hide my face is because I think I look prettier than others and would stand out a lot. When the school had began and I was a transfer student, all the girls avoided talking to me in whatever way I tried. No one seems to have wanted to be my friend. Then I read somewhere that other classmates feel insecure when they are around someone who wanted to attract attention to only oneself. So out of desperation I considered concealing my face with my long hairs, but it had a totally adverse effect. My classmates started considering me a freak and even avoided me more as if I had never existed. As for your second question, I actually never had someone to call a friend before nor there is a family member who cared about me after my parents' death. So dot so, I, will be your friend Lady Athena. Tears were about to roll down through my eyes but I stopped them from overflowing by looking upwards and also avoided facing Lady Athena for a while, but it was useless, the dam was already broken and the waves were set free, at this point Lady Athena hugged me tightly near her chest and I could hear her heart beat clearly, it felt so warm, I really wanted there, 75, time to stop their or flow continuously in that state, I was never alone, someone did really care about me in this world, and it doesn't matter if I meet them after dying. Don't worry Saki. There is no need to hold D back. Because I feel the same way. I too had been waiting for a friend for a very long time. At the end of these words tiny droplets of water fell on my cheek. We remained in that position for quite a long time even though we had stopped crying a while ago. We broke from our everlasting hug when we heard a knock at our door. Lady Athena opened the door and found an angel who came here to remind us about tonight's banquet and feet. Saki I think we should leave after getting ready for the banquet. Okay then. I will be taking my leave and go and get ready in my room. No, wait you can get ready here. I think I have a dress that will fit you well. But is it really okay, for me to? It will be fine after all you are my beneficiary from now on. I accepted her invitation and sat back, 
For some reason we again ended in a peculiar situation because there was only one bathroom in that room to be used and if we took turns then we would be late for the feast. We were taking a bath together. We sat across each other face to face at the ends of the bathtub but were just staring at its bottom. There was no tap in the washroom and neither a shower unlike my room which was missing the taps and knobs of the shower to control. 76. Water. But just by thinking of taking a bath I could bring forth water from the shower. But here it was different Lady Athena could summon water out of thin air and also control its temperature and any amount of water could be summoned at any time. But out of nowhere Lady Athena jumped at me and started poking at my abdomen and the ticklish feeling overtook my body and I couldn't stop laughing. Stop that. Please dot dot anything but stop. What are you talking about? The fun had just begun. After feeling your soft skin when I hugged you how could I stop myself now from touching you or snuggle you tightly in my arms. I don't know whether she really felt that way or was just her way of teasing me. But I enjoyed it a lot. Maybe these are the things and moments you enjoy with your best friends. After coming from the bath, Lady Athena moved her index finger in a circle and hot air started flowing around our body in a helical locus which completely dried us unlike my non-electric usage dry which was damp too slow. I don't know whether I will be able to do the same thing as Lady Athena does. Maybe I will ask her to teach me next time or even try it myself. When I wore the outfit Lady Athena gave me, she started staring at me. What's the matter? I had no idea the dress will fit you this well. Also you look like a princess from a foreign land. It's a waste having such a beautiful face if you keep covering it with your hairs. 77. I started blushing and the only thing I could muster up to say was, thank you. But then I stopped and took a proper look at Lady Athena herself and made an attempt to compliment her. Lady Athena but you are quite a beauty yourself. I bet and why God would be captivated by your alluring charm. I wasn't trying to deceive her or anything. I truly meant that what I said. But truthfully speaking I had used this line from a novel I read a long time back. Goddess Athena was wearing a white gown with intricate fabric designs at several places. It was quite similar to my own gown which she had offered me to wear. Let's go. Lady Athena took my left hand and started walking in the hallway leading the way to the banquet hall. 78. The banquet hall. 19 gods and their beneficiaries had already assembled in the banquet hall to enjoy the feast. Most of them had become close comrades and started making their own plan of action to save the world. Some combat gods with weapons were trying to draw a training plan while some wanted to goof off and enjoy their stay at heavens and indulge in all the luxuries it had to offer. A long wooden table stood at the center of hall but it was shining as if it had been polished to its maximum lustrous state by the most skilled artisans. At the other end of the hall stood another table with lots of large golden utensils laden with lavish and mouth-watering dishes and plates were arranged in piles. It was a buffet system where one had to adhere to self-service and choose whatever amount of food the person wanted to. The menu presented variety of dishes from sour wafers to spicy stew and sweet confectionaries. But the special attraction of today's feast was the heavenly wild boar which Lady Artemis hunted in the Eleonora woods on the other side of Mount Olympus. While she was the center of attraction of all the present attendees, everyone also commended Goddess Hestia who turned it into a delicacy. All the nineteen gods and children present in the hall took their seats on the dining table everyone sitting in front of each of their gods in horizontal pairs. Homora noticed something was wrong and asked his goddess Freya, to clear his doubt. Lady Freya if you may, but why are there only thirty-eight seats in the dining hall if twenty gods were selected for the reincarnation ceremony? Aren't the others going to attend the feast? 79. Ha 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 ha. It's just as you suspect my child. You HRV quite the observation skill, but there has been no mistake. It's actually for entertainment purpose. A special surprise for our little goddess who will appear soon. I see fear you have succumbed to your old tactics, but it will be quite fun to see the black sheep try to escape from this situation. Lady Artemis was pointing her fork in the sky and imagining the look on everyone's faces to see Athena miserable state. I still don't get it. Why a non-combat goddess would try to challenge us, just because of her family's glorious past and because of her beautiful charms, doesn't mean that she can defy us. That's why we are going to teach her a lesson today. 
Hermes you did well in making the arrangement of their late arrival. Never mind, but I feel sad for the human child who has to suffer humiliation due to her goddess. As far as I remember she had the weakest soul power in the whole class, almost none at all. How was she even alive? Wouldn't her life force had extinguished at an early age? It's a quite a funny duo of weaklings. Lord Hermes looked in the direction of other children as if to extract information about that girl. The name of the girl is Saki. My grace. As usual Kenta was showing off his communication skills and playing the role of class leader. I don't remember a girl with that name in the class. Ah. She is the freak who never talks to anyone and cover her face with her hairs. 80. Oh. You mean the girl who always got bullied. Sigura can you tell me more about this girl? Astera the goddess of justice made an unusual request as if she was taking a special interest in that girl. Lady Astera, you have nothing to worry about. The girl in question is really weak and fragile. Sigura behaved as if she was presenting her statement in front of a judge. In a court of justice, Lady Ova and Lady Astera as a matter of fact even at the time of dying in the bus she was being bullied and beaten by us. Tama had already started making fun of me. She just keeps reading book all day and has a beautiful appearance. Except for that she is nothing in our eyes. I bet she would die on the first day she is born in Isleguard. Haha. <laughs> Saki had already started banging the dining table in front of her and laughing loudly while the other present in attendance couldn't hold themselves back seeing her explosive behavior and followed her example. Goddess Aphrodite sensing the presence of two unwelcomed guests for whom everyone had been waiting for quite a while, were going to make an entry. Everyone get ready, the show is going to begin. Let's enjoy it to the fullest. All attentions and anticipation were directed towards the entrance, but everyone's jaw dropped when two beautiful maidens in white gown made an entrance. Everyone had the same question just who they were. 81. Wait, is that girl really in our class? I don't remember someone this beautiful in our class. Was the Dariuso and she always hid her face. Maybe I should have tried to talk to her after all. I never expected Saki was this beautiful. It's not just her. Even her goddess is so beautiful. Should we go and talk to her? All the gods and boys were making the same type of comments which brought frustration and angered all the goddesses and girls. Her goddess is even more beautiful than Lady Aphrodite. Someone had just misspoke the taboo words by comparing the goddess of beauty and goddess of knowledge. Lady Aphrodite was totally riled up by that statement which totally challenged her own existence. The students present in the hall and all the other gods could feel the divine power radiating from her body so strong that it could destroy the whole banquet hall in a blink of an eye. Lady Freya took the hand of Aphrodite and comforted her. TCCCH, I won't let it end like this. How dare she ruin my fun? 82, Saki Kondo. We were greeted by an angel at the outside perimeter of the banquet hall and he informed us that all the guests had already arrived. For some reason Lady Athena looked worried on receiving this piece of information. Was she afraid of something and if yes then what? As soon as we entered the hall the room fell in complete silence and small gossips could be heard but I couldn't make them out since we were too far. For me the only person that mattered was Lady Athena. All this time I just kept looking at her face and smiled all the time while we chatted among ourselves. For some reason all the gods and boys were confused and exasperated, while all the girls and goddess had a look of dismay and rage. Jealousy was written all over their faces. After all Lady Athena looked so glamorous in her outfit and even the gods couldn't he deny it. We started moving towards the part of the hall where the plates were kept. Suddenly a goddess stood there from her seat and asked, Athena, why are you late? We were all missing you. It was the goddess of lust Freya. At this lady Athena stopped her feet and her body started shaking, but she did not look back to reply and stayed silent. All this time I never saw her behave like this. To me she looked like a cheerful person who took joy and gave her best in everything she tried. Even though she might have been isolated by others I never suspected that even gods get bullied if they are weak. 83. Why don't you take a seat and have a talk first? We will do really like to know about the new friend you made. This time it was Goddess Astera who too wanted to be a part of this drama. I looked back and was furious to see that all the chairs had been occupied and two chairs were less than the number of guests. 
It was not an organizational mistake but it was all planned. These gods are trying to pick up on Lady Athena and no one is objecting. But then I too was terrified at the thought that was it because of me. Were they trying to make fun of my goddess so that they could bully me? Was this done by the delinquents? At this point all the goddesses and girls were smiling as their plan was in full action. The gods and the boys still for some reason were making some complex comments and promises. Let me add some fun too. Sigura stood from her seat and started walking towards me. She came and stood in front of me and gave an evil smile. She grabbed my right hand and started squeezing it with her Herculean strength. Ah ah ah. Something sharp just now pricked in the middle of my hand and blood started to flow from my hand and some drops of this red fluid started dripping on the floor. It was a major cut. She must have hit something sharp under her palm, maybe a small knife or blade. Do as the other goddesses asked you to do. It would be in BSD of your interest not to make me angry. Everyone started laughing in the hall. 84. Athena you should take proper care of your partner and explain her how things work here. Don't forget your place as a non-combat goddess or try to stand in our way. Don't go all high and mighty or someone might get hurt. At these words Athena who was obviously still shaking with fear looked at me and was shocked to see the blood in my hand and another girl trying to twist and sprain my wrist. All her emotions vanished from her face. She slapped Sigura on her face tightly and broke me free from her tight grasp. She held my hurt hand gently as if to stop the bleeding and started moving towards the gate through which we just entered. Suki, we are leaving. 85. Goddess is terror. How dare she hurt my child. Sigura stomped on the floor and came back and took her seat. That slap was really tight. I won't forget this Suki just you wait. She still held her hand where she was slapped and searched for ice on the dining table. She really thinks that she can challenge us. Let's not let it end here. I do have a plan. Artemis get your beast ready by day after tomorrow. We might as well see some wandering girls getting hunted. It was Lady Freya who spoke about such a devious tragedy. While well, Lady Artemis C implemented it. Well D game always sounds fun to me. While some of the goddesses and delinquents discussed about their plan, the others just eavesdropped. Some laughed, some made sad face to think about the looming tragedy. Some still maintained their cool but no one objected to their devious plot. No one questioned that how did those two girls anger them or why are they so fixated over them. I wonder why no one ever questions the actions of the strongest. Why it is the weakest one has to only suffer. 86. Somewhere in Mount Olympus. Both I and my goddess left the inner perimeter of the banquet and Lady Athena muttered, teleport and both of us vanished into thin air. For some reason the blood in my brain had shifted to one side, but it was soon getting settled. While I still felt a bit nauseated I opened my eyes and saw that we were walking across a meadow. The grass was Eden green and thigh high to a thrush. A neon blue ribbon of river ran through the center of the meadow. After taking a few steps along the stream we came across an inhumanly quiet and solitary dilapidated small wooden bridge. It was a graceful pedestrian with a medieval 15th century, old-fashioned lattice metal plated architecture style. We crossed the bridge under a silent sky, which was to my surprise dark. At last, for the first time I was glad to see darkness because a source less light just didn't add up. The bridge landed us on a higher elevation than the surrounding and what stood before me was a tall ancestral, unfamiliar yet a majestic tall tree with mint green leaves and antler shaped branches. This was our final destination. Whenever I am sad or angry I come to this place. It is the only spot where I can feel like myself. For the first time I got to see this cheerless side of Lady Athena. She then lifted my hurt hand in which the bleeding had stopped. Does it hurt? Before I could speak anything. Lady Athena started speaking in a bit different tone as if she was chanting. 87. O Goddess of Light, I beseech thee, heal thy wounds and bestow upon us your divine protection. Lady Athena's body started shining brightly, surrounded by a golden mist. Even in the dark the light it radiated was more than enough to even outshadow a full moon. The light then siphoned through all her body and collected on our hands and just like that the wound closed up on itself and was healed to the extent that no mark was left. As if the cut had never existed. Living in heavens has its own perks after all. Lady Athena clutched my hands more tightly, 
and yet the touch was gentle and warm. Tears fell on our curled up hands, but for some reason I felt as the happiest person alive on earth. For the first time someone had got angry for me and was worried about me getting hurt. Sorry. My classmates usually try to bully me and you got so worried because of me. Sorry the goddesses tried to hurt you in an attempt to humiliate me. Both of our voices overlapped as we spoke at the same time. A complete silence followed these bizarre contradicting statements which were complemented by the wind which was shaking the trees with a whiz sound. We sprang into an outburst of laughter, laughing at our sealed and intertwined fate of being played out in the hands of Strong up till now. 88. We both looked up in the sky while both of our long hairs fluttered in the cool breeze which had made us to forget the tiredness and stress of the recent events. According to the goddess this was the only place on the Mount Olympus where you could see stars. A shooting star shot down in the sky followed by a rain of falling stars leaving behind a trail of golden dust in their trail. While I and my goddess could just look up high in the sky and chisel down this epic view in our memory. I promise, I will protect my goddess with my life. I promise, I will protect Tsuki with my life. And an eternal vow was made which was acknowledged by the divine realm itself. 89. The balcony of the highest building in the pantheon. The world god and Lady Gaia were taking a night stroll in the large balcony of the pantheon. Creepers as tall as 30 meter were growing on the side walls of the balcony which continued to twirl around itself in the small bars of the balcony and grow further. Tomorrow is a big day after all. Yes my lord. The tree of life bears its fruit after every one zero comma oh 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 year and that auspicious day is tomorrow. The fruit of the tree of life is an apple which has an extraordinarily high amount of life force stored in it. Even if a god of lower echelon eats it they might die by the sudden outburst of energy. Only the stronger gods of upper echelons and gods with sub-administrative rights are able to properly assimilate this fruit and control its power. So only very few gods knows about the existence of of such a powerful fruit. It is also said that sometimes the fruit chooses the bearer itself by falling in front of the person it thinks is worthy of its power. I will be e looking forward to tomorrow and will witness the glory of this divine tree myself. After circling around the balcony once, World God turned towards Gaia to inquire about something. I heard the gods and goddesses caused quite a conundrum for Athena and her beneficiary. The almighty world god spoke with a sour taste in his mouth. It's as you suspect, my lord. I was informed that the girl even got hurt in the banquet hall. Lady Gaia quickly responded to world god's inquiry to lift up his spirits in this unfortunate series of 90 events. After all a goddess being harassed by other gods could destroy the order in the divine realm. But now something special has caught world god's attention. Lady Gaia looked up in the sky in the direction which he was looking. Her face totally went blank by the sight she was witnessing and unable to keep her curiosity hidden directly asked the world god. How could there be a star fall in divine realm? The world god lifted up his scepter and pointed towards the multitude of stars which were barely hanging and were about to become the part of the fall. In the traditions of the divine system, star falls is a sign that two people make secret promises which continues for a whole eternity. I wonder who those brave fellows are. We might as well be witnessing the beginning of a new legend. 91. Outside Athena's room. I spent a lot of time with Sachi near the tree of life. Wait did I tell her that the tree under which we were watching the star fall is the tree of life. Next time when I take her there, I will make sure to tell her. Wait what are Lady Hera and Sir Apollo doing outside my room? They are the gods of the upper echelon of the divine realm and were one of the strongest gods out there. Sir Apollo and Lady Hera. What bring you here this late at night? Nothing dear. We were just worried to hear about what happened at the banquet hall. Are the both of you doing fine? There is nothing to worry for you, Saki is fine and I have already asked someone to properly escort her to her room. For some time Lady Hera hesitated but finally she asked. Athena, you do realize that you are an on-combat goddess and so will be your beneficiary. The world you will be reincarnated will be ravaged in war by powerful beings. You might as well be throwing your life without gaining anything. Apollo followed in the footsteps of Hera and interrupted. Remember you are not risking only your life but your beneficiary's life too. 
She later might blame you for her misfortunate conditions. Suki is not like others. She would never blame anyone. Even so don't forget that your parents too died in a war in the same world. 92. Will you be able to overcome the difficult eyes and hardships if you can't even punch someone, let alone defeat a monster? You will make a life of hell and fear for that girl if it still continues. Don't worry there will be more other opportunities to become powerful in divine realm. So let this one just slide. Don't worry you don't have to decide now. Think it out properly within three days and then make a proper decision. The two gods then took their leave. After my family died in the war 200 years ago, they have been looking after me from time to time and giving me advice. They were one of the closest friends of my mother and father. Even still they were usually busy and couldn't always be there for me. If I want to make my own place among the gods then I have to take this risk. But remembering the innocent face of Saki, I can never dream in my life to hurt her feelings. What if I really make her life miserable? Does she really even want me to be her goddess? Will she still accept me as her partner if she knew I was weak and cannot provide her with a good unique skill? Will she blame me for her misfortune? All these bad thoughts kept on popping in my mind, but I concluded to talk things out with Saki and then let her make the decision. The tiredness of all those uncanny events had exhausted her and she went to deep slumber free from all the worries of the world. 93. Suki's Room A special angel who worked under Lady Athena accompanied me to the place where I was staying. I entered my room which was still dark and changed into my night clothes. I lied on my bed and started putting the events in order which happened from morning till now. I tried to snuggle my pillow by hugging it close to me. Thinking about Lady Athena and her actions really made her look cool and super awesome. She really cared about me and got angry on my behalf as well. I truly made a new wonderful best friend. I tried to sleep but my eyes just couldn't stay silent. So I decided to stay awake all night and read the books which I borrowed from Lady Athena and were delivered to my dorm in the evening. I imagined the presence of light in my room and rays of thick light enlightened the whole room. For some reason I had an idea to try and learn magic after seeing the healing spell performed by Lady Athena. The books I borrowed from her were all beginners level, with titles such as Dash, The Origin of Divine Realm, The Existence of Divine System and Its Mechanics, Laws That Govern the Divine Realm, Legends of Mount Olympus and the Gods That Lived in Night He, The Monsters That Row and the Peak of Mount Olympus and the Forest of Eleonora. 94. The blueprint of the Cardlia city and the world mapping graph. No matter what I will uncover the secret of existence of these stupid large amount of stairs and the reason for absence of lifts and escalators, their working structure of the town hall and IT's people, and the book I wanted to read the most was Dash. The usage of magic and the chance to bring forth the changes in nature. It was midnight and I had six hours before morning and six books to read. There was no time to waste. I flipped the first book open and started reading. By 3 a.m. I had already completed five books. I sure am a bookworm and also had a good memory so I remember everything whatever I read as my brain registered it like a computer data processor. All the books were magically enchanted since they looked thin, light in weight and its standard book size. But when you start reading you find that the book should have been much thicker than it appeared. The working of the divine system were quite new to me. I never knew that heaven worked in such a way. One could even compare the divine system to an ultra supercomputer with unlimited storage capacity. 95. The only viable reason I came up with the existence of stairs was that gods liked to walk even though they can use magic like teleportation. Also the legends were quite fascinating and it seems that tomorrow was an important day of Mount Olympus since the tree of life was going to bear its fruit after 10,000 years again. Now the main event had come for me to learn magic. Will I be really able to do it? Well I think I have been using it in my room. I could make water come out from shower and control its temperature. I could also produce electricity and use dryer and turn the room light on and off at will. Well considering that just by imagining I could conjure water, electricity and light, I couldn't wait but flipped the first page open and began reading. Even though the book was enchanted it was still quite thick and heavy. It had a fat brown cover and the book was quite old. 
According to Lady Athena the book was written by both her father and mother and was the longest book in her own personal library. Also the book was quite close to her heart. The fact that she lent me this book means that she trusted me with her whole heart and it really meant a lot for me. I had already pledged to devote my entire life to help Lady Athena in her endeavors and for that I needed to be strong. If not physically then I have to be mentally prepared for the worst possibilities. It seems the noise which was coming from the room below till 2 o'clock had stopped. They were partying late at this hour. It seems that all of the students planned it this way after the banquet hall. Of course they did not invite me. Maybe they were doing this just below my room full knowing that I would be listening there happy. 96. Merry songs and cheers and would be jealous or storm in their party and get embarrassed. During the briefing in the assembly hall we were told that one of our wishes would come true if we save the world. At that time the only greatest wish I could think of was a place which I could call home and a person who really cared about me. And that wish had only come true. Now the only thing I could ask for was to stay by Lady Athena's side forever. It was a selfish wish but I couldn't think or want anything else in the world. So I had no reason to worry about their stupid party and their cheap tricks. I had no longer time to be played by them in their hands or get worked up on their silly views about me. We had six days left to prepare for our reincarnation. I cannot waste a single moment on merry making and idle chit chat. I had to cover as much information about the world of Isleguard and be prepared for any situation. Learning magic and about the geographical and political situation and history of the world was one of the ways I could think of. Battle prowess at present in this weak body of mine was impossible. I could only make a guess. But if we are reborn and have my intact memory then maybe I do have a chance to train my body and learn swordsmanship and become physically strong too. I started reading from the first page and found out about the meaning of MP and SP. Even one's life force could be used in magic. Magic can be invoked by using chants and they could be seen as a request petition from their respective gods. There are basically four attributes in magic, fire, water, wind and earth, light and darkness, dark matter, are two other attributes yet considered as a separate and special branches of advanced magic. Any person can have affinity for one or more attributes. 97. But my eyes always looked for one missing piece and that was why chants were used in the first place. I did not use chants for bathing or turning off or on the light. It was just pure imagination and thinking. Perhaps the chance could be considered as a descriptive line of the effects of spell and create a strong and vivid picture of the spell function. The longer the chant, the stronger the magic was and more difficult to visualize it in the first place. After covering a major portion of the basics I thought to try it myself and learn my place. I was ready to fail in the first place if things did not go well as planned. What if I cannot use magic in the way I think? But I cannot allow such thoughts to adulterate my desires and imagination. As for getting a feel to how magic works I had already seen Lady Athena doing it and how this magic energy materializes in one's body and its warm feeling. The first thing I wanted to try was to form water out of thin air. So as for the knowledge I have the air around us consisting of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide water vapor and other gases in fixed proportions. Since we are humans so the divine realm would also have a similar composition of gases. First I had to try and separate water vapor from other gases. Also I should keep in mind the properties of other gases while I am separating them. Since I cannot allow oxygen and hydrogen to mix so I needed to keep the oxygen covered in an envelope of nitrogen and same for other gases which are combustible. Water vapor is just water at a much higher temperature so to convert it in water I just needed to drop there. 98. Temperature and it to keep in mind the various kinetic energies of the water molecule and also the laws of thermodynamics which governed these processes. And there it was I opened my eyes and globules of water floating in front of my eyes above my palm. Also by controlling the rotational kinetic energy and translational kinetic energy of water molecules I could control the movement and the speed of water flowing around my hand. Then just for fun I tried to launch the water in a glass kept on the table 5 meters away from where I was sitting, while half the water landed inside the glass. The other half spread all over the table and wetted the carpet. 
Also while launching some of the water leaked from the projectile leaving a trail in its mark. I was still new at this and this innovative way of imagining things was too slow. The whole thing took one minute just to conjure water while Lady Athena could conjure water in large amount in no time at all. I kept on practicing the same thing again and again and the whole time was reduced to 15 seconds in which I could conjure enough water to fill a bathtub. I was just too excited at the thought that when I take bath next time with Lady Athena then I would conjure water myself and surprise her. But in all this practice, the whole room was drenched in water so I just tried to control the temperature of water again and tried to evaporate it. For some reason it was taking a lot of time because the area in which I could control the temperature was still small. Also when I moved to the next portion I had to start raising temperature from the beginning. 99. This won't do. This way I will waste more time. It just started getting fun and now I had to clean the mess. I started stretching my own hair and banging the back of my hand on my forehead. I am sure no one saw me in this shameful act. Whenever I got frustrated or felt embarrassed I started banging my head. One could describe it as neither too hard nor too soft. Just then I had an idea. Why not use hot wind currents to increase the rate of evaporation in the whole room? I set up a convection current system in the whole room and the humidity in the room was raised to an extent where I was sweating all over but the idea worked and the room was restored to its usual dry state. Now what to do about my body and my clothes? I needed to change quickly otherwise the sweat might affect my body. Taking a bath was a nice idea and it was already 4 in the morning and outside through the window it almost looked like it was dawn even though there was no sun. For some reason it felt peculiar and remarkable at the same time. I put off my clothes and entered the bathtub and prepare a cold water bath to cool off. While I was in the bath the idea of evaporation and separation of gases at molecular level gave me an idea to conjure fire. So while I was relaxing in the bath. I started separating air again in its different molecular form. I trapped each gas separately and enclosed them in an invisible sphere of nitrogen to keep them away from reacting separately and go kaboom. Then I took the sphere of oxygen and dissipated the nitrogen covering and raised the temperature of the sphere which lit up a bright yellow flame. It was not as large as I wanted it to be but 100. Combusting a small amount of oxygen at regular intervals was much safer than combusting large amount of oxygen in one go and burn the entire room. Getting kicked out of your room on the first day by the landlord was a tragic fate I did not wish to suffer. I later wanted to try it with hydrogen but it could be dangerous in a closed space. Maybe I can ask Lady Athena to assist me to an open and safe area. I came out of the bath and felt refreshed more than ever. For some reason practicing all that magic was quite tiring. Maybe because it was my first time. I then used a cool breeze to dry myself the natal. Every time I did it, I always feel so happy and content. Let's do it once more. It tickles. I turned back and looked at the bathtub in which there was still cold water. I had used fire and water. The question is can I use both at the same time to raise the temperature of cold water in front of me in one go. I remember once reading about an experiment in which the box lid opened on itself when the steam pressure built inside the box was high enough. Also if we keep on pumping steam inside a closed box or there is a sudden high influx of steam or gas inside a closed container it might be reduced to bits and torn apart in an instant no matter the material used. So to create such tremendous amount of steam in one blow I had a pretty good idea of achieving it with what I had just applied. Most of the people will consider fire and water elements are incompatible and mostly work against each other diminishing their effects, but 101. This incompatibility just may give rise to a compatible power I am seeking for. It's like this. I conjured small amount of water in one hand and tried spinning it in only one direction forming a hollow sphere. For some time the shape would distort but I think I got the hang of it for now. In the other hand I conjured fire my combusting a small amount of oxygen I tried to spin it in other direction. In both of my hands were two basic non-compatible attributes of magic but in hands of a genius science student they can open a lot of possibilities and variations. 
For some time it was quite difficult to maintain them in the spinning sphere state otherwise it just extinguished or dissipated. After confirming that I won't lose focus and the spheres of fire and water are intact in both of my hands, I forced them together into one. Yes. You heard me I just shoved them together into each other. One would say that the water would extinguish the fire. I will too agree but don't forget these are magic attributes spinning in opposite direction and the water sphere is a hollow one. The two spheres combined as I had predicted and formed a much larger sphere than before and were now spinning in one direction. 102. To keep the explosion small. I kept the fire attribute in check so the flames were less powerful than water. Hence the final energy ball was spinning in the direction of water and vice versa. Also I think if I increase the fire attribute there will be more chances of a bigger explosion. Maybe I will try it next time. For now I have to do with this. I launched this orb of explosive magical power into the bathtub. Boom. There it was. Huge steam and white hot fog rise out at full force which can even make a hole in a metal plate. However the water was so hot and it splashed on my body due to the impact that I got minor burn injuries. For some time it did pain a lot but more than the pain it was the opportunity to try the healing spell. I was just too excited to cast a healing spell for which people would have considered me an angel on earth. O oh goddess of light, I beseech thee. Heal thy wounds and bestow upon you s your divine p protection. White light started surrounding my body and started siphoning all over the burned parts of my body. Dot ow, wow, what the heck, did the white light just dissipate? Ugh, no I lost focus. Or maybe I wasn't imagining the wound being healed. Maybe for skin burns I must imagine the destruction of damaged and dead cells and siphon magical power to the nearby cells and try for cell division and repair the damaged parts. Also for some reason after myself saying that lengthy obsolete line I don't think I need. 103. That may be just a simple word should be able to do it. After all a dying man can't be saved on battlefield if the healing spell takes too long to spell out and activate then. Here goes nothing. Heal. This time my complete focus was on the damaged portions and the nearby cells which will undergo cell division consecutively. White light started radiating through my body again. Unlike the previous time where this white light would cover my body as it appeared from the surrounding. This white light was radiating throughout my body and was responding to the core center of my body. Also for some reason my long black hairs had turned white. I wonder how I look in white hairs. But these abrupt changes did not make me lose focus. The toll of the burns and the pain was shearing through my body and I need to quickly apply healing magic otherwise it may leave mark. The burnt spots started vanishing and new skin took its place. Just in case I walked to the mirror and scanned my whole body. No, how did this happen? It's as if I have totally developed a new skin out of nowhere. When I peeked into the mirror my fair skin was glowing more brightly than ever as if I just came out of the salon after taking a full body tone treatment. Even my face where there were some dark circles due to waking up till late nights had vanished. Well my hairs have restored to black color at least. But there was still the problem that they had gotten lengthier, maybe even stronger and had a fine luster in my hair strands. 104. It was as if someone had casted a beautifying spell over me. Did I just heal my whole body unconsciously instead of only healing the burns? I need to be more cautious while using magic power. I can already feel a bit dizzy because I might have lost a lot of magical points. I should probably lie down for some time. It was 6 in the morning when I woke up. I probably slept for an hour or so. Last night we had decided that we will meet again tomorrow morning at the same spot where we went after the banquet hall. I prepared some sandwiches from the materials in the kitchen. The pantry was full of snacks and cold drinks. So there was no need to worry about food. For those who don't know at my uncle's home I used to prepare my morning breakfast and school lunch on my own. Even in the evening when the whole family went out to have dinner I was asked to stay at home. My uncle and aunt would themselves make excuses of me by saying that there are a lot of recent neighborhood burglaries so I need to keep the watch or I had to prepare for my exams. I always felt frustrated when things went this way. I too wanted to eat good food. So I had made up mind 
to learn cooking by watching videos online. I would wake up whole night and try several dishes ranging from normal everyday to exquisite cuisines from Japanese to continental including sweets and other confectionaries. In my eyes I was already a grand chef and I was able to come up with a perfect dish on my first attempts. Maybe I should have tried in the cooking club at school but even after sending several applications they rejected me without even trying me. 105. After having my breakfast I came out of the building and first time started walking on the road. As per the angel the roads will take you in the direction of the place I wanted to go. I kept the image of the tree in my mind. For some reason that and the shooting stars were the only thing I could remember about the place. I walked on the greystone pavement and I could see a lot of angels unloading and transporting cargoes from a huge car drawn by horses with feathers. Are they the heavenly beasts called Pegasus which I read in the book yesterday? There was hustle and bustle in every nook and corner of the streets. Most of the gods were carrying some boxes while some walked in groups gossiping about different types of games song and dance. Also there were many decorative items like huge plants laden with beautiful flowers of all colors I could think of. There were long red carpets, and huge logs were piled in the middle of street in a square formation one over the other maybe for a bonfire at night as a special event. One could possibly think of it as the preparation of a huge festival. Right I remember the tree of life after 10,000 years was going to bear its one fruit today. I wonder what it tastes like. I would love to explore this festival with Lady Athena. I will make sure that I ask her about it when we meet. 106. Information Brochure Divine System The Divine Realm, Mortal Realm, the Universe, the Hell or the Realm of Dead are all governed by a certain set of laws which are controlled maintained and observed by a single power entity called the Divine System. Over all these laws of nature the one who presides above all and have the power to twist these laws of nature is the Almighty World God. This position is also known as the Administrator. Administrator. The Almighty World God is the most powerful being, the Absolute. He is the controller and the governor of the Divine System. His job is to use the divine system to observe the world and take actions to maintain the stability among all the three realms. Sub-administrators. There are several other beings that are given certain limited access to the divine system. They generally include the strongest gods of the upper echelons who are the direct descendants of the almighty world god in terms of blood and divinity. Others include Hades the god of the underworld and the strongest apostle of hell. Usually even these rites can be scrutinized or denied as seen fit by the administrator. There are only two cases where a sub-administrator uses the power of divine system when allowed by the administrator or when the command issued fails to be observed or is overlooked by the administrator. 107. Origin In the beginning there was nothingness which accumulated over time at one point giving birth to desire and so the God's will was born to fulfill these desires. On fulfillment of the first desire which was to remove nothingness, light was formed by the God's will. This god made a place called the divine realm from where he would fulfill these desires. For the first time something was created in this nothingness and then there was birth of matter, birth of consciousness, or birth of living creatures, birth of culture. The mortal races occupied the mortal realm. God made several other gods called his descendants and created the omnipotent power called divine system. These descendants could siphon and wield this power to fulfill the desires of the mortal realm. But these desires were an endless loop of crisscross and most of them conflicted which gave rise to malice, hunger, hatred, jealousy, anger and evil. The malice then accumulated and took a separate life form that had their own desires. The god collected these new species and made a separate realm for them called hell. 108. Divine realm and gods the land of gods flourished while the lower the gods stood in lineage and as descendants the lower it could siphon the power of pure divinity, but divine power in itself was the strongest source of energy in existence. Only the body of God can handle the divine power. The body of gods is special as it contains the blood of the world god called Aka which serves as the medium to siphon divinity from divine system. No mortal from mortal realm or denizen of hell can use divinity. This is an undisputable nature of the divine system. Mortal realm. The world god created a universe which keeps on expanding as the number of worlds increases to fulfill the desire of the mortal beings. 
All these worlds contain different or almost similar species of living beings with humans, elves, beastmen and demons forming the major population in this realm. Different world has different magical densities in their structure and composition hence which decides the strength and mental capacity of the living beings living on that world. World. Each world in mortal realm was first but a small particle called core. This core is the solidified form of God's blood which is in highly compressed and in its densest form. The denser is this core the stronger is the world in terms of magical culmination and nearer to the divine realm and more magical density is possessed by it. Around this core the land masses are formed due to its infinite gravitational pull. 109. Hello Realm of the Dead. The denizen of the hell consists of evil spirits, spirits with unfulfilled desires, zombies, necromancers, vampires. These are the living beings that claim hell as their turf. Guardians of the hell gate. Apostles are the rulers of the hell of each world. Hades the god of the underworld is the ruler of every hell and the only person who has sub-administrative authorities over the divine system and a descendant of world god. The source of energy that supports this realm is called miasma which is the living concentration of malice leaked from the mortal realm. Black miasma or dark matter is the purest form of miasma and the ultimate and densest form of malice. Relation between divinity and black miasma. Divinity and black miasma are powers of equal strength but are made of different frequencies and wavelengths. Whenever these two powers will collide or come in contact it will result in destruction. No denizen of hell can set foot in divine realm and no god of divine realm can set foot in hell. Only world god and Hades are the only beings to whom these laws do not extend and they have full access to both heaven and hell. However the divinity of the world god and his descendants is far more superior and powerful than the black miasma. 110. Tree of Life. The tree of life is a colossal tree which supports the heavens, thereby connecting the heavens, the mortal realm, and, through its roots the underworld. One may even consider it a world tree. The purpose of its existence is to collect all the excessive energy from heaven, hell and mortal realm. While it directly collects divinity from heavens, for the mortal realm it collects the energy that is scattered from various planets and collected together as mist in outer space which itself gets purified by revolving at very high speed in circular paths forming a special kind of energy called halo Ixl which is at the same wavelength at divine energy. The tree of life absorbs this special energy purifies it from unnecessary waves of energy and add the pure energy to its reserves. As for the underworld. While the black miasma has totally different wavelength and frequency, the roots of the tree of life surrounds the gate of hell at its hinges and absorb all the dark matter. The roots then transfer all the negative emotions and malice to the bark and stems of the tree, which are broken down into simpler emotions and desires, which are then consumed as nourishments for the survival of tree. The leaves then convert this raw energy from underworld to pure divinity by purifying with the light which is omnipotent in the divine realm. Finally after every 10,000 years all this surplus high density pure divinity is then collected at a single place and is stored in the form of a fruit that is a red apple. The consumption of this apple with its chaotic pure divine energy since its early stage of formation and its instability in its fruit form, can even kill the gods of the upper echelons as their bodies won't be able to handle the backlash. So after extracting the fruit from the tree of life it is kept in the chambers of the divine realm below the pantheon till the chaotic energy subsides and the fruit is fit for consumption. Selection of the consumer. The apple is said to fall from the tree in the presence of the being it sees is fit for the consumption of its divine fruit. As per record no god has survived or escaped unscathed when the fruit is directly consumed just after the god's selection. As per observation, the reason for this hazard is not because the body can't handle the divinity since by various means with the help of other gods this excessive divinity from his body can be extracted by and distributed among other gods. The real reason of this constitutional body failure is because of the fact that the assimilation of this apple causes a sudden high rise in the soul power of the individual, and if the body cannot contain this vast amount of soul power collected over a span of 10,000 years the vessel ruptures, leading to the outburst of the spiritual veins which siphons soul power and is rooted deep inside bodies of everybody including gods. 
mortals and denizens of hell. 111, Chapter, For the Tree of Life and the Case of the Missing Apple. I came across a meadow once that looked as if I had stepped into the pages of a storybook. I was standing at the same levitated high ground where I and Lady Athena were able to see the stars together. The malachite green field seemed to be covered in a bright sheet under the clear azure blue sky. I could hear the serenading minstrel of the heavenly birds breaking the quiet of this far-fetched world. The whalebone white clouds shaped like tufts of marshmallows, glided slowly across the sky. They carried an airy, warm, drizzling rain with them. It cleansed the land and banished the strangling coldness and stunned silence of the lake's surface. The pattering of the leaves, ultra-symmetric ripples on surface of the lake. The rain energized the full ecosystem of this holy land. A neon blue ribbon of river ran through the center of the meadow. The song of the river was very gentle as it went plinking and tinkling over the gray gravel bed. The molten golden crown on top of mountain's head and the bleached snow was forged by the gods of Olympus themselves. I could see the reflection varnished onto the lake's glassy surface. 112. Even in this spirit-renewing rustic scene I could not hold my breath but be baffled at the sight of the gigantic and noble tree which stood in front of me all high and mighty, with a stock straight and a proud grey obelisk and branches sticking out emphatically and shaped like a Neptune's fork, thick and defiant at the bottom, frail toward the top. The exceedingly beautiful tree was yet extraordinary that I could not describe it in mere words of my limited vocabulary. The soothing and warm feeling of the light which passed through its canopies, and the cool of its shadow was just so tempting to lie under its divine protection. It all feels so connected and familiar. I looked around but unable to find Lady Athena I decided to wait and lay under the tree reading the book on magic which I had brought with me. It had been more than an hour and I started feeling hungry again for some reason I wondered what fruit this tree bore during its ripening season. I removed my thoughts of eating and started focusing on reading again. For some time, I wanted to try teleportation magic because it is just so cool to vanish from one place and appear at another and take others by surprise. Maybe then I could wipe the floor with that haughty angel and his obsolete thoughts about being lowly humans. It had been quite a while and Lady Athena had still not shown up yet. Maybe she is busy in her duties as a god such as looking after her subjects, blessing others who follow her and maybe praying. Wait, whom she would even pray? Does gods also pray someone? Maybe they pray to world god for his blessings. Well I am sure I would not want to disturb Lady Athena during her duties or 113 unexpected chores which suddenly might have popped up. I am sure she would show up soon because we are good friends, aren't we? Just then a huge, almost circular shaped red object fell on the cover of my book while the momentum made the other end of the cover hit my nose. I was quick in my response and had already made distance with the book so the impact of the hit was less and there was probably no nosebleed or other minor injuries. But for some reason I wanted to get hurt and use the healing magic. I have been still wondering about the after effects of the healing magic which I previously used, because it felt like it almost rebuilt my whole body and let me gain more strength than my usual self. For some reason I also felt more confident than ever. Learning magic is obviously fun for anyone. Probably all my classmates by now would also have learned magic and may be able to even burn down buildings or break huge boulders as they are always stronger than me and maybe always will be. But this time I am sure I will not lack behind because I have my goddess by my side. Now to return to the current scenario. I had to probe and investigate this unidentified falling object. Well duh. It's probably an apple. Why would a UFO fall from the sky considering it's the divine realm we are talking about, and it seems that nothing can surprise me anymore. A large sized apple with bright red color on a green base lay on the ground on my right side. It was probably a bit larger than the normal sized Kashmiri apples and for the other part the tutti, fruity smell of this ripened fruit in the air had already caught my noses. 114. Attention. I just couldn't wait to know the taste of the spilled apple which dared to fall and disturb me during my reading time. Seeing that I was all alone and there was no caretakers for the tree nearby that means I can probably eat this apple. Surely I can. Chomp. Chomp. Crunch. Chomp. The skin of this fruit is crisp, juicy, 
and aromatic yet tasted a bit acidic, as for the fleshy part it had a sweet syrup taste and an earthly touch in it which made it even a more enjoyable delicacy. I am sure it will serve as a good ingredient in deserts. I would love to make an apple pie for it and enjoy it together with Lady Athena. I just can't stop thinking about her and how she saved me yesterday and stepped forward in order to protect me. I finished the whole damn thing which caused this fiasco and said to myself serves it right. But later when I realized that there were no seeds, I started wondering how the species of this tree survives then if they do not propagate. Maybe the trees are immortal but even so, why the hell am I even thinking? A fruit without seeds may be a common thing in heaven. But something still bugged me because the fruits I ate in my room probably had seeds in them. But I said to myself later and then continued to divulge in my reading. 115. 116. Almighty World God. Finally after a wait of 10,000 years we will be again able to harvest the fruit of tree of life. Lady Gaia brought her two fingers near her lips thinking in awe about the heavenly apple. Besides her there was the almighty world god, god of creation Brahma and goddess of agriculture Demeter. All of them had one question bugging them about, who will be chosen by the tree of life for the consumption of its fruit. We will soon see to that. I said and walked along the river till we all reached the bridge that connected us to the tree of life. What's the matter Demeter? Is something bothering you? Lord Brahma on seeing the confused expression of Lady Demeter at such an auspicious occasion could not help but inquire himself. For some reason I cannot sense the presence of the fruit of the tree of life. It's not on the tree. Lady Demeter quietly spoke and waited for the response for her irrational statement. What? This couldn't be. Maybe it fell from the tree in presence of some other god who came here before us. Please check again just to be sure. Lady Gaia started making certain assumptions in order to sort out the problem, but we all have stopped any god from coming near the tree of life for an entire week during the harvest. It's impossible for any god to come here today because of the barrier put by the world god himself. Lord Brahma raised H his hand like a lawyer and looked at the almighty world god who was soon going to make a decision like a judge. 117. Unless it's a human. Gaia may I ask who is that girl lying under the tree of life? At this point of time, all the four gods were midway on the bridge and they could see the whole landscape from there. Lady Gaia gaze fell upon a frail looking beautiful girl reading a book under the shadow of the tree of life. Isn't she the beneficiary of Athena? Why is she here? Do you think she might know something about the fruit or who may have took it? Lady Gaia had already recognized the identity of the human and started walking in the direction where the girl was resting. The other gods started following in her footsteps in order to get some answers. The girl had already noticed us approaching her. She stood at her position and started walking towards us with a smile but for some reason she stopped and started to look here and there with a confused and sad expression on her face. Did she confuse us with someone? Could it be that she was waiting for someone? What is your name human? Please explain in the purpose of your visit. A Lord Brahma directly started interrogating the young, innocent girl with charming looks in his guttural high-pitched tone. From the expression of the girl it looks like she was afraid of us and uncomfortable around strangers. She kept looking down at the green grass, sliding her leg in order to not crush any flower under her feet and then looked back at us again. In her brittle yet sweet and lovely speech she finally made up her mind to speak. I am Saki Kondo. Um, so, I was actually waiting for Goddess Athena here since we planned yesterday to meet under 118. This tree. She again started looking at her feet and the ground in between raising her eyebrows and straining her eyes to see our face and what we were doing. How long have you been here? Did you see any else besides us? This time it was Lady Gaia. Um, no, I don't think I saw anyone else around here and it has almost been an hour I have come here. All the other gods were too confused to ask at the pace at which our conversation was going. The fruit of the tree of life was missing and a human trespassing on its ground during its ripening time. So without wasting time I directly asked. Did you see an apple around this part? The girl got a little worried and horrified at this question. Did she know something about the apple? If yes then what? An apple fell from above over me, and since I was hungry I ate it. 
I thought no one would mean it since there was no caretaker around here. All the other three gods gasped at this statement and started pulling their hairs or come up with more questions. I needed to act quickly to calm thing down, so I used my divine powers to see the soul core of this girl but it was just a small flicker of light in a large dark place. I felt something wrong, like an interference. I concentrated all my divine powers in my eyes and used them to further analyze her soul realm. It was a huge dark pitch black pit, a chasm for which even darkness was no match. It seemed I was falling into the abyss itself. For there, 119, first time something had caught me by surprise. I use the divine system and break free from this unexpectedly strong barrier protection and used my all-seeing eyes to probe further into her soul realm. This time I had broke the barrier which appears to be have been put up by some skilled god themselves. Crack, crack. Golden yellow light filled the entire soul realm and my eyes were dazzled and robbed of its sight. The intensity of this light was so bright that even after using all of my powers I had to strain and focus my eyes to look for the soul core. I felt a familiar sensation and belonging of this high-end energy. It was similar to my own divinity. This strong feeling. There is no doubt about it her soul power shares the same origin as mine that is with the divine system itself. Could she be? I finally found it, high above the position where I was floating. To my horror, the unexpected had come true. The apple of the tree of life was fusing with this girl's soul core. How is this even possible? How could a mortal attain such a feat which is even impossible for gods? I had to calm myself and take care of other gods. I don't know whether to call this accident unfortunate or fortunate or it was just fated. I see. You don't need to worry yourself anymore. We will be taking our leave. Before any other gods could raise further questions, I raised my staff and teleported ourselves to my office. What a pain. Now I have to work on explaining the situation to these gods. Life sure is tough for me. 120. Could she be lying to us? Demeter made a quick judgment. Of course not. She was saying the truth. We gods can sense when a mortal is lying or not. Lord Brahma quickly disregarded her conclusion. Maybe she mistook it for some other fruit and ate something else instead. This time it was Lady Gaia. All the three gods then looked at the person who had out of the blue transported them from the crime scene. Sometimes getting so much attention in old age is not good for health. It seems that this time the tree of life has shockingly chosen a mortal as the consumer of its fruit. I confirmed it with my own eyes, but how can a mortal even survive after eating the fruit? Also she had almost negligible soul power. Why the tree of life would chose a weak human like her in the first place? Lord Brahma raised a question which I was going to answer anyway. That flicker of soul power is but a veil on the top. In actual, she possesses more soul power than a new evolved god of upper echelon. At present, the apple of tree of life is fusing with her soul core on its OWN. Even if she ate the apple, the higher gods cannot survive the backlash and strain of the chaotic energy that the fruit puts on the body, but she appears to be totally fine. What do you mean by the barrier you mentioned? 121. It seems that there is no running away. I need to give a complete explanation. This barrier which I am talking about appears to be put on her by a god with sub-administrative rights. That is why no other gods were able to pinpoint her high affinity for divinity and life energy. For the first time it seems that the tree of life has chosen a human as a bearer of its fruit, but your liege, why the girl is in good health, wouldn't the sea hotic energy of the fruit would have killed her since she consumed it just after its ripening. It seems that the girl is actually a descendant of the god in question who has put the barrier in the first place. Even though the girl has no it caused blood, but her soul power has the same origin as mine and it will keep on growing. But how can someone's soul power still grow and that also speaking of a human? You just said that even being a descendant of a god she does not possess your blood and she is still an immortal. There have been several cases where a descendant of a god in mortal realm was born with exceptional capabilities and sometimes even with god's blood. But in her case, she has none. Even at present her tremendous soul power is sealed and even I would need to take action through the divine system to break such a powerful seal. I wonder whose daughter could she really be? 
At this point I stopped and thought of the abyss I saw in her soul realm and couldn't help but wonder what the future holds air for her. After seeing her soul realm with my own eyes, I think, no I am sure that is the very reason the tree of life choose her. Her soul state, 122, is a deep dark abyss. One could describe it as the nothingness, the source of all creation and the sink of destruction. Poor girl, I don't know what hardships she had suffered in her previous life and yet she looked so cheerful reading that book. I have never heard of such a thing. Listen Gar ear. Our soul state is the direct resemblance to the life we have lived to this day. Happiness, anger, hate, jealousy, confusion, sadness and especially fear. All of these emotions together construct the soul state. Her soul state is the abyss itself where even light may lose its way, which gives her the attribute of absorbing high amount of this chaotic life energy and that is the reason she was able to consume the apple without any problem. Well God, I don't understand. You just called her a descendant of a sub-administrative God and also possessing soul power of your origin. So if she consumes the apple she is absorbing the divinity and black miasma at the same time. We all know that these two forces contradict each other and if merged together can only cause destruction. Her very being of existence is questionable at this point. I took a long deep breath. Ah, the question I was waiting to answer. Good job Brahma. The origin of this world and the divine system was the desire and my will in the huge expanse of the nothingness. Nothingness itself accepts all and provides all. At present the girl is young and the hardships she had suffered in mortal realm had taken the shape of nothingness a unique attribute a totally new essence of being in itself. For now it doesn't matter whether she absorbed divine light or black miasma, they won't interact unless until she forces it to do all. 123. Absorb each of them in massive quantities. I would have never thought that such a special being could exist, but even this unique ability is a curse and blessing at the same time. Whether she will let herself be consumed by her own netherworld or will her fate be determined by her resolve and the choices she make in the future, only she can decide it for herself whether it is life or death that waits at the end of her journey. We understand your liege, but we are confused by the present circumstances and do not know how to respond. Lord Brahma, Lady Gaia and Demeter had the same thoughts now after listening to my explanation. I sure am good at knowing everything. I am the world god after all. Ahem. At this very moment we have to wait and observe that girl since she is innocent and does not know the current unfortunate scenario she has put herself in. You are not to share any information with anyone and not even Athena who is the partner of that girl. I will later try to explain her myself. As for the public information spread the news that I will be taking care of the fruit of the tree of life. You may leave now. As you say you're almighty. The three said in unison and then vanished into thin air. I sat on my golden four, laid chair and looked up at the ceiling of my office and wondered what the future holds for the mortal, divine and hell and whether reincarnates are going to fit among them. After some time I clapped twice and an angel appeared from the front door. 124. He bowed before me and then silently raised his head waiting for further instructions. You have been put in charge of the children from mortal realm. What is the name of the girl who is under Athena's contract? Suki Kondo is the name of the girl, my lord. I see. I want all the information regarding her life and her family lineage from the mortal realm. As you command. The angel had already left the room while I still thought about the tremendous amount of soul power that could overwhelm even my own eyesight. I sure am getting old. 125. Suki Kondo. It's already noon and Lady Athena had not shown up yet. I felt a little sad. Not because Lady Athena did not keep her promise. She must have got held up in some serious task that she cannot leave or the other gods were giving her a hard time. I was sad because I could not show her the magic I learned from the book that she recommended me. I decided to pack my stuff which included a book some hair clips and a long white handkerchief and headed back to my room. Teleport. Yes, you heard me right. I had been just now reading about teleportation magic, though a proper explanation was missing and most parts I could not understand related to Jiad's specialty and their legend stuff and all. So I came up with my own explanation. From by far what I have seen till the moment I can concentrate, visualize and understand the very mechanism and its working in the world. 
The spell will work perfectly fine for teleportation if I have the specific coordinates or image of the target destination and present location in my mind. Then I just have to imagine a bending of space and connecting it through a tunnel in another dimension to keep all my body parts at one place otherwise it may get scattered in the process. Scary stuff. But yeah, I finally did it. It worked I did not die in my first two attempt. But what the hell, for some reason I was standing in my bathtub and not the bedroom. If I did this blunder on earth then instead of 126 landing on the road I might fall in an open ditch. That would be much scarier than getting only half of your body parts transported. I wonder how many of you would agree with me. Since I was standing in the bathtub I thought to take a bath after lying on the grass and reading book for more than 4 hours. I always had loved reading books and magic makes it even more interesting. I took off my clothes and saw my revitalized much younger and fresh body due to the divine healing spell I used this morning. I created cool water from magic again and took a deep dive. After coming out of the bathtub I dried myself by controlling the wind in a swirling fashionable way. Just by coming in contact with it tickles my skin. I was enjoying whatever I did, but still it felt empty without Lady Athena. I just wanted to share my every happiness with her and also be a part in her own. I changed into light clothes because it was now magic practice time. I took a comfortable spot in the center of the bed and opened the magic book in front of me. Theory and practice goes hand in hand. Magic is just like phenomenal changing science by introducing a new source of energy called magic points, which determined the capacity of a person to use magic. At present I cannot measure my magic points, it's simple because I don't know how it's done. Maybe I have to ask Lady Athena. At present I can conjure water, control temperature, something which I took up naturally by preparing bath water at different temperature, separate gases in air at elemental level and collect them, conjure fire, use divine healing magic and finally I had learned teleportation magic which is a part of space attribute. 127. I wonder what I should try to learn now. The next chapter talks about solid construction in space. Forging is not my thing since beating iron hammer to make iron near a hot kiln is something which every woman should avoid. But if I can make metals and reconstruct shape of the conjured metal or the existing matter nearby, it sounds as a handy thing to do especially in field of craft making. So I decide to move at the pace of book and immerse myself into this new field of magic. Solids can be represented by compact and symmetrical arrangement of atoms and molecules in crystal shape or rather a lattice construct. A specific amount of energy is needed to maintain this lattice arrangement which can be supplied by our own magic. By analyzing the previous arrangement and modifying it by our own needs is done simply by keeping the image of final configuration in mind and reconfigure the spatial arrangement of atoms. So I first took a metal plate from the kitchen. I hope no one scolds me like in the morning for the apple if I end up destroying this plate. It is clearly for experimental and self-growth purposes only. First I levitated the plate using wind magic and keep its position steady for precise reading. Even though the plate is circular, I thought of rolling it into a cylinder. If someone tried it by doing it by applying pure strength then the plate will obviously break and the experiment will fail. But by using magic I just needed to change the position of molecule and form a new lattice crystal with new stabilized energy parameters. It was tough, because just by changing position of one molecule or a part of lattice brings a huge change in the overall structure, but with time I was able to form a cylinder to make the process faster and remember the details I 128 tried forming several shapes like square, cone, cube and most difficult of all a sphere. When I made a 3D object cube an idea flashed in my mind of making bombs. Ha 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 ha. Finally something I can use in combat. Do I sound like an evil scientist now? It was simple I can just separate hydrogen and oxygen from air and then store them in cubes. Just by raising the temperature of cubes I can create blasts of flame. Explosion. Just the thought of it makes me crazy. Depending on the density of the gas, the greater the concentration of gas the bigger and impactful will be the blast. So I brought six each white and red plates from the kitchen because they were the only available colors. Then I separated huge volumes of oxygen and hydrogen in different spheres of nitrogen envelope. 
I started forming dice out of plates and before closing one of the sides I transferred the gas in the cube with full precaution and then sealed it making sure there is no leakage, wouldn't want the bomb blast happen in the user's hand. Now do I. While the white color is for hydrogen the red color is for oxygen gas. I decide to make cubes with different densities and see which one was more powerful. For marking system I decided upon the dots on the cubes. The greater the number of dots the more the density of 129 gas and more the punch it packs. The measuring system varied from one black dot to six dots which I made with the help of a marker kept on my shelf. I wonder if they did not give us any paper material. Then what the use of the marker was to begin with. Finally my mini bombs are ready and I have named my creation as cubicles. But then the biggest problem was testing. I needed an open area, because I did not want my room to be destroyed. Even though it is small but it is much better than the one I used to live in. Maybe I should just drop it from the window and pretend I didn't do it. But someone might get hurt so I dropped the idea itself. I said to myself later and then moved to the next magic spell. I needed to try teleportation for not only myself but on target objects. I needed this type of spell in order to implant my cubicles at right place in enemy's territory without going there myself. So I took a glass for this training exercise and placed it in front of me. My goal was to transport it from bed to 10 meter away on the table. For the first instance I had to bend and connect the present location and final destination via interdimensional tunneling and provide it with momentum using my magical energy. At first instant nothing happened, but I am sure I was not doing anything wrong. I tried to concentrate more and channel more of my magical energy or rather say perceived the phenomena that was going to take place and it worked. It was a total success the glass was teleported to the table. Then I practiced it with the cubicles several times. For places that were in my area of sight were easy to teleport while I have to focus more while teleporting them to blind spots like under the bed or behind the drawer. What if I am able to teleport them inside some Yoni's body and then blast them? A wave of chill passed. 130. Through my body making it numb and I shivered at the very thought because this was possible to do now since I had magic. But to do this I needed thorough knowledge of human's anatomy or the monster's anatomy so it was still lacking at some prospects. The last and final magic which I was going to train myself was storage magic. I have already read the theory part of this magic when I was lying under the tree. Storage magic is the handiest magic in my viewpoint but the toughest to perform. Storage magic depends on what kind of environment one perceives while transferring an object to your storage space. Also I have read that storage magic vastly depends on your soul power and is also connected to your soul realm. There are three types of storage magic and it is decided by birth which one you will be able to use. The most basic type is the one which can store only in organic inanimate objects with limited numbers. In the second intermediate type you can store both organic, fruits, vegetables, corpses etc, an inorganic substance with still limited numbers of objects. But the time inside such a space is still in motion and so the organic stuff may rot after some time. The third and the most advanced type storage magic is in which you can store both organic except living, and inorganic inanimate objects with infinite numbers and no restriction. Also the time is at standby inside such a storage dimension and so the organic matter will not decay by time. One more impressive feature is that you can connect it to other places like your room and even extract item from there. 131. I wanted the third advanced type storage magic the most because this way I can store food and later eat it while it is still hot. Also there is no restriction to its uses. To summon this kind of spatial magic one has to first channel the magic power into one's body and while maintaining a constant flow then try to find the soul core and then connect the soul state to a different dimension I created by magic. This will complete the formation of the storage magic. The type of storage magic we obtain depends upon the soul power I possess. The more I possess the better. I just couldn't wait to do it. 
Even though I had no idea what a soul core is exactly I will figure something out during the process after all I have been able to perform all the magic all on my own and so I was much more confident in my skills now. Maybe I have still have got a shot in helping Lady Athena to save the world if I work diligently and give my best. So I took all of my cubes and decided to put them in my storage. Whichever I get, since I do not want to walk around with grenades in my hand. I tried to channel magic energy throughout my body with ease since trying out different kinds of magic had made me very sensitive to its control and sense. I circulated the magic energy around my body first and then brought it to the center of core, that is when I felt a warm feeling of a bright reddish yellow flame. A very small flame was burning in a very large, boundless dark space. Is this my soul core? What a disappointment maybe I was hoping too much from myself. It is the ultimate truth that I am weak after all. For some reason this dark dimension felt both ominous and peaceful at the same time. Like it harbored malice and goodwill at 132. The same time, the coldness of the dark and the warmth of the light coexisted at the same place. Maybe I am thinking too much so later I guess. I opened my eyes and I could see a dark black hole in front of me. Was the storage magic implantation procedure successful? But I was just too surprised because the nature and the magic circle that surrounded this black hole storage space didn't match any of the three described in the book. So for trial, I threw all my cubicles in the black hole and waited. After that I cancelled my spell. I walked away from my bed and went to the basin to wash my face. Then I teleported a glass in my hand and conjured water in it and drank. I needed to keep practicing magic even in real time during day-to-day -day activities to make a solid mental image of each and every process. Then I went back to the room and used the storage spell again. Storage. The dark black hole appeared and I was able to pull out all the cubicles back intact. There was not a single scratch or damage to the items. I was glad but at the same time worried because I couldn't identify the type of storage spell I was using. I couldn't recognize the magic circle which surrounded the black hole in the first place. It was not even available in the magic book. So I threw back the cubicles in the storage area and then tried to take a peek inside the storage dimension myself. Before I could move my eyes around to get a full view, a wave of black fluid darker than the black hole itself and a stream of light brighter than the sun merged together and hit me directly. I was thrown a meter back and landed on the rear of my bed. All my 133 magic energy was gone as if it was absorbed by the black hole in an instant. Slowly everything blackened before my eyes and my eyelids shut down. I fell unconscious. 134. The World God's Office. I can't believe this. She is actually your descendant, Urza. I slowly kept the papers on the table and with excitement banged on the desk and started laughing. Urza one of the most powerful sub-administrative god and the goddess of thunder and sword. Her magic, her soul power, strength and sword skills both were unrivaled in all the three realms. She even participated in the holy crusade on Isleguard and after winning each battle with overwhelming strength, she resigned from her duties and went in search for a peaceful life. After the massacre she caused in the war she was upset to see only the losses of lives on both the sides. The future for which she fought never dawned on the land after the war. The humans were greedy after all and plundered the lands to amass their wealth and resources and twisted the facts for the benefits of a few and ignored the masses. Now a clear picture is available to me about her origins and the seal on her soul core. So Urza must have went on earth and fell in love with a human. Since her next generation did not have God's blood neither high soul power, she was glad because her children could live a normal life. She then left the planet after her husband's death. But after the next to next generation when Saki was born she must have experienced a sudden surge in her soul power responding to her own blood. She must have come back to earth to search for her kin. After finding out she possessed such tremendous amount of soul power and very high affinity to life energy at the same time, she made a tough decision in order to keep her safe from the curious. 135 Eyes of the gods and the denizen of hell who are attracted to high soul power signatures she placed a two-layered seal on her soul realm. This seal could be temporarily broken in case of emergencies as a safety measurement or either permanently removed by two keys. 
I wonder what they are. Even after all her meticulous planning her daughter is now in heaven, consumed the apple of tree of life and will now reincarnate into the same world and may be a part of a new bloodshed. Sacrifices are necessary when you want to establish peace. To create something new you must destroy the previous completely, or otherwise things will revert back to its previous worst self. World God looked back at the pages which depicted a beautiful yet sad face of a girl's photo and a titled report on Saki Kondo. What a poor girl, in all her life she was alone, lost her parents at a very young age, guardians who just wanted to leech off her property and assets and surrounded by others who have been so cold and cruel to her. Even in her last moments she was being bullied by her own classmates. Both life and fate have been not kind to her and even now the case remains the same. It must have been really hard for her to even stay strong in that type of ignorant environment and still grow as a kind and gentle young lady. Maybe I should try talking to her because after learning that she is my granddaughter I can't help it but worry. I at least need to look into the matter and maybe help a bit in her growth. It doesn't matter whether she is my blood or not but she is Urza's child so she too. 136 must be worried. After all the most fearsome warriors are the best warriors of their families. But I couldn't help but wonder that the girl looked much happier today than she was on earth or in the general assembly. Is it because of Athena's influence? Maybe I don't need to worry much after all. They are totally compatible with each other. Sharing similar backgrounds they surely understand the pain of each other and suffering of not being loved or not needed in this cruel hierarchical ambiguous society where pure strength is considered everything, while the weaker are always looked down upon and used for their own gains. 137. Goddess Freya's Room. A round table was surrounded by ten chairs and a map of the Barbara Forest of Mount Olympus was spread on the table. Starting from left there was Goddess Freya, Homora Kenta, Haridakatri, Goddess Artemis, Eumica Furata, Goddess Aphrodite, Sura Kendo, Goddess Astera, Tama Donjo and Goddess Ova surrounded the table and are discussing about the location of the ambush. It surely was a round table conference. The only difference was instead of having peace talks these individuals were planning to hurt someone. Is the beast prepared Artemis? Lady Freya held a cup of tea in her hand and looked at Artemis, who was smiling. Don't worry, today at night I will feed it the pills which will make it go berserk and make it crave for blood. I will cut down the chains and send it towards the Barbara forest. Artemis was now holding a bottle filled with red cylindrical pills cap shaped at its ends. Tama you will send that girl to the chosen location. She will work as bait to lure Athena at who has closed herself in her room. After behaving all high and mighty and showing such rude behavior to us, we cannot leave her in peace. I will draw some magic circle to put up a barrier which will stop them from teleporting from the forest. Lady Astera was now using a small knife and trying to chisel something on pink crystal stones. Are these the so-called magic stones? I will use my birds to implant these magic stones all around the forest. They will be trapped like insects. Ha ha ha. Goddess Ova just couldn't stop laughing to think of the fates of those insects being trapped and then ultimately crushed. 138. But isn't this going too far? They might get badly injured and not able to participate in the reincarnation ceremony. This can jeopardize or delay the ceremony. If we got caught, then maybe we can even lose our chance. Homura Kenta put forward his concerns. He was not worried about the two going to be victims but about his own safety. A pip squeak who can only think about himself. Kenta don't worry, they won't delay such an important ceremony for a weakling and a non-combat goddess. They don't have what it takes to survive in the world even by a long shot. As for the injury the more the better. It's better that both end up getting killed. The poor girl won't minutes since she has already died once and we already know that dead people don't speak. So we will be fine. Freya once again went through the whole plan and sealed the fate of Saki Kondo and Goddess Athena. What are the chances of their survival in front of a fierce bloodthirsty adversary? 139. Chapter. 5 I am sorry. I could barely open my eyes in the bright light which was directly reflected on my cornea by the window panes of my room. I rubbed my eyes and my body still felt a little heavy as I lifted the upper part of my body to look around the room. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. 
W hat did actually hit me. All I can remember was it was a like a mix of black stream and white stream. Was the storage spell construction really successful? I went straight to the bathroom to freshen up and as usual for practice created cold water. Took a quick bath and then used swift wind to dry myself. I then used teleport to get my dress from the drawer and it directly appeared in my hand. Today I am sure Lady Athena will come to see me near the tree. So I should go there again to the decided location. This time I will pack some food and eat with her, and show off my cooking skills. I went to the kitchen and prepared some veg sandwich, rolled omelettes, korok, potato croquettes, and salad. 140. Then I thought to make something to drink and cool off in this summer type setting weather. Since there was no sun to exactly determine the weather, I took some sweet oranges from the pantry and then used magic to peel it off. Remove the seeds and then crush the fleshy part to get maximum juice out of it. But it was much more difficult to use magic for this task than to do it manually. But if I had to improve then I need to increase my control over the flow of magic energy and make it more efficient and less time consuming. I poured the juice inside a steel thermos flask while I packed everything in a hand woven golden basket made of wicker, dried willow strands, which I found lying in the right lower corner cupboard of the pantry. Then I tried to summon my storage space. For some reason I was hesitating because of the accident and the fear that it may happen again. But I still used it and it worked. I took a sigh of relief. Just to check everything was alright I took out the 12 cubicles and they were fine. Since I wanted to test them so I took 2 cubicles each of, 1 and 3 dots, while the rest I tossed back into the storage. Then I put the basket the thermos flask and my magic book into the storage space too. Previously I had to walk all the way to the tree but this time it was different. I am the crimson mage now as I tried to pose as if wearing my witch hat and holding the magic staff. For some reason it felt cool and embarrassing at the same time. Glad no one saw it. Teleport. The spell worked perfectly and I was standing under the shade of the gigantic tree. Every time I saw it I felt something unique about it. 141. But this time I felt like I belonged here. For some reason I could sense my magical power increasing under the tree as if it was connected to it like a thread. I took a deep breath and felt the freshness of the surrounding morning air. A pageant of smells floated in the spring air and a horde of dandelions littered the grass field. The scene was spirit refreshing and pastoral while it smelled pear fresh. I sat under the tree and gazed up at the lace of leaves and the feathery combs of moss hung from the jutting branches. I took out the magic book and the food basket placing it on my left side and started reading about different ways to control magic flow and about different types of magic circles and arrays. After reading for a while my thoughts ran a recheck on yesterday events where an apple dropped out of nowhere while the tree doesn't even has any fruit on its branches. As I was wondering about the questionable nature and origin of the apple I ate yesterday I heard some creaking sounds coming from the bridge which connected the lower and higher land mass. It was an old man in long red robe and had curly silver hairs and silver beard. He had a long scepter in his hand and somewhat was using it as a walking stick and was probably heading in the direction where I was sitting. He was the almighty world god. 142. World God. I knew I would find her here after all this is the most peaceful place even in the divine realm, which even I like to visit during my breaks. I wonder what book she is reading, after all I came here looking for a chat and maybe I was also bored with the daily routine work. As I stood in front of the girl she hurriedly stood up and bowed in front of me. She must be too surprised to see me here again. Good morning, Wah. Almighty World God. Good morning to you too. Can I sit here too? Um, why not? Of course. She then shifted to her left side as if making a spot for me. She must be feeling too uncomfortable because of my stature and position. After all we had never talked before. So what are you reading? She looked to her right as if she thought I was asking this question to another person. It's just that. I was reading a book about how to use magic which I borrowed from Lady Athena. For some reason my curiosity peaked up because humans cannot use magic in the divine realm. Also this book is based on spells and magic circles which consume divine power and not the magical energy of the mortal realm. 
Can she use divinity even though she doesn't have my blood? Could it be an after effect of eating the apple of tree of life? Maybe I should try to dig more. 143. So why do you visit this place? For some time she did not spoke anything. She is really very timid in nature. Do I look like a stranger who tries to harass other people? Do I? Or an old man who indulges in giving worldly advice to youngsters passing by? Almighty world God, after the banquet ceremony, Lady Athena brought me here to see the stars. She said that this is the only place from where we can see the stars and asked me to meet her here from next day. But for some reason she is not appearing and I am unable to contact her. I don't know whether she is trying to avoid me but I still want to meet her and spend time with her like the first day. Stargazing from this point is really a sight to behold. I too visit this place often to forget my worries. As for Athena, maybe she is trying to keep a distance from you so that other gods don't bully you. I too heard about what happened in the banquet hall. It was unfortunate, but usually strong gods try to harass the weak gods especially someone non-combat oriented like Athena who specializes in intellectual field and not in fighting skills. I ask for your forgiveness if you are hurt and my inability to stop that from happening. At this Siki rose up from her seat and started waving her hands here and there in confusion. No almighty world god, you don't need to ask for forgiveness. It wasn't your fault to begin with. She still feels too uncomfortable around me. I know I should try doing this. 144. Why don't you try calling me grandfather or grandpa? I have heard that's what they call old people in your world. The way in which you address me is too boring and way too long. A sudden silence shrouded us. Did I make things awkward for her? She is my granddaughter after all, so there shouldn't be any problem. Also it's not the right time to tell her about this. Are you sure? You really want me to call you that? No one has told me to do this before nor anyone tried to talk to me or apologized to me. So, what are these dice are they for playing a game? Suki stared at the small white and red boxes lying on the ground and tried to fidget her hand into her pockets. They must have fallen from my pocket when I stood up. Suki thought to herself. No they are not for a game just a piece of craft work. Ha ha ha. Saki couldn't help but wonder what an embarrassing and awkward laugh that was. After all I can't tell world god that I made these mini grenades and brought them here to test their explosive power. I must try to change the topic somehow. What do old people like to do in such places like a picnic spot? Yes. I think I got it. Suki then picked up her basket and then, in a very heartbreaking manner glanced at it. I made breakfast for Lady Athena, but she hasn't come yet. I am afraid the food will get stale and cold. I cannot finish it alone, maybe. Just take the hint Grandpa. 145. Oh, why not I would like to enjoy the food made by the hands of a sweet young lady like you. We do not get the chance to eat food made by a mortal. I will give it to taste test in G. She tried to change the topic. She must have thought that she dodged the question. She is actually pretty smart even though she lacks communication skills. I wonder what those cubes are for, since flammable gases are filled inside them. Suki first smoothly caressed her face with both hands as if determining was she really that pretty. But then coming back to her present senses she took out a medium-sized red cloth and spread it across us diagonally and took out two large plates. She placed some sandwiches, omelette, croquettes and some finely chopped vegetables as salad, on each plate. But what surprised me most was when she conjured a small flame and used it to grill the sandwiches. So, she can really use magic, even though she didn't have a cause blood, she can still use divinity, even though she thinks she is using simple magic. What kind of magic can you use up till now? Would you like to share your experience with me? I then picked up one of the sandwiches and started eating. Well, I thought of learning magic after I saw Lady Athena using a healing spell on me. So I asked a beginner's book of magic from Lady Athena. First she was surprised then she took out a fat book from her shelf and gave it to me. Currently, I can conjure water, fire, manipulate temperature and object structure, teleportation and even healing spell. She stopped in between when God Almighty interrupted her. 146. The sandwich and the korok are really delicious. The omelettes are fluffy and soft too. The sandwich is perfectly grilled. Your control of magic is pretty good. 
I would surely take you as my personal chef. Thank you. Gr. Grandpa, since I had to cook food alone on earth and eat alone, so I worked hard to improve my cooking skills, so at least I can eat tasty food every time. But I think I have been complimented for the first time or should I say someone first time tasted my food, so I never knew that it is really that good. You don't need to worry, I am not flattering you. The food is really good. I am sure Athena would like it too. A bright smile appeared on Saki's face. My granddaughter is really cute and beautiful like Urza. If only she could be here too to see it. Then two glasses appeared in her hand out of nowhere, which she placed in front of me. Then a black distortion in space appeared out of nowhere and she took out a thermos flask and poured orange juice into it. She then collected water vapor from the surrounding atmosphere and then cooled it till it turned into ice and fell into our glasses and floated on it like small icebergs. This was too shocking for me. Not only she can use divinity at such a young age, her control over magic flow and senses are highly developed and flawless. She can even use an advanced spell like storage space and does not need to even chant to cast spells. People with exceptionally high mental capacity, strong visualization and advanced processing skills can only cast spell without chanting and just by thinking, which reduces time limit and is much more 147 powerful than normal spells as the visualization gets stronger with each casting unlike just normally chanting it out. She is a born prodigy, I hope she may be able to find a good teacher on Isleguard to teach her magic. Even among gods, such talent is rarely born. She is able to achieve it in a human body. Should I make her my apprentice or student? No, I can't. The chance is gone. She is already a beneficiary of Athena, and is about to reincarnate after five days. Maybe after she has completed her mission, then I can try. But something about that storage magic felt ominous. Maybe it was the black miasma which must have leaked out while invoking an advanced level spell which require a high amount of magical power. Performing it at such a young age is a miracle in itself, but since she ate the apple of tree of life, she almost has infinite divinity and black miasma at the same time. After all, it is a double-edged gee sword, how fire and water can't stay together, presence of divinity and dark matter in same entity is the ultimatum of eventual death. I have to keep an eye on her while she grows. So when did you realize that you can use magic? Suki put down her sandwich and started recalling the first day she came here. It was when I got into my stay room. There were no bulbs or switch to light the room, no faucets or taps to take a shower, so I thought we had to use something like magic. When I imagined that there is light in the room or darkness, it just happens. Same when I visualized water coming from the shower. It started pouring itself. 148. Out. I didn't need to use a tap. I need to learn more magic spells because I know all my other classmates are practicing with their gods and learning great destructive spells with much more advanced uses and at a much faster pace than me. No, what you are doing is a wonderful deed in itself so keep working hard. I think I will be taking my leave. Yes. See you soon G Ranba. She said that line in such a sweet tone that I wanted to stay a bit longer but I have certain important task to take care of. So I must go. Somehow it sounds too emotional, as if I leave now then something dangerous and bad will happen. I used teleportation spell as usual, and found myself in my office and sat on my seat. I clapped two times and an angel appeared. May I ask that why the light bulbs? faucets and taps were missing from the room of one of the humans named Saki Kondo. At first the angel brought his hand near his ear and contacted another angel using telepathy and then bowed in a very fashionable way. I ask for your forgiveness my lord. It seems that before the humans arrived, the rooms was being used as a hideout by god of mischief, Hermes and god of thief, Autolycus. So they must have taken those things away to create problems later. Within one hour the bulbs and taps will be fixed. Don't bother just to leave it like that. You may take your leave. The angel then disappeared in the same mysterious way in which he came. 149. It seems that my granddaughter is very unlucky. But maybe this has what made her stronger and can even smile when she is all alone and no one to support or defend her. 
I just can't tell her that she is the only mortal who can use magic here and that also without spells and just by thinking and performing magic is considered exceptional among gods. I can just hope that she keeps on getting stronger from here so that she can tackle all the problems and difficulties while enjoy the wonderful adventures that awaits her. 150. Outside Athena's room, just when Athena was about to leave her room, she saw a girl running towards her. She was not Siki but the girl who tried to hurt her in the banquet. Did something happen to Siki? I hope so not. Lady Athena, Siki has been searching for you in the Barbara Forest. You must go with haste. Also I must ask for your forgiveness for what happened on that day. Athena had a horrified expression on her face. She understood that something was wrong and Saki's life can be in danger. Do you really think you can lie to a god? Tell me is Saki alright? What are you talking dear goddess? I told you I am very sorry for what I did. Don't fool around. It is clearly visible that you have no shame and in no way your are apology is commit D. Tell me where is Saki? A terrific smile appeared on Sigura's face as her face lift up and her lips moved to the right side and formed a peak in a peculiar way. You catch on quick. If I were you I would be heading towards the forest and not wasting Timmy in questioning others or someone might get hurt. Lady Athena had no time to go and seek someone's help or send someone else she could trust. Even the angels might have pre-orders from other godies so she doesn't know what actions they will take. I must go on my own. I cannot let Saki get hurt again because of me. I cannot lose any more people whom I can trust. 151. Saki Kondo. It had been a long time since I had such a nice talk with someone. I am glad there are others who still care about me here. Maybe it is not a bad place after all and is better than Earth. Would anyone be missing me on Earth now? Probably not. My uncle and aunt must be happy that they got rid of me. It is probably in best of our interest that I died. I am glad that I met people like Lady Athena and Grandpa World God. I think I should leave now, it must be probably afternoon, though it still looks like morning or night only occurs here in heavens. I will try contacting Lady Athena this time. I might as well make something new for us to eat. So I packed the basket and then opened my dimensional storage area. I tossed back the book and basket into it teleport. This time I was at the right place in my room and not standing inside the bathtub like the last time. Maybe I am getting better at this. Knock knock. Someone is knocking at my door. Could it be a salesman agent? Wait at least not in heaven. Knock knock. 152. I opened the door and one of my classmates was standing in front of me with a pout on her face. Jeez. You are as slow as usual. I have been banging all day and now you are opening the door. Anyways, your goddess is searching for you in Barbara Forest. And also, wait, what? For the first time someone came from my class to talk to me and they tell me something suspicious like this. Why would my goddess search for me in the forest in the first place? She already knows that the decided spot was the tree or she could come to my room. Lady Athena already knows that my classmates either hate me or do not care about me at all. It only means one thing. It's a trap. What are they planning this time? Why a forest? What is the need to bring both of us in the forest? In the first place, it is just near the tree which I visit and also from the books. I've read no harmful carnivore animal resides there. Tell me, what are you planning Dharma? Please don't hurt Lady Athena. She has nothing to do with what happens between us. If you want to take revenge then do it to me alone. Who? What are you talking? You have no right to ask for forgiveness. Both you and your goddess have pissed us off. So it's time to pay. You must run there to save her or she may not be able to make back alive. I banged the door close on her face and slide down the door in a sitting position and covered my face with both of my hands. Tears came in my eyes and ran all over my face. 153. Why is this happening? I didn't do anything wrong to them. So why are they trying to hurt her? If anything happens to Lady Athena I will lose all hope of changing myself ever again. I will lose the only person who has cared about me up till now. Will she hate me if something happened to her because we were just friends? Bang, bang. What are you going to stay inside? Will you leave her to die? You are just a coward. A pathetic weakling who can't save anyone. How are you going to save the world? Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, she is right. 
It doesn't matter whether I am able to save the world or not, but I must fight to protect what is precious to me. Crack, crack. What is happening to me? Did something be reek? No, I have no time to waste. I must go to search for Lady Athena and warn her before something bad happens. I stood up and wiped my tears with my left arm and then I did what I have gotten best at, teleport. There I am back again near the tree. According to the map I saw in the book this is the nearest destination to the Barbara Forest where I have previously been. All I have to do now is walk to my right and I will reach the center. Thank goodness there are no turns otherwise I... 154. I'm sure I would have got lost. Thanks to my curse of poor navigation skills. I started running with all my strength. It was clearly obvious that I was not good at running. I soon started huffing and puffing and ran out of breath. I can't rest now. If I wait then, time is wasted and something might happen bad too. I kept on running for a more than five minutes and saw a bright opening. I was almost there in open space which was probably the center of the Barbara Forest. I stopped and took a deep breath and started shouting, Lady Athena, I am here. Lady Athena, I am here. If you can hear me please answer me. I then stopped to check my surroundings. There were all kind of wild vegetation, dark green curled up thick grass grew everywhere and thorny bushes surrounded the whole place. The whole area was a bit dark and the only thing that lit up the whole place was the canopies of the huge evergreen Eden green trees that grew all around. SHRR SHRR There were some noises in the bushes around. I took a defensive stance and put a hand near my face and the other in front. I know I am a total amateur at this, but this was all I could do at that time. Could it be a wild animal? What should I do? 155. Should I run away? But if it proves to be faster than me then I am screwed. Should I pick up one of the sharp wooden branches to defend myself? Maybe seeing that I am armed it would run away. But what if it is a hard body and decides to fight? Then even swinging this twig will be of no use. A figure much taller than my expectation emerged out of the bushes and ran towards me at full speed. All I could do was stand still and was unable to move. I knew, I would find you here. Lady Athena hugged me tightly and for some reason I could feel water dripping over my shoulder. But the same could be said for me. Lady Athena, you are alright. I am so glad. She was still tightly hugging me, but I need to remember what I was here for. Lady Athena it's a trap. We must leave quickly. I already know that. But you still came even though you would have been in danger. What are you trying to speak? Didn't you do the same thing? My hands stopped shaking, before I realized that how much we cared about each other, even though it has only been a day since we met. We understood each other. Our problems. Our insecurities. Our passions were same, we were always looked down upon and hated by others because of our weakness. Let's go back. We don't need to be here. Teleport. 156. What's the matter is something wrong Lady Athena? It's the spell. Teleportation is not working. And someone has put up a barrier to keep us inside. So that means we have to walk all the way out of the forest. What was the real reason they sent us here? What are they planning? What's that noise? No, this can't be. Did they really went this far? Suki we need to run. There is no time for explanation. Lady Athena grabbed my left hand and started running in the opposite direction from which the sound came. Just by looking I could tell that she was afraid to the extent as if she had heard her own death bell. She was death pale. Just what was that noise? Even though we were running at our full speed with all our strength we could muster, but the breaking of trees, the trembling ground, the far cries of the flying flocks of birds and the racing heartbeat of Lady Athena all led to the same conclusion that a catastrophe was about to hit both of us hard. Something gigantic and huge was following us at a much greater speed than he could run. With all the howling we could tell that this deadly disaster is soon going to catch up with us. I turned my head and there it was, as if my heartbeat stopped and my legs gave away when I froze out of fear in the same place. Lady Athena too looked back and she had the same reaction. 157. A supersized wolf covered in all with long snow white fur to the extent that no one could determine how deep the flesh must have been. Two long incisors jutting out from its mouth and the drool which spilled from its mouth was so large to form huge puddles. Woo -oo 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 
A chill shot down my spine, while both of us stood petrified by the fear and my stomach started hurting, were the sandwiches too much for me? Wait this is not the time to think about that. That's Fenrir, the guardian wolf of the peak of Mount Olympus. What is it doing down here in Barbara Forest? Did they really plan all this? Are we going to die? Broken thick silver chains could be seen surrounding its neck which made it look more mad and ferocious. An animal that had lost its control and has gone wild. Just the thought of it made the floor slip below my feet. Its eyes were bloodshot and it had already spotted both of us by our scent. It's only a matter of seconds before it catches both of us. Is this really the end? Suki we need to run. Hurry. But both of us knew by now that this was end for both of us. No, wait I can't give up like this. Not after I found true happiness and people I can rely on for the first time. Is there a way for both of us to survive? What if only one of us has to die? Yes that's it. 158. If only I die then Lady Athena can survive. I am already dead so it won't make a difference. But Lady Athena is working every day hard to grow stronger. While I was just having fun. Suki, what are you waiting for run? Lady Athena, I have an idea. Don't be foolish. If we stay any longer we will both die. Either way, even if we run, we won't make it. I held Lady Athena, and looked directly in her eyes. What's this feeling something is different about Suki? She is brimming with confidence. Was she always like this? Does she really have a way to save ourselves? Lady Athena thought to herself. Before Athena could respond to Suki, she ran towards the bloodthirsty wolf which was uphill now gazing at their prey as if trying to figure out the best way to eat us, but I ain't gonna let that happen. Lady Athena, run, get help from outside. I turned back at her and tried my best to muster up a smile. Don't worry, everything will be fine, I will come back alive. 159. 160. I could only listen to her voice and saw her running away from me, directly into the face of danger. Am I really going to be separated from her, after I found such a good friend and an ally? What is she trying to accomplish? She bent down while running and picked up a stone and threw it at the face of the wolf which hit its soft region, the nose. The growling of the wolf only became louder and more blood-driven than ever as if it would tear anyone down with its sharp fangs in a flash. She only made it angrier and started running towards the left direction deeper into the woods. The wolf growled once and after taking a glance after me it started chasing after Suki at full pace taking large leaps and crushing any trees obstructing its way. Lady Athena fell on the ground and was dumbfounded. Why Suki? Why? Why are you going to sacrifice yourself for someone like me? Why do people have to endanger their life to protect me again and again? No. I cannot sit still here, I must seek someone for help as quickly as possible Lady Athena ran towards the exit of the forest till the point where the reach of barrier is over, it will take up a few minutes so just till then hang in there Suki, stay alive for me. 161, Suki Kondos, this is the only way, if I have to protect someone I will have to sacrifice myself first, I am weak now and my life is the only thing I can offer to protect the ones I cherish, so, I will be the decoy, while Lady Athena runs away. Good after a hit that knows it seems to be following me. But I won't go down without to fight that easily. I have been learning magic by myself so I will put it to good use now. It seems that its nose and inside mouth are only the soft and delicate parts which I can hurt with my firepower. It lives on top of Olympus and so is suited to cold environment. Therefore it will be weak towards fire. First I need to slow it down or it will just hunt me down in mere seconds. Magic has been blocked to leave this place, but I could still use magic inside. I hope this idea doesn't fail otherwise my heroic sacrifice debut will be for nothing, so make it count. Dimensional storage. Four red and four white cubicles fell in each of my hands, while two each I took out from my pocket. Teleport. One red cubicle and one white cubicle vanished from my hands. Boom, boom. 162. A pale blue flame and reddish yellow flame soar up high in the sky. Two trees fell down and crashed on the huge body of this wolf monster. Yes, it worked. I shouted out of utter joy. The experiment was successful. 
At first I transported the five dot cubicles in the hollow of the trees and raised their temperature drastically to the ignition point and there it was my brilliant idea passing with beautiful colors. But there is still more to worry about, so maybe I will celebrate later. Run. At first it seemed it took damage but it only howled again and after getting rid of the trees, well that did by me some time but it only made it angrier. I need to run faster. Teleport. This time two one dot and two two dots of colored cubicle vanished from my hands. Boom, boom. Trees again fell on the back of the wolf, even though it didn't took any physical damage but it was slowing it down and by the howls I could tell that it was hurting it like hell. Yes cry in pain, under the splendor of my creation. Haha. <laughs> now, I had three dots, four dots and six dots, two cubicles each. I don't think it will fall for the same trap again. I am also running out of breath. 163, so it's plan B, maybe it'll to death. What I am even talking about. I cannot die here until I play all my hands. I found a tree with huge, fat and sturdy looking roots jutting out of the ground and forming a small protective dome. This is it. The final showdown is here. I stopped my feet and I felt burning rubber smell coming down from the soles of my shoes as I turned round and skid on the harsh ground. The wolf too stopped at this sudden change of events. There was a gap of 10 meter between us. We both stared at each other, but I lost. I dropped my gaze out of fear of dying. <laughs> the wolf was looking at me and taking deep breaths while the air it respired out made even the trees shudder around and difficult for me to stand still. For some reason I thought it was smiling at me and as if it wanted to say so you have given up. Good for you. And now quietly let me tear you apart and eat your soft meat. Something along those lines, I guess. You are wrong. So don't drop your guard you stupid beast. I took a step back and prepared my body for what was going to happen only the heavens will be thy witness. I shifted my weight to the left foot, allowing myself to lift my right foot and raising my right arm, facing directly towards the ugly vicious face of the wolf, without any hesitation, maybe a little to be honest and my hands shaking to be more precise. With all my might I threw the three dots and four dots cubicles at its nose. 164. Boom, 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 boom. Three out of four cubicles blew up near its nose while the other was a bit off the mark but it still exploded near its eyes and blinded him. Blood spurted out from the left side of his nose, while its left eyelid was bleeding very badly. Also the smoke and the sudden burst of light had blinded him, while the hydrogen flames had burned its face. He was in utter confusion and pain because all his hopes had been smashed by tiny boxes of a kid's play collection. All it could do was howl in a lame way as pain surged through his sensitive organs and messed up with his senses. What are you howling for? Things are not over between us. I took the pitching stance again and sent the last two cubicles flying into the air. Will it hit the right spot? If not then I am screwed. Will my years of training and shooting rebounds per game game come in handy or not? <laughs> the cubicle entered his mouth and I timed my magic until it closed its mouth. I started raising the temperature inside the cubicles in one full go. Shoom. 165. Shoom. Huge bursts of two explosions could be heard as the six dotted cubicles detonated inside this vicious monster's mouth. Smoke started coming outside his nose as it threw itself on the ground and started rolling and continued howling in pain and anguish. Shit, he did not swallow the cubicles. It only blew up inside his mouth. Maybe that would stop him, but just out of precaution. I slide through my left as I stole myself from the eyes of the wolf that was still throbbing in pain. I went straight inside the dome of sturdy roots till I could no longer press my back with the wooden wall. Thing are not just over yet. Not by a long shot. So just come at me with all you got. I started preparing my next magic spell. This time I started spinning water in my right hand clockwise and produced tremendous amount of fire in my left hand and started spinning it in clockwise direction at full speed. I cannot lose focus now. If I cower now, I will die. Even if my hands get burned by the fire I conjured, there is no point in crying now. I must not fear. I must not run away. 
I cannot stay quiet anymore, because if I don't act now I will die before I could do anything in return for the people who have helped me up till now. By now Fenro had come back to its senses. He was angrier than before and more disgusting to look at with the injuries on its face. His howls were louder than ever which resonated inside the jungle. Just by hearing it anyone could have frozen in their legs and would not dare tread in its territory. 166. It started walking to the little dome while it opened its mouth to eat its meal, which was obviously, me. Lucky me. Getting eaten by a heavenly beast on a fine Sunday morning. Then I will do the honor and grill it to its optimal temperature. Just come at me. It brought its two long incisors. The fangs as sharp as blade jutting out of its big mouth near the entrance of the door as if to take a last look at its prey, but my spell was almost ready and before it could lift up its head, I merged both of the spells and efficiently created a much larger plasma ball. Well that's what I decided to call it, and shot it back at the wolf that fell for my every trap by now including this one. The spell hit the wolf right at the spot where he was burnt the most. Steams rising from its face played the role of smoke screen which would later unveil the results of my efforts. Gr ra 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 ra. No, but why? I looked at my burnt hands which were hurting and the sensation of burning was killing me. The spell was obviously more powerful than the six dot cubicle. The spell had hit the right place, but the surprising thing was that it did not even flinch a bit due to the impact. So was it toying with me up till now? Has all my work and bravery gone to waste? So this is true strength, where any and every attempt of the one lesser than him fails. 167. Tears rolled out through my eyes. The dirt of the ground. The black soot of the flames, which covered my face and dress was all I could look at. Back then and in the end I was a nobody and I still am. Even if I tried to be a hero. Even if I held my own ground. Even though I gave my best. I failed yet again because I was powerless and weak. Even if Lady Athena was able to successfully escape. I will die here and will no longer be able to protect her or play with her. The wolf was slowly tearing through the roots which was the only barrier between its sharp fangs and my body. Just then I remembered the time I spent with Lady Athena near the tree and the promise I made to myself that day. No I cannot die here until I try to the very end. I will not miss this opportunity to get a new life and spend my time with Lady Athena. The faith she had put in me. The day she chose me when everyone turned their back towards me. The person who needed me was still waiting for my safe arrival, so I won't give up. I am not going to break my promise so easily. Even though in few seconds the dome was about to be broken into smithereens, I did not run. I did not look anywhere, but closed my eyes and focused again to create a second and much stronger plasma ball. More, more, more. This won't do. I need more power. Every bit I have to the very last drop. Even if I die here, I will take this thing down with me. I will protect what is precious to me till the very end so I won't give up. Ah. 168. Magic power was reaching to their full capacity in both of my hands, but something was changing. The fire was vanishing and was being replaced by a non-sticky fluid as black as soot. In a similar manner the water too just disappeared and a bright light orb grew in its place. Crack, crack, more, just a bit more, ITS not enough, more power, I need more strength. The huge paws of the wolf had already broken through my protection wooden roof and was about to land the final hit. Will I be able to make it in time? The spell is working abnormally. Why hasn't IT hit me until now? This has never happened before. IT seems that time is moving very slowly. Is this how people feel when they die? Damn IT. I just wanted to live once again happily and not alone. Was IT so much to ask for? Will I again die alone here? All helpless and nothing able to do. Just a little bit more. If only I had more strength GTH. This time instead of closing my eyes like my previous death. I will look straight into its eyes and will make sure to tell it that I did my best. But there was darkness all around me. As far as I tried to look there was nothing but dark. Wait am I already dead? No that can't be. That can't be true. 169. How? Why? Anyone is anyone here? Lady Athena I am sorry. I couldn't keep my promise. I failed again to protect what was precious to me. If only I had more power. Ah. Crack. 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 
The whole place had started breaking up like glass being smashed again and again. A bright light pierced through me and shot up high and higher into the endless dark hollow. I looked up and I could tell that it was the brightest light I have ever seen. 170. Almighty World God. Damn it. I only left for a while thinking that everything will be fine. And this is what happens under my nose. I started recalling what Athena told me. She came running and directly barged into my office. Just by looking at her face I could tell something bad has happened. According to her Fenra has gone berserk and Saki took the job of decoy while giving space for Athena to escape. Well, I can understand. She wanted to protect her goddess but sacrificing herself even before things started is going too far. There are barrier stones so teleporting directly is not an option. Also we don't know the exact location of Esraki. Is she alright? She should still be alive if she runs far away. But how can a human fend off against such a beast? As I scouted the whole forest while I flew high above in the sky, I followed the direction in which the howling of wolf could be heard. There were so many fallen trees which went in a straight line. How did the trees fell in this orderly manner? If it would have been Fenra, he would have just broken through without wasting time. As I was about to land I saw a huge ray of pure divine light while the dark matter curled up around it rose up high in the sky. A fierce windstorm blew up all the trees in the near vicinity, and the barrier which until now was isolating the forest vanished in a flash. I reached the point source of this abnormal power. All that I could find was, Suki lying unconscious while Fenra lay dead by her side. Its whole body charred and face burnt up. Blood flew all around it. I picked up Saki, and teleported myself into Athena's room where she was waiting. 171. Athena rose up from her seat and came running towards me. By looking at her face I could tell that she was crying. She wiped her face with her left hand, and helped me to lay Saki on the bed. Is Saki gonna be fine? Don't worry she is just unconscious and a little roughed up while running. I have already casted my best healing magic, though. I used my all-seeing eyes on Saki and then turned back to Athena to complete my statement. She might be asleep for a day or two. Take good care of her. I will be taking my leave. This time I teleported directly to the spot where the dead wolf lay. Its white fur had already turned black and its upper body was half turned into black soot. I would have killed it myself if it would have really hurt my granddaughter. But whatever. I clapped twice and an angel appeared before me. Find barrier magic stones in this forest and anything that looks suspicious. The angel disappeared just when I dropped the sentence. They are really quick on the intake. I took up a final look at the wolf and tried to figure out what events actually transpired here. At first point. Saki worked as a decoy and lured out Fenra while providing Athena the window gap to escape and seek help. A smart yet reckless move. Then somehow the trees in the trail which she ran are all destroyed. And she was able to run this far without getting caught. Which 172. Somehow sounds impossible for a human with a poorly built body like her in terms of strength and stamina. Finally she took shelter in the base hollow of a large tree. She must have first tried to use fire magic to scare Fenra off. But it would mean nothing in the face of such deadly heavenly beast. She kept on increasing her firepower to fend herself off. Even though it must have hurt as her hands were burnt pretty badly. She must have kept on firing even though she was being hurt herself. And finally the most interesting thing of all, she broke through her first seal and temporarily broke through the second seal. Protecting the people whom you love even when you are powerless and only death awaits you, which must have been the trigger of the breaking through the first seal. How smart of Urza. I wonder what conditions are to be met to break the second seal. Just by breaking the first seal. She was able to obtain such tremendous power. Using black miasma and divinity together in divine realm by a human, even I cannot imagine it. Having a soul realm representing abyss and assimilating the apple of tree of life. She was finally obtained what she desired the most, the power to protect others. Even gods cannot use black miasma because it is poisonous to them. Also divinity and black miasma cannot exist together. I wonder what future awaits her. Whether she will be able to control her mighty strength or be crushed underneath it, 
just thinking of them to make contact is considered a taboo. Finally the attack was so powerful that the barrier broke and even the soul core of Fenrir is destroyed. Power that can destroy and dominate over others soul core itself, a power even beyond their 173 reach of gods. I am looking forward to how she uses such a deadly ability and how it matures within her. This world, not only the divine realm but the mortal realm and the hell are going to experience a huge revolution. Now it all lies on the shoulder of this little girl. Whether she ignite hope in life of others or submerge in the despair of darkness and glory of war, the angel soon appeared and gave its report. We were unable to find any magic stones. However near every broken tree in the corpse of Fenrir and inside its body, we found this metal cube shells half exploded. Get rid of the beast's body and you may go now. I took the cubes in my hands and asked the angel to take its leave. On further inspection there were red and white cubes with dots from 1 to 6. Now I remember I saw these cube with Saki. Now I see, she is not only capable of holding such great powers, but is innovative and clever too. These boxes which had inflammable gas stored in them, she must have used them to break down the trees and make them fall on the beast to slow it down and threw it inside its mouth in hope to get rid of it. It is very much similar to the idea of detonating bombs from her planet, even though it may have not worked in the face of a mighty heavenly beast like Fenra, but the idea in itself is a genius. Using what little magic she was able to learn, she invented such a deadly weapon and made good use of it in a fight. She is truly a genius. I should totally make her my apprentice, maybe after she has completed her mission in Nilgard. I have started to like her more as my granddaughter. Even Urza would be proud of her to be able. 174. To defeat Fenra, save a life and turning table around even in the face of death under all the disadvantageous conditions. 175. Goddess Athena's room. It has been a day and Suki is not awake. I still can't forget the time when she made herself a decoy just to protect me when I haven't been able to do anything. On the other hand, I try to keep myself away from her, so that the other gods and goddesses do not pay much attention to her or harm her in any way because of me. But I was a coward. If only I had been together with her, this won't have happened. If only I acted a bit brave and tried to shoulder my responsibilities more properly and not neglect them then Suki won't have to suffer. Just by looking at her roughed up clothes I could tell that she was badly bruised everywhere because of running and falling. Please wake up quickly. I promise I will always be by your side. I doubly will never leave her alone again, because she is dear to me. Knock, knock. I went to the door and unlocked the door and behold stood in front of me the almighty world god. He went inside the room and after taking a quick look at Suki he took a seat and I started pouring tea in a cup from the kettle. The special thing about this kettle is that, there is unlimited tea stored in it and the temperature could be controlled in an instant manually by magic. Well god, will Suki be fine? It has been a day and she hasn't woken up. 176. World god took a sip from his cup and took a sigh of relief. You don't need to worry, she will probably wake up within few days. But, you see I came here to talk to you. World god is there a complication with Suki's body? If she is still hurt anywhere, please tell me I am willing to do anything so please heal her quickly. No, no, don't worry, everything is fine, it's just that her body is exhausted and adjusting to the changes, but it's very rare to see you so worked up and messy in a way. Maybe I am, I have just been so worried about her that I can't even focus on my routine anymore. It was all my fault to begin with, it was me who neglected her thinking that it was the best way to keep her safe, but at the end of the day I still messed up. Maybe I am really good for nothing. Maybe the other gods were right and I should withdraw from this reincarnation and saving the world business. How can a non-combat goddess even hope to save a world from all types of dangers? If I participate then I will only be putting her life in danger again. Even when Fenrir attacked us, I couldn't even move or make a decision. I am just too weak. Maybe Saki is better off without me. She is brave and also survived the attack from the deadly beast, which is a miracle itself. She truly deserves someone better than me. HFFFFFF, you don't understand. She did all this because she wanted to save you. The reason she acted bravely was because she didn't want it to lose you. You are her strength and not the other way around that you think. 
I didn't know how to answer to that. Is it really true? 177. Athena tell me what does Saki mean to you? Why did you choose her? Well, during the assembly, when I looked at her, I could see my own reflection in her. We had the same weaknesses, similar past, same passion and attitude towards life. But most important of all I just wanted to be friends with her and stay by her side and look after her. That's what I first I felt when I saw her for the first time. For me at that time it didn't matter whether I saved the world or not. But I wanted to save the person who stood among all, afraid of others' gazes who were looking down on her just because she was alone. Saki is my only best friend and that is the very reason I chose her. I see. Then I am sure everything will be fine, because Saki is your strength and you are hers. My neck felt a bit tight because I was overwhelmed with what I had realized now. Why don't I let you on a secret? Tell me who killed Fenra. It was obviously you. Such a dangerous heavenly beast is even considered impossible to be killed by some of the gods including me. Well you are wrong. Before I reached on the scene, Fenra was already dead. What? You mean? Could it be? I stared back at Saki, but could not shake off my feeling of astonishment. 178. Well, it is true what you think it is. The one who killed Fenra was Saki. But how is that possible? I had almost jumped from my own seat but my gazes were all set on him and what he was about to speak. Tell me did you know that she could use magic? Of course not. Humans or any other mortal cannot use magic in divine realm because they lack divinity. I am sure I gave her a book of magic but it was just to fulfill her curiosity when she learned that she will be able to use magic after reincarnation. Didn't you take her to the Tree of Life for stargazing? Why you do know about that? Yes after the banquet I was too upset so I took her to my favorite spot. Maybe at that time I just wanted to share my happiness with her. Well if you do remember coincidentally the next day was the ripening of the fruit of Tree of Life and it seems that the Tree of Life chose Saki as its consumer while she was there and accidentally at the fruit. What? Is Saki going to be fine? Everyone one knows that even gods cannot handle the soul power of the fruit of the tree of Lithi contains which has both divinity and black matter. But it just so happens to be the case. Saki not only properly assimilated the apple but is now able to use both divinity and dark matter, which is a matter of both interest and concern. I too realized it when I saw the Fenra dead body hole burnt by divinity and black miasma at the same time. So keep watch on her. 179. Is it my fault again that I took her there? Is she really going to be fine? You are worrying too much. She is much stronger than she looks, so have faith in her. I see. It has been a much longer stay than I thought. I will be taking my leave now. Well God, just before you leave, I wanted to ask something. If I try again, will I lose again what is dear to me now? Can I be really strong enough to achieve what I desire? I have never seen Athena, to open her heart to others. The serious look in her eyes, reminds me of her father. She has really grown up a lot in a matter of few days. Maybe it is because she is truly worried about the well-being of Saki. World God thought to himself as he drew a deep breath, when you wish to protect something truly special to yourself, you can become as strong as anyone can be. After God Almighty left I went back to where Saki was sat beside her, hoping that she would wake up anytime soon. 180. Fenra. In the era of gods, the heavenly wolf god was once captured by the devil race during war and sealed inside the netherworld demonic hell, and suffered endless torment which gave rise to endless hatred and resentment in his heart. Later, his obsession and hatred gave birth to an incomparably powerful energy that helped him break out of the prison, and he managed to leave the territory of devils with his own strength and flee back to the divine realm. This power of obsession and hatred was what took the form of a dead white beast Fenra later on. Afterwards it was chained at the top of Mount Olympus in a freezing environment to stop it from going on a rampage. Status window. Name. Fenra. Age. 20,564,499. Race. Heavenly beast. Level. 840. HP. 22,000 MP. 13,000 SP. 45,000 skills, body armor LV10, destructive enhancement LV10, strength limit over LV10, perception LV10, sense enhancement LV10, adaptability LV8, titles, 
Guardian of Mount Olympus, 181. Information brochure facts related to reincarnation Every student is reincarnated with their respective god or goddess in contract in the world of Isleguard. The mission is to unite the world of Isleguard which has undergone chaotic changes after the Holy Crusade War and evil forces are looming all around to seize the power control and destroy the binding forces of nature. Every reincarnate will be born as a new person with certain high-ranking position in society to facilitate their growth and the same goes for the gods who will assist them as they will be reincarnated as someone close by. Every reincarnate will be born as a being which corresponds to their personality and the potential they hold inside themselves. Every reincarnate will possess a unique skill that will be directly bestowed upon you by the divinity of your respective god in contract and is based on their attribute nature. Hence the more combat-oriented the god is higher are the chances of the reincarnate's growth in combat ability. After more than half of the reincarnate has achieved the age of 18 and above they are free to make their own decision and have full authority over their action while the gods are only just for guidance and in no way their words in the mortal realm regarding the decisions of reincarnate are absolute. You are free to use any means necessary you see fit to complete your mission and in no way the gods from divine realm will interfere unless deemed necessary by the world god. The reincarnate and the gods have to keep their previous life identity a secret in Isleguard. The gods or goddesses in contract are forbidden to use their full powers in the divine realm unless there is a sudden emergency to protect themselves from hazardous situations. 182. Dark Side of the Rules Laid for the Reincarnation Killing the Residents, Other Reincarnate, Gods and Goddesses is in no way forbidden, since the rules never mention it. The right to titles are decided by the actions the reincarnate take and are bestowed upon by the gods of divine realm or the divine system. You can take any action you deem fit to save the world whether it is good or evil in nature. The other reincarnate are in no way forbidden to interfere or meddle in the affairs of other reincarnates. Death of a god or goddess in Isleguard, after a god or goddess are killed or die due to some other cause. After some time their soul return back to the divine realm and are forbidden from descending upon the land of Isleguard again. Also the reincarnate in contract then is to be deemed as a failed attempt in his mission and is now a regular resident of Isleguard. Death of a reincarnate. After a reincarnate dies due to a certain cause no matter its nature, the mission is deemed to be a failure for the reincarnate as well as the god in contract. However the god in contract can choose to stay at Isleguard or come back to the divine realm. 183. Isleguard. Isleguard is one of the many worlds created by Almighty World God. It is one of the biggest and the most resourceful world in terms of divinity, magic power, dark matter and a multitude of mortal species that inhabit it. Humans, demons, elves, beastmen, dwarves, spirits, fairies monsters. Magical beasts are the major species in this world with human population surpassing any other species without any doubts. Every race and every individual have different affinities for magic towards different elements and hence magic is the part of day-to-day -day life activities. Whether there are students who attend magic academy, or adventurers who seek out adventures in dungeons or hunt down monsters, whether the imperial countries are at war with the demon race or a squabble of their own. The dwarves who are known for their magi tech and weapon creation or elves that are known to live in reclusion. Monsters that ravage the lands and dwells in the deep and dark parts of labyrinths or the magical beasts and fairies that have occupied the magical forests or live in the harsh conditions of mountainous regions. The world where once the gods themselves descended to lend the mortals a helping hand and defeat the tyranny of devils and denizens of hell. This war later came to be known as the Holy Crusade War. The legend of the heroes who vanquished the evil and defeated the demon lords, or the scholars who attained enlightenment and brought revolution in the world through their wisdom, or the great kings who were known for their economic policies and kindness to the common masses. Now after 200 hundred years of the Holy Crusade, Gods have again decided to descend on this world with new heroes to unite and save the world from chaos and reveal the evil plots that may bring the world to its extinction. At the end of their journey, what will these new heroes choose? What awaits this world is peace or war. 184. Status Window Every living being in the world of Isleguard has a status window, 
frame designed by the world system to measure and keep a check on the growth of this world. So, the reincarnators and gods will too be provided with this status window. Common elements of the status window. Name, dash, age, dash, race, dash, level, dash, HP, dash, MP, dash, SP, dash, skills, dash, titles, dash, health points, HP. This is the parameter that measures health status of an individual. If someone takes damage from an attack or suffers from an illness then his health points start decreasing. When health points hit zero the individual dies. HP points is directly proportional to health, endurance, dexterity, agility, stamina, body strength. Hence more HP points gained a day. Keeps the doctor away. 185. Magic power slash magic points. MP. This is the parameter that measures the amount of magic a person can store in his body and use in magic arts and spells. The more the magic points the more the person has an affinity for magic and restores magic from the surrounding easily then reproduce it slowly inside the body again. Magic power can be basically of three forms. Magic of the mortal realm. Divinity of heaven. The divine realm. Black miasma or dark matter of hell. The basic attribute of magic are fire, wind, earth and water, light and darkness are other independent attributes. Mixture of two or more attributes give rise to a totally new nature of magic like, wood, water plus earth, magmas, earth plus fire, and ice, water and heat manipulation. Then there are other special independent attributes like beast hammers, sound, lightning, metal, gravity, shadow and many more which depends on sophisticated and special affinity for the base elements. Other psychic powers do exist like telekinesis, space and time control magic, telepathy etc. Soul power, SP. Soul power directly refers to the individual's life force or energy. Every individual has his own soul core placed inside one soul realm. The larger the soul core and the denser it is the more the soul power is and the larger the soul realm and its constitution the more the soul power it can contain inside it. If the soul core ever breaks or the SP parameter hits zero the individual dies. Using SP competence practice special arts called or a spiritual art which increases every fighting aspects like instincts, mobility, endurance, combat abilities and heightened senses. Even mages uses SP points to convert them into MP and recover their lost magic quickly. 186. Chapter 6 Did I mess up with the reincarnation ceremony? The last thing I remember was facing the heavenly guardian beast Fenra. Wait what happened to it? Did I successfully escape? Did someone come for help? Is Lady Athena safe? Wait, first of all, where the heck am I? After that, I found myself in an empty void. I was unable to perceive anything above or below me, not even my own body. The only thing I was aware of was my consciousness, floating in empty space. I thought I had more time to spend with Lady Athena. Guess not. It was not difficult for me to come up with a conclusion that I was dead. Maybe it did eat me after all. I hope I was unconscious so I did not feel any pain. Ugh. Just the thought of it brings shiver down my spine. Wait I actually can't feel anything, right? Well maybe I was just too weak. After all, or the wolf was just that strong. I wonder how I will defend myself in the new world if I am this weak and died in the first showdown. 187. Thinking back, it's not the first time I was dead, but the only thing that was different from that time was that after the bus accident I had no lingering feelings or nostalgic disposition of ever returning to earth, but now, all I could say that I was sad. Sad because I could still feel a part of myself missing in this dark empty place. Thoughts about different kind of things I wanted to do and be this time. The aspirations and goals I had perceived and decided to follow with all my heart are nothing but merged in this nothingness. I wonder what happens to mortals when they die in heaven. Will I ever meet her again? Will I be able to find and make more friends like her? Maybe my time spent in divine realm, even if it was brief, was the happiest and well spent than the pathetic and useless life I lived on earth. If only once I could meet Lady Athena again, I would be relieved that she is well and thank her for everything she had done up till now for me. Ha! Huh? What? Wait. After a long time. I finally felt something for the first time, a warm sensation on my left arm and I think it was a bit wet, 
At first I considered it a fluke, but this warmth just was too consoling and to be considered unreal was out of the realm of questions. Could it be that I am still alive and just in a state of a paranoid unpleasant unconsciousness? Wait am I in a coma? Will I be able to wake up on my own? How much time has it been I am locked up here all alone? 188. I need to wake up and respond to my surrounding. I tried to move around my legs and hands but there was no response or even a slight movement in this blank state. Maybe there was no air. Stop thinking about stupid thing I need to get out of here. My mind just couldn't settle itself. I was afraid and at the same time too excited to do anything to break out. I cannot lock myself alone ever again. I have now things to care about. A person that I could return to. I started making strange movements. Maybe I was trying something similar to swimming. But it was to no avail. I shouted and screamed or sometimes scratched my face deeply leaving marked scratches. Maybe I should give up and wait. I felt like my eyebrows tensed up even though there was nothing else I could feel. No. I cannot wait any longer. There is only one thing left to try and that is magic. Ha 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 ha. But the question is will it work in my current state? I highly doubt. But it doesn't hurt to try. So the next step is to ask myself which spell to cast. Considering that I am trapped here then teleportation might work. But something bothers me. What if my soul actually teleports itself out of my body and dissipate in surrounding? That will be worst thing that could happen in my current condition. I tried to catch my head but there was nothing to hold. So the other thing that strikes me is my medical condition. So healing magic can be considered a good shot. But there is something. 189. I don't know whether the healing magic I know works on spiritual level or is only for physical injury. One would consider mine situation akin to soul trapped in its body. Since it will not hurt to try so I am going to give it a go. Divine Heal. Latest healing magic I recently learned in book. Glowing orbs of golden yellow light appeared all around me. It was warm even in this absolute zero state of mine. I continued casting my spell and visualizing myself merging with my body and being healed. The golden magic flowing from me didn't stop. It kept flooding out and away. It had happened so suddenly, but perhaps I could control it. Something about this golden magic flowing out of me felt so nostalgic as if I had done it before. For the first time I thought that perhaps I could change my fate by my own hands. Just when I was about to be done with it. These golden yellow light balls went berserk and started revolving around me at a very high speed. For some reason I felt quite infatuated with these shining balls first but things got messy when a dark black lace joined this skirmish of light balls. I soon found myself in a difficult situation where I was being sucked in by a whirlpool of light and dark strings. I raised my right hand high up in a final attempt to escape or at least with a little luck latch onto something and save myself from drowning. Ah, ah, ha, huh. their feeling of being flushed out is not pleasant at all. I was lying on a bed, with my right hand raised upwards. I was shouting like I woke up from a nightmare. Maybe it actually was a 190. Nightmare. I removed the white soft silky sheet that covered my body and was half up on the bed with my legs still stretched across and they felt a bit stiff. Maybe it was the tiredness for running all around the forest with that beast chasing me all around. It was as if I was under some kind of divine punishment. Scamper all around with such a non-athletic and fragile body is really bothersome and cruel indeed. Near me was Lady Athena sleeping while my left hand was tightly clutched between her two hands. Maybe I need to thank her again for taking care of me while I was knocked out and bringing me back to life. With all these movements Lady Athena had already half awoken up and as if trying to take a clear view of her surrounding and while assessing the situation she rubbed her eyes and looked back at me again. I'm back. Lady Athena. I smiled back at her still half asleep face. You are all right Saki, you are awake. I am so glad. I was so worried. I was so worried about you. While Lady Athena said these words with a face beaming with happiness and yet tears sprouting in her eyes, she tightly hugged me and started saying in a deep flattened voice about what had occurred while I was lying in bed. Maybe I made Lady Athena worried again. All I could conclude from her rushed confession was that I was saved by God Almighty and I was comatose for four days. 191. It was almost 12 in the noon. 
The orange light that rained through the window made me realize that I was all this time asleep in Lady Athena's room and with all the daily necessities like water, fruits, my clothes and some books. Some may not consider them daily necessities, but they were our lifeline for me and Lady Athena, were spread all around us. Are you all right Saki? Is it hurting anywhere? Are you cold or have a fever? Just look at you are sweating all over. I looked at myself and I was all covered in sweat. Maybe because I was trapped in that whirlpool, but something really caught me by surprise when Lady Athena brought her forehead near mine to check my temperature. My face started heating up as I blushed. She was so close to me. Is there not the concept of using a thermometer for accurate measurements? Well I don't mind if it's her but what about? Wait was she doing this every time when I was out cold in bed? I had just used healing magic so I should be fine. Well, I am sure the temperature was fine just a second ago. But it's now all high. Your face is turning all red. Do you have a fever? Should I get some blankets and a glass of water for you? No, Lady Athena it's fine. I think right now I need a bath. Then I will be fine. This high temperature is because of some other dot reason dot maybe dot that is. Okay then I will take bath together with you. No. No. You don't have to bother yourself. I will be okay. 192. I will be there. You cannot deny me. What if you faint inside the bathroom? I guess if it's that. Then it's okay. The next thing I knew was me and Lady Athena entering the bathroom after we undressed. Let me prepare the bath water. Maybe something cool will lower your temperature. Before Lady Athena could do anything, I had already filled the tub with cold water. Somehow my casting speed had increased. Also, I did not need to visualize the whole process with great concentration. Just a small thought was more than enough. Also for some reason it seemed that the water was conjured in more quantity than I had ever produced. Maybe my training has paid off, at least that what I would like to think. Eh, hey, ah, what, so well God, was right. She really can use magic with divine attribute. Is it one of the after effects of eating the apple of tree of life? I hope that she will be okay. Otherwise the unthinkable would have already happened. What would I have done me then? Dot. I cannot lose her now. After we got too close and know each other better, then that's it. I am going to keep an eye on her from now on. Lady Athena brought her fingers close to her lips which were somehow giving the expression of being amused. I wonder why that is. We got into the tub as usual, but for some reason both of us were quiet for a long time. 193. So. Saki, how far have you gone with your magic practice? For some reason I was glad that Lady Athena had asked me the question and I was so enthusiastically ready to answer it that I forgot what I had to say. Well, it was thanks to the book you gave me that I started learning about magic. I can even cast without chanting a spell. I can even conjure fire and water, control wind and change temperature of any substance. Then I conjured small flame of different colors, by collecting oxygen it was your normal orange yellow flame. In case of hydrogen it was a pale blue flame. For some reason now my hands didn't feel the heat or the burning sensation of these high temperature flames. Just out of fun and curiosity I made a duck out of the water from the bathtub and could even make a water bird fly around us. It was a lot of fun playing with magic. Indeed. However something was strange. With increase in casting speed there was another factor accounted that was maintaining my concentration while performing magic. But now I didn't need to concentrate, just the thought of perceiving the phenomena and channeling magic would do the deed for me. For some reason doing this felt so natural that I wanted to give myself a prize for my hard work and diligent training I had put myself through. Maybe if possible I could open a magic training school in Isleguard. She is really great at this. Not using chance, fast casting and efficient control over magic power. Just how much has she improved herself in one day? Just how high is her mental aptitude and visualization processing? World God was right, she really can. 194. Use divinity. However I can also feel the ominous black miasma leaking through her magic. It's a miracle that the presence of a positive field energy and negative field energy could coexist in a single entity. This dark matter is so weak, so it is neither detectable nor can harm someone. I have made up my mind, I am forever going to look after her and take responsibility, though it works in my favor too. 
I beseech the goddess of fortune and gods of destiny to bestow upon their blessings for her well-being during our tough times ahead in the future. Lady Athena thought to herself while her mouth was somewhat half-opened, still in awe and wonder. I am glad for you. In a short time you have grown a lot. Seeing you flawlessly use magic makes me happy. Lady Athena brought her hands together to make a small applause. I was happy and so at the same time the thing which worried me the most came to my mind. Thank you, Lady Athena, but I know this is nowhere good enough to match my other classmates. They must have already started learning much higher level magic and combat techniques, while I was just asleep for these four days. But I will make sure to work much harder and make up for the lost time. So you don't need to worry. She is just over underestimating herself. A human performing magic in the divine realm is an exceptional feat in itself. If word goes out it can create big news even in heavens and after assimilating the apple of tree of life makes her stand out even among gods. Possessing soul power stronger than most of the gods can make anyone feel jealous. But I am glad that even after that accident she is the same Siki as ever. Cheerful in every aspect. I, 195, need to somehow make her relax or she will overwork herself. Lady Athena while thinking came up with a plan. Don't worry I am sure things will work out in the end. So just lighten up, if you say so. I know, since we have less than a day left let's make full use of it and enjoy our leftover time in the divine realm before the reincarnation ceremony. Really, at those words Siki's smile was brighter than ever. Her smile is so cute that Lady Athena could not stop her hands but start massaging her cheeks and get a good feel of those soft cheeks. After a 15 minutes bath both of us came out and after drying ourselves, Lady Athena presented me with a set of clothes from her drawer. Traveling without your own set of clothes is really bothersome. Maybe clothes can too be made with magic. We had made plans to visit our most favorite place first, the library. Nothing can beat reading a good book and discussing on what you think about it with your friends. Lady Athena looked at the clock and it was almost two o'clock. Suki, all this time you had been eating porridge or some other nutritious fluid material. You must be feeling weak. Why not eat something first? So tell me do you have something specific in mind? 196. I do feel a bit hungry. But if anything I would like to cook the food myself for you as thanks. You don't need to worry about that. It's fine. Maybe next time. Please. If she keeps on looking at me with such an adorable face then I won't be able to stop myself to give in to the temptation. Okay, fine. But I will be helping you while cooking. T. Thank you Lady Athena. But where will be doing it? Usually I cooked my food in the room in which I am staying. There is a side kitchen in my room too. We first together decided on the menu and distributed our work accordingly. It seems that gods usually prefer to consume natural products than eat cooked food. Their meals usually contain items like fruits, boiled vegetables, rice, yogurt, beans, fish, eggs and meat dishes. Lady Athena was excited about learning to make some dishes from my home country. And I knew just by looking at her face that she too had an act for cooking. We had almost all the required ingredients for the dishes we had decided, and those which were not were brought by the angels. I was able to obtain some packed spices. I wonder, do they descend back on earth to get these things or do they just call for home delivery? We first prepped the rice and then sprinkled some salt on our hands and tried to mold it into small triangles. Then I created a small well in the center and stocked it with different fillings like tuna. 197 chicken and some pickles and then quickly wrap them in nori. Usually it takes practice to do it one go for perfect synchronization but Lady Athena got it right in her first two attempt. For the next dish we started beating the eggs and then season it with sugar, myrin, soy sauce, and a pinch of salt before pouring a thin layer of this egg mixture into a pan to cook. Once the bottom of the egg mixture is set, Roll it up in multiple thin layers until the egg looks like a thick log. Finally, shape the egg and slice into thick pieces for serving. The next dish we decided upon was fried chicken carriage. I placed chicken in a large bowl and then mixed it with soy sauce, sugar, ginger and garlic. Then after leaving it to marinate for at least 15 minutes I again combined it with egg and potato starch. Next was to deep fry it till it was golden brown. 
At last we finally stopped after chopping down some fresh red glistening tomatoes, onion and cucumber as salad. For some reason onions grown in divine realm, do not make you cry after chopping them. Egg and chicken carriage, ham rolls, dashy rolled egg, and onigiris were lined up in a row. It was not that luxurious but they all were the basic food elements that formed a bento box. Lady Athena had never tried Japanese food and so this was a new experience for her. We sat down together to eat and Lady Athena was the first to give it to taste testing. Whoa, it smells good. Lady Athena eyes were glued on the variety of dishes displayed before her. 198. I totally agreed with her. The smell really stimulates the appetite. By every passing minute it seemed that I could not hold myself back. After working so hard to prep the meal, one cannot hold back himself but praise the feast laid in front of us. The carriage were crispy and crunchy and were mildly spicy. As a matter of fact I hate spicy food. Red spicy food and my taste buds just never make a proper match. The dashy rolled eggs were sweet and juicy. Even the rice balls had a heavenly texture and taste. Maybe the after effects of cooking in the divine realm, I guess. Cooking and eating something after four days had enlightened me and I was brimming with energy. I carried the plates to the basin and Lady Athena helped me to wash them. We got ready to head to the library, since I needed to collect more information about the world in which I was going to be reincarnated. We decided that walking was the best course of action after our heavy meal. On our way Lady Athena told me about other events that had occurred during my absence. World God came sometimes to check up on my condition. I must thank him for saving my life. Also, since there was no proof or evidence found so the culprit was not caught. However all the participant reincarnators and their respective gods were not permitted to interact with other gods and reincarnators. Basically they were under isolation or a house, arrest. Lady Athena was well aware of every nook and corner of the library. According to her, there were books from all the worlds and the knowledge of the gods. The library kept on expanding itself as 199. The knowledge gained by all the realms increases. To me it seemed as a data reservoir of a divine system, where all the information is stored in an infinite memory space. Lady Athena picked out a fat, thick book with round bottom corner and a peacock blue cover was wrapped around it. According to her this book contained records of the history of the previous wars in Isleguard. However the most massive and biggest war even among all the worlds was, the Holy Crusade that took place 200 years ago. As per the records there seemed to be another reincarnator from my world blessed by the gods as the hero who would save the world from the clutches of evil. Then, there was the influence of the true demon lord, the interference of the devils from hell, apostles, who wanted to take control of that world and plunder the magical core reserves of Isleguard which was an important raw energy resource even for the divine realm, which even the gods cannot afford to lose, since it would topple the balance of the nature, the gods took charge of the war and steered the course of this profound hostility into an all-out war. Isleguard is one of the oldest and largest worlds, sustaining every kind of fantasy species like elves, ogres, beastmen, demons, dwarves, fairies, spirits, dragons, mystical creatures and many more. All of these species were forced, cast or willingly participated in the war. At the end the gates of hell were sealed and the chaos army of hell vanished like they never existed before. Even though both sides suffered great losses and no clear victor was announced. However the enmity among different races had hiked up and trust was vanquished from the land where once gods themselves placed their foot. 200. After reading for two hours about the pre-war political and social life in Isleguard I got bored. What really interested me was learning magic and developing my own type like the mini bombs, cubicles or combining fire with water and using opposite attributes to my advantage. Experimenting is really fun. I picked up another book from the shelf from which I had been previously introduced to and it contained several books on magic theory and its applications. For now I was interested in magic arrays and summoning rituals. Magic can be performed basically by two means, by chanting and the other is forming magical arrays or carving magical circle. The second method is basically used to make magical items and forge enchanted weapons. While the books basically described about specific and fixed designs of magical arrays, 
To me they seemed more like a computer code to perform certain actions when the set conditions are met. The same goes for summoning ritual where there are more than many ways to summon beings which includes dashed spirits, beasts with pacts, fairies, devils and even gods. 201. Goddess Athena. She really does enjoy reading books. Just like me. It had been more than four hours and she is not at all bored and one could say she grew more enthusiastic as time passed. We really form an excellent pair. But after what had happened and watching Saki on the brink of death just to protect me, was heartbreaking. If we go further with the reincarnation ceremony, I would be just pushing her in more danger and point of no return. If something happened to her, then what will I do? I will never be able to forgive myself. After losing my parents, for the first time I was able to feel comfortable around someone. Okay then, I have decided. Saki, there is a place I want to visit with you. I was surprised to see Lady Athena rose up from her seat in an abrupt manner. It was almost eight in the night. Where possibly can we go at this point of time? It doesn't seem that she will be taking me to the stargazing point at the huge tree spot. Well it doesn't matter. I will go wherever Lady Athena will take me. Saki thought to herself as she too rose from her seat and after putting the books back in the shelves she followed her to the exit door. After coming out of the library, it was already dark outside. There were no stars as usual and the calmness in the surrounding was making me feel nervous and my heart beat faster. I took Saki's hand in mine. Teleport 202. We stood under a dark night sky surrounded by a dense forest made up of humongous trees towering all around us. Anyone would have thought that we had lost our way and sense of direction while we hopelessly trespassed. These types of forest reminds me of those where people keep on moving but eventually reach the starting point again as if they were caught in an inescapable loop. A late night forest can seem eerie but it is an alien beauty of its own. Even in the starless night sky. The forest was illuminated by a special kind of flower whose petals glowed a bright pink as they lightened up a path in the most fashionable way possible. While I was still holding Saki's hand, I took a notice of the amazed face she mustered as she tried to touch one of the glowing petals. I remember now. I had almost the same reaction when I hear for the first time. I can't wait to show her what lies ahead at the end of this path. We kept on walking for about five minutes. During this time neither of us said a thing while I was too focused to think about the thing which I had planned. Other hand she must be in a bit of confusion of our sudden visit to a forest after the incident. In front of our eyes stood the bounty and luxurious beauty of nature as the lake appeared as if by magic. It was in teardrop silver in color and it was shaped like a perfectly flat disc of metal. No sound rang out from the shimmering emptiness of space around it. Monastery quiet. It was lined with evergreen trees and the whiff of fresh laundry clothes like smell wafted up to us. 203, 204, Saki Kondo. The forest we entered was oak brown and primitive. The grasses we stepped on were crackly beneath our feet. I was in awe of the size and majesty of the trees. Their knotted arms rose ever upwards, as far as my head could lift. They were hoary fortresses and stood proudly. We walked in and out of shady glades. The stillness of the night was soul-soothing. The forest's smell was fresh and organic. At the farther end I saw an opening, but the closer I reached I realized that I was drawn to a totally new place. An oval-shaped depression filled with azure blue water, a kaleidoscope of colors overhanging the becalmed lake. The green leaves surrounding the perimeter of the lake had a special luster to them. Several beautiful flowers grew at the foot of these trees and all of them were glowing brightly in their own little spots. Lady Athena beckoned to me and I saw a small wooden port at my left. We both started walking towards it and a small wooden boat came into my view. A thick rope was tied to one of the posts on the port while the other was hooked onto the boat. The boat was sturdy small, slender and yet elegant in its own way. Lady Athena climbed down on the boat and then gave me her hand which I gladly took and I too came overboard. I helped her untie the rope and searched for oars. Oh, don't worry, this boat doesn't need oars to row it. It too works on magic. I see. So I settled down on one of the seats while Lady Athena sat on the other plank facing towards me. 205. 
I could not hold my excitement. I wanted to know more about this place. For a person who preferred to stay closed inside her room for her entire life, fantasy places like this is a dream come true. If gods do exist, this lake is one of their hidden treasure. That might seem a bit ironic, as I am just sitting in front of one. The idyllic scene took our breath away. Unruffled by wind or rain, it was vault still and restful. The only sound was of the boat moving towards the center of the lake. I looked inside the lake and there were shining pebbles, glowing flickers of light, shining orbs scattered all around like elf dust in the great span of lake. It caused a penumbra of colors to illuminate the Buddha still lake. These triumvirate colors ranged from rose petal pink, grape green, salmon silver, neon blue, blood red, shale gray, heather purple and many more indescribable vibrant colors. I noticed a huge concentric circle form on the surface of water and a further jolt on my body as I realized that we had stopped moving. I looked at Lady Athena, and it seems that she is in some kind of dilemma. She must have something important to discuss with me. Suki for a long time I wanted to ask you something. Do you really want to reincarnate yourself? The road ahead is both difficult and painful. The powers I possess might not be enough to even get us through. If you want then you can leave all this and stay together here with me forever. I am sure no one will mind and also you will be safe here. I had never seen such a concerned look on Lady Athena's face. I waited for some time, trying to figure out what to say, since both of us were slow talkers. I took a deep breath and the glucose smell. 206. A vamba from the surrounding trees engulfed my nose. I felt so refreshed and at the same time motivated. I had no hesitation or a second thought in my mind of what I was about to say. When I was a kid I always thought it would be nice if miracles were true. When I slept alone at night, I always used to stare at the stars from the window and wished that tomorrow things would be different. Even though my parents were no more, at least my aunt or uncle would wish me good morning. I would be able to make friends at school or the delinquents would stop messing with me. I wanted something to happen without doing it myself. Miracles it would be nice if they really existed. But when I met you for the first time all my worries, bad memories, tears vaporized in thin air as if they never existed and I realized that miracles do exist for sure. There was someone who looked after me and maybe I could help them too. But because of me. The other gods and your classmates plotted against us and attempted to murder us. When you alone jumped into danger, just so that you could save me, I was so happy and at the same time felt so miserable. If something were to happen to you I would never be able to forgive myself. The idea of staying with you here forever is more than I could ever dream of. But after fighting that beast I realized that I had to do it, I had to do it myself or I won't be able to stand by your side. I am alive and I was able to survive because you were there to look after me. I know that you are the only non-combat goddess in the whole group and so the unique skill which I will get unlike others would also be of non-combat nature and so it will not have much use during a fight. But if I don't do it now, if I don't stand up for myself then I won't be able to do it again. Even if it is painful. I am 207 sure I will be able to become strong and keep my promise which I made to myself and I want you to witness it by yourself. So please, Goddess Athena, I want you to support me and in turn I want to be of help to you. I don't think I could be any use to you. I have always been weak my entire life. That is not true. You saved me in so many ways, more than I could count and ask for. When I was on earth I felt so lost. Every day I felt so helpless and unhappy but I couldn't cry. I thought being alone was more comfortable. Love, care, friendship these are the things that I was never given. But during the attack when I first felt something important being taken away from me. I was so sad. At the end of my awful life as a loser, I met you. If I hadn't met you, I would have kept avoiding facing my problems. I might have ended up somewhere worse. I promise you I won't give up. You brought colors to my degenerate world. When I am with you I am so happy and feel so alive. So that's why. I want to prove it. Prove it? I want to prove that my meeting you was the best thing in my life. I want to prove it not just to myself, but in a way that anybody can see. I will find a way to get things we want. Even if I have to fight over and over, 
I won't give up. So please promise me that you will stay by my side and will always look after me. Lady Athena lifted up her head and I could see a bright smile on her face and I could feel how sincere and heartfelt her words were. I promise. 208. Strong cool breeze had started flowing all around us. For some it tickled and at the same time felt so soothing and refreshing. For a while I had been feeling sleepy but now I was felt more energetic. But the wind grew stronger and stronger before I and Lady Athena were trapped in a cage of encircling leaves and shining petals of the glowing flowers. The surface of water was no more the flat surface we knew but high and low waves made the boat go up and down after regular intervals. The beautiful color palette which was engraved on bottom of lake was now vanishing as light orbs of different colors rose from water surface high up in the sky and moving in tandem with the petals. It's so beautiful. Every word I knew in my vocabulary would fail to describe the beauty of nature that stood before me. I raised my head and the surface of water sparkled with irregular reflections as I watched particles of light burst out from surface and join the dancing troupe. It was a lightning bolt moment for me. Something cool brushed my small nose and my eyes went round only to find a small yet larger than the usual orbs flying around circling me. It was white in color with a tint of blue in it. I tried to touch it with my fingertip and it started to revolve around me. This is the spirit lake of H even of the Eleonora forest. And that Saki is the wind spirit. It seems that it has taken a liking to you and this whole charade is her doing. Mild strong wind blew through every so often, setting my coattail fluttering and Lady Athena smiled whenever I fixed it back. There was a special elegance about this lake, where the only sounds came from the gentle movement of atmosphere and waves. I, 209, approached the boat's edge and touched the blue with my bare hand, then pirouetted away. A blue flickering orb of light rose up from the water at a great speed and a large amount of water followed it. After the water attained some height, I could but only gasp until I was drenched all over by the sudden heavy downpour. Saki are you all right? Your clothes and hair are all wet. Let's go back and change your clothes or you will catch a cold. Before Lady Athena could take any action I held her hands and smiled at her. Don't worry it's fine. I like being here. I raised my palm in front and water from all parts of my clothes, hair and uncovered body slowly collected above it. Thin lines of thread like water converged at a single point forming a small water ball. I then slowly made the water ball levitate in the sky towards the shore and sprinkle it all over the flowers of which I had become so fond of in a short amount of time. 210. See? All better now. I was smiling at Lady Athena. But before I realized a small green orb of light sneaked behind me and placed a small crown ring of flowers over my head. I touched the crown and was surprised by the sudden treatment and looked towards Lady Athena for an explanation. The blue light is the water spirit and the green light is the forest spirit. It appears that they like you too. Ah, I see now. The water spirit sure is playful and the forest spirit must be thanking me for water in the plants. However the taste of water was as sweet as nectar. I watched the three spirits play around me when I noticed Lady Athena staring at me. Is something bothering you? I have never seen someone from mortal realm wield magic in Su ch a precise manner. It is incredible, you completely are dry. After I have woken up, I don't know why but just visualizing things while adding magic to my train of thoughts. The phenomena I desire naturally take place. For example, I levitated a small amount of water and cooled its temperature while trying to change its structure into a perfect tetrahedral crystal. Then I brought it in front of Lady Athena. Lady Athena held the crystal and slowly rubbed her hands against it. Wow, you made a sturdy cry's towel from water. At first I thought it was ice, but it's as smooth as an ornamental stone. Also the light just keeps on collecting inside it. 211. That's because of total internal reflection. But there's more. I took the crystal and made it float high up in the sky, and then imagined it dismantling parts by parts. Out of nowhere cracks appeared in the crystal and it shattered in a blink of an eye. Tiny yet visible blue sparkling lights surrounded us as they rained back on us and finally merged back with water. The three spirits started jumping around me. It seems that they like the small trick. In such a short time she has developed overwhelming control over elemental magic attributes. 
she can even change molecular structure and break it, without realizing the heavy amount of magic it drains, but she is totally unaffected by it. Also, what's with the great three pillar spirits appearing out of nowhere and their sudden liking towards Saki? It all has only one explanation. Spirits are attracted towards being s with large amount of life force. But in Saki's case, three great spirits are attracted towards her. Vast amount of MP and SP, life force, are these the result of eating the apple of tree of life? But I think there's something amiss. World God is still hiding something. Lady Athena sighed as she thought there was no point in worrying. Tomorrow is the big day after all, Saki. Today is the last night we spend here together. I hope after we are reincarnated we will be able to meet again soon. I am sure of it. Yes. Don't worry. I will find you in a blink of an eye and then we will together save the world. 212. Thinking of the apple. Isn't the celebration for it today in the Cardlia city? Will Siki like to take a look at the festival, even though it would be reaching its end this late at night? Lady Athena thought to herself while she brought her hands near her ears trying to focus to hear something. It was getting late night, and we needed to head back to get our proper fill of sleep. Lady Athena insisted for me to rest more because she thought I was still injured. After seeing off the spirits, we reached back at the shore and unmounted the boat. While Lady Athena pulled the boat nearer I tied the rope around the wooden raised post and the other end to the hook of the boat. Those spirits were quite sad, when we said our goodbyes. Don't worry, I am sure we will come back. I hope so. No, let's do it. Teleport. I thought we were heading back to our rooms. Where are we? I was too confused to find myself on a steep cliff not far away from the walls of the Cardlia city. The view was just so breathtaking that I wanted to shout Yahoo. I could see the whole city in a single look. All the houses and mansion appeared like matchboxes lit up by special attractive yellow lights. Wait is this some kind of festive occasion? Today is the celebration for the revival of the Tree of Life. Can you hear it? Lady Athena had closed her eyes and was enjoying the cool breeze in which her long green hairs were spread like wings. 213. Hear what? I looked back at the brightly lit settlement and my eyes fell on the city square where I had previously saw a huge bonfire set up, but now a sudden bright flame was glowing on it. It was on fire. This sound. It's so soothing. Is this divine music? What a gentle sound. It's almost like this music is resonating with my feelings and calling me. My hands and legs have started moving and were totally in sync with the rhythm. My ears were hooked to the melody of the heavenly musical instruments and its tune, while all the surrounding voices had ceased. Seriously speaking, I'm not a big fan of music or dance, but this tune I was so attached to it. Would you like to dance? Usually they perform it near the bonfire, but I think here's still fine, but I don't know how to. I spoke quickly as I snapped out of my own musical world. Lady Athena brought forward her hand and said, I am not good either. So it's fine. It was such a tempting thing I wanted to do in the atmosphere of a dark sky night on a cliff near a city. It sounds so great. Lady Athena sure knows the best tourist spot in heavens. I took her hand without any hesitation. Lady Athena held my second hand and signaled me to follow her lead. At least that's what people actually want to say at this point, don't they? 214. Even though the footwork was bad and I tripped several times but I was enjoying myself. Also Lady Athena appears to be a good dancer, but we were too immersed in our dance and were mesmerized by the music that in the dark we didn't notice when each one of our foot was half in air. We were about to fall from the cliff. Loud screams were heard at long distances. I wrapped my hands around Lady Athena, and she did the same too, just during the good part. Such things have to happen and destroy the mood. Well, I had already come up with a plan teleport. Thump. We both were back in Lady Athena's room and were lying on our bed. I reduced the momentum using wind magic to slow our downfall. We lay side by side and our hairs and dresses were all messed up, but what we couldn't control was ha 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 our laughter. That was so awesome. Indeed, it was. After relaxing in the same state for some time, it was time to rest. The day had come to an end I would count it as one of the best days 215 of my life, where I got to enjoy so many things my dead life had to offer. 
I reported Lady Athena of me retiring back to my room, but she stopped me. Wait, let's sleep here together. I need to keep an eye on your condition, and my bed is large enough to accommodate the both of us comfortably. Okay. If you say so, I was glad and excited about a sleepover. Well I was asleep for four days in her room, but that doesn't count because I was unconscious. So this is my first sleepover. We changed into our night dress and both of us fell asleep soon after. 216. A dream? Good morning class. I am your uh, new homeroom teacher. I hope you all have a memorable school life this year too. What is happening? Was I not in heaven up till now? Could it all be a dream? No, I refuse to believe it. Lady Athena was real. I need to go back to her. As far as I remember this is my first day at school in class 2C. The day I transferred. Well I don't remember anything what happened that day. But one thing was clear that all this time I was sad. The hair which used to cover my eyes so that I could hide myself from the world, were now curled back to my ears after I met Lady Athena. I was able to see and realize a new light that had filled me with curiosity and joy, but now back in school those rough black hairs were back to steal my new vision. Class bell rang and then came the recess time. As usual I thought I would be alone. But out of nowhere Sigura and Tama approached me. You are the new student. I hope we get along. Yeah. Let's be friends. What is happening? Okay. If you say so, I know. Why not meet together at the backyard and then celebrate your first day in our class? Okay then, Sigura you will accompany her to the location. 217. Finally the dismissal bell rang and I saw Sigura rose up from her front seat and quickly made her way to my last hand seat. Let me hold your bag for you. After all today is your special celebration day. Follow me. I followed her through the classroom, corridor and then finally the back alley. We have finally reached. Sigura while holding my bag introduced me to the other girls who were smiling at me. Meet Tama and Saki your new friends. If it was me from six months back then I would have ignored all those evidences in my wake which were screaming at me. The evil smile on their faces, their unnatural way of taking my belonging, luring me out here. Despite I remember all the small chit chat and staring looks of my other classmates. She is trapped. They found a new scapegoat. There is no helping her. Just leave her be. She doesn't look that friendly or special at all. No one tried to warn me properly, and my naive previous self fell for the foolish desires of having friends. I knew what was coming now. Sigura pushed me down and pinned me to the ground. She threw the bag towards Saki. Saki unzipped it and searched through every 218 corner of it. She took out all the money from my side chain and threw the bag at me. Now be a proper girl and let us borrow some money. Though it isn't enough it will do for now. Please don't he take it. That money is for buying for lunch. I won't complain to anyone but please give it back. I am sorry if I offended you in any way. What did you say? Don't you want to be friends with us? So you need to make an offering. Nothing comes free here princess. Siguro had tightened her grip, even though I was not resisting. My hands were hurting and my clothes were dirty now. Why? Things always end s up like this. Why keep repeating even though I knew this was going to happen? I didn't run away but quietly accepted it. Has anything really changed at all? If only Lady Athena was here. I need to go back to her. To keep my promise, I must try harder. Even though it's little I must do something. Even if it hurts I won't back down anymore. I will surely break free this time. With all my strength, I pulled my legs back and pushed it upwards like a spring. Sigura was taken by surprise and was thrown back. I took out a large piece of cloth from my pocket handkerchief, and then threw it at Saki. I snatched my bag from her while she was still in confusion and started running towards the exit gate. I did not look back. My eyes were closed, but my feet kept on running they didn't stop. I opened my eyes and saw that I was still running but my surrounding had changed now. Somehow my 219 hands felt a bit heavy. I was running on a golden lit road which seemed to be endless. I looked at my hands and my bag was gone. Instead there was a white sword in my left hand and a black sword in my right T hand. What's going on? It did seem that I had seen these two swords earlier, but before I could remember them, it seems that my luck ran out again. The road had disappeared and I was falling down now. 
I had pretty much gotten used to this type of treatment in my dreams now, but still the sensation of falling from an unknown height is still in no way a relaxing experience. The sword from my hands slipped as I saw them flying away from me. I projected my hands high up in the final attempt to catch them but to no avail. Somehow I had a strong feeling and felt a great connection to these two swords, but there was no time to think, because I was awake now and I could hear the deep breaths of Lady Athena who was sleeping beside me and for some reason she was very close. Why did I remember such a thing which I had forgotten long ago? But it doesn't matter now, I have changed, maybe a bit, but I have. Now I had someone I could depend upon and our bonds grew deeper and deeper by the time we spent together. Now if I think about it, the things I said yesterday to her, my face was turning red, as if embarrassed, dazzled, awkward, my eyes narrowed and a smile appeared on my face. I turned my face towards Lady Athena and in an attempt to wake her up my hands slowly approached her cheeks and after a slight hesitation I, 220 poked her with my fingers. Her cheeks were soft and my fingers went deep. She woke up with just a single touch. Good morning. As usual she woke up after rubbing her eyes and greeted me with a good morning too. She took a sudden look at my bright red face, and brought her forehead close to mine until they were in contact. I was startled. Saki your face is all red. Are you feeling feverish? No I am fine. It's just that I woke up now. My temperature started cooling down after Lady Athena moved her face away. I am still no use to it. Hugh, both of us were quite after this exchange, because we both have now to visit the temple in the Pantheon for the reincarnation ceremony. We don't know when we will get to meet each other, so we were still worried and the thought of being separate scared us. We both as usual together took our baths and got dressed for the ceremony. While Lady Athena was wearing the same dress which she wore in the reincarnation ceremony. I on the other hand decided to wear a blue shirt, brown blazer unbuttoned and a blue skirt. We had to leave after two hours, as the ceremony was scheduled at 12 o'clock. We decided to make the breakfast ourselves and settled on to make sandwiches, rolled omelette and eggs, with fury cake. After we had finished our meal. An angel appeared at our door with an invitation to the temple. Finally it's happening. I wonder what awaits us in the new world. 221. For now to answer our summons, we are going to visit the temple. Lady Athena held my hand and kept pressing it harder and harder and yet it was light and gentle. I could tell she was anxious and so was I. I did not speak a thing but the warmth of our hands was more than enough to calm us. Teleport. 222. The temple. We were standing in front of a huge marble building with a central tower and a dome at the top. It was as grand and as beautiful as wealth and skill could make it. Many beautiful fountains, statues and flowers surrounded the perimeter. It seems that we are late. Others have already arrived. Let's go Saki. Okay. Lady Athena as if catching the hesitation and the sensation of fear in my voice spoke to me. Don't worry, I will be there with you. So let's go. We climbed the small flight of stairs to the huge entrance which was half concealed by the gigantic white marble doors. Its interior gives a sober and bare impression by its lack of ornaments and statues in the nave. The ribbed vaults, supported by compound piers, are closed by ornamented keystones. Light enters the church through blue stained glass windows of the clostry and the tall, traceried windows in the side walls. We reached the end of the corridor and entered yet another big hall with a much larger dome covered in red petal glass. And as usual the source less, light still haunted me. All the eyes were suddenly focused at us and like a reflex I suddenly caught onto Lady Athena's hand. We could hear all types of murmur going around. How are they still alive? 223. Were they really attacked by the heavenly beast or was that just a flying rumor? Still why do they bother even coming here? Right it doesn't make a difference, because they won't be able to accomplish anything. Several footsteps could be heard heading in our direction. I lifted my head and saw Goddess Freya, Goddess Aphrodite, Goddess Ova and Goddess Artemis accompanied by Sigura, Kendo and Saki Honda. I am so glad Saki you are still alive after that ferocious beast attacked you. We were so worried, to hear that our classmate had such a fateful encounter. 
Goddess Freya and Goddess Artemis stepped forward. Lady Athena clenched my hand tightly and I could look at her and tell that she was ready to face anything whatever one could throw at her. Athena I heard that your human partner was attacked. It's so depressing just to think about how the beast could have eaten you alive. Now you sure understand the difference in our power. If World God wouldn't have helped you, then both of you would have perished before even reincarnating. There is still time just turn back and go hole yourself up in your small room. All the other present attendees were giving us the silent treatment, but Lady Athena looked unfazed by all of it. You. Both are wrong. You don't know the first thing about us. 224. Goddess Freya looked angry and made no attempt to hide her contempt or hatred at her defiance. She took another step as if to punch Lady Athena, but then someone barged through the entrance and for some reason the whole hall panicked and I felt a bit of suffocation. It was as if I was brought upon on my knees by some supreme invisible power at play. I looked around the room and everyone had the same expression of a slight pain and fear. The almighty world god has made his appearance in the founder's altar and will now begin the proceedings of the reincarnation ceremony announced one of the angels in his somewhat high and mighty tone. The world god as usual held a scepter in his hand and accompanied by a huge elegant yet wild eagle. He walked from the entrance to the other end of the hall and made a small tap with his scepter on the floor. The hall started shaking and the small area on which he stood rose high above from the ground. My children and humans of the mortal realm, we have all gathered here on the auspicious occasion of your reincarnation into the new world. May my blessings be with thou who have decided to step into this new world save it from falling apart. I congratulate you all for getting a new life and may you achieve everything you desire and fulfill your dreams and I shall wait here for your safe return and will be looking upon you as you overcome all the hurdles life throws at you. Everyone started clapping, though it was a bit disarrayed and not synchronized, but for some reason World God was slowly rubbing. 225. His fingers at the end of his beard. I could tell that he looked smug. Maybe the speech was just to catch everyone's attention. We will now begin the reincarnation ceremony. I shall explain you the different things you need to know. World God this time raised his scepter high up and small flicker of lights burst out from his magical stick and disappeared after giving off a bright light. Several magical circles formed round the building, the largest drawn at the center of the hall. It had two inner magical circles and at the center of the biggest magic circle a small white altar stood with a green glass ball as big as a soccer ball. This suspiciously looking sorcery ball also gave a faint green light which caught my attention for a while. Now I shall ask each PIR of you to step in each of the small magical circle and place your hand on the orb of the being. This magical orb will establish a permanent connection between the god and the partnered human. This ball will also help the gods to bestow upon their unique skill onto you and then you will be reincarnated into the world of Isengard. The first one to step forward and volunteer was Homura, Kentu and Goddess Freya. It seems that they are in a bit of hurry. They took each of their position on the magical circles and slowly placed their hands on the magic orb. After a few seconds a white light emerged from the center and blue light came falling down upon us from the sky. I was blinded by the sudden bursts, but I slowly opened my eyes which were trying to accommodate themselves as per the surroundings. And the two were gone. The first ceremony was successful. Remember that in this new world you will be born in a new body and we have kept in mind 226 that you all are born in a perfect environment where you can train without any concerns and seek the guidance of your God. We shall now move to the next pair. Time flew by. As each and every pair stepped forward and the same process repeated itself, all the other 19 duos had left the divine realm and had reincarnated themselves. It was just too easy. I was expecting something more eventful and action-oriented. Guess not. Suki let's go. We are the last. Yeah. We both took our respective position on the magic circle. Suddenly the world god himself stepped down from his elevated position. Before I could notice, we three were the only one present in the temple hall. I am sure. You are feeling well now. The world god was standing in front of me and in his usual wise tone that was adenoidal in nature caught my attention. Yeah, I am fine. Well dot dot grandfather, goddess Athena had been looking after me the whole time. 
thank you for your concern, for some reason, I ended him calling grandfather, maybe because he had previously asked me to do so, I hope he doesn't consider it disrespectful, I like the sound of that, I wish you best of luck on your journey, now let's continue with the ceremony, I stepped forward towards the altar, where Lady Athena was waiting for me, 227, we both were looking at each other, but couldn't come up with what to say, just before placing our hands on the magic orb, I will do my best to find you soon, I will do my best to find you soon, we both simultaneously spoke the same thing, we smiled at each other, while our hands involuntarily touched the magic sphere, it was kind of smooth and cold, but suddenly my hand felt a bit of repulsion, my whole body was hurting, I took a step back, red streaks of lightning fell all around me, was it supposed to be like this? Something was wrong for sure. Before I could look at my surrounding I fell unconscious and crashed on the ground. The last thing I saw before my eyes shut down was Lady Athena running towards me. 228. Goddess Athena. What's happening? Why the ground is shaking? Something's not right. Why this red lightning is ravaging the temple hall? Saki. She is hurt. Oh, no she fell down on ground. I ran towards her in full speed. But before I could reach, her body disappeared in thin air, my mind went blank, Suki was gone, and I was still here, I didn't know what to do, what could have gone wrong this time, I looked towards another person in the room, who was standing a bit further away and he too seemed surprised with the sudden occurrence, I was by now, half lying on the floor, I stood up and took long steps to quickly reach where this other person was standing, well god, what happened here and why? It seems too bizarre for me too. But I think there is no need to worry about. The reincarnation was successful. It's just that I can't trace back her location. She might have ended up in an entirely different location and body than intended. Phew, I mean, you already have noticed by now, that she possesses a tremendous amount of soul power. Yeah, but is it even possible for a human? But why was it first undetectable before? There is one thing I hadn't told you about. What is it? Please tell me. 229. After Saki was able to assimilate the apple of Tree of Life, I got curious and checked into her origins. It seems that she is actually a descendant of Goddess Urza. Though she didn't possess my blood, she was born with a tremendous amount of soul power. The reincarnation circle helps the soul to find a perfect body that could handle the implant. So, considering her case, the results were obvious, the magic circle went berserk but hopefully it was able to find a perfect body and synchronize with her soul. Wait, you are telling me she is Aunt Urza's daughter? I still remember when she went missing after the war. My mother and she were good friends. She also used to play with me when I was a kid. She was the one who took me to the spirit lake for the first time. While I was reminiscing about the past, I was soon interrupted by the familiar voice. Well. You are still here. You need to complete the ceremony. Just go and place the hands on the orb and ceremony will be completed. I still had my concerns, but it was better to follow world god's direction than sit and do nothing. I went to the magic circle and placed my hands on the orb and a white light enveloped my body. Don't worry Saki, I won't stop until I find you. The light show seemed to have been over. All the player pieces were now set on the table. 230. All that was left was to sit and watch how thing play out. Is there still hope left? Will the dark forces take full control or these braves would be victorious in their endeavor? 231. Suki Kondo. Kwa. My head hurts. At the same time, I feel uncomfortable, like something is stuck in my throat. I see and take it anymore, so I opened my eyes. I can't see clearly. Everything is blurry. But after a while, I still couldn't see anything, it was all dark, I think I fell asleep now, but my head doesn't hurt now, I am all good, now about my situation, it's not at all familiar, all I could remember was that I was in some sort of reincarnation ritual, that's it, I must be in my mother's womb, wait, don't tell me that I will be conscious here for 9 months, it seems that it has been an eternity now, I sleep, think, imagine eating food, Sometimes talk to myself and sometimes imagine playing with Lady Athena. I wonder what she is doing. Is everyone going through the same phase as I am? I remember all the nice places I had visited with her. 
They were engraved in my memory because no one ever took me to visit such beautiful places or on a trip. I am getting bored. Maybe the gods would have provided us with some books or video games. Even a mobile phone with internet connection works. But what about the charging cable? Will they provide us with that too? Ah, I am going to sleep now. The me awoke. Please wake me up after some time the me going to sleep now. 232. I think I am getting used to this. My surroundings still remains dark. I wonder the time when I am born. How should I greet my new parents? Maybe I should make a smile and say nice to meet you. Or should I go with putting a normal crying act in my father's hands? Will I be able to speak just after I am born? Will my new parents freak out if I do that? I don't remember anything about my real parents, but I promise I will be a good girl and do everything to keep my new mother and father happy. I can't even use magic here. What a waste of time. I could have practiced a lot. All I could do was think of several interesting ways I could use magic. Well my cubicle bomb idea worked. I thought about different ways I could use water element or fire element as attack spells. I remember now I never used any earth attribute magic. Wind was another aspect I took less interest in. But here I was devising different kind of magic spells, several odd combinations. I wonder how many of them will work. Should I learn swordsmanship when I come of age? I will ask Lady Athena for her advice. I wonder what my face would look like. I knew I was pretty in my previous life and many people who took a close look at my face never denied it. Boo I still don't think I was that good looking, was I? I think I had, fallen asleep again. I feel a little weak now. Bump, bump. What, is the time has come. Surprise. I am here. Should I start with introducing myself? Wait newborns don't speak. I wonder what? 233. Kind of face I should make. Or maybe I will usually cover my face with my hairs as usual. I wonder will I be born with long hairs or not? Just think something. Bump. Bump. Wait could I be in a ride now? The road sure is bumpy. It doesn't hurt, but feels a bit nauseated. Just stop the vehicle already driver. R. Nobody is hearing me. It's so lonely here. Crack, crack. What is this weird cracking sound? Is it supposed to be like this? The voices. They just keep on getting louder. I can just faintly hear some rustling sounds from outside. Well, regardless of how sketchy this situation is, I feel being crushed under something. Ah. That hurts. I felt my whole weight push against something hard. For some reason I was quickly becoming conscious of my whole body, which up till now never existed. This is weird. I feel more legs and hands than I could possibly have. Is something wrong with me? Bump. What kind of stupid ride is this? Bump. Fine if you are so stubborn, then take this. 234. I took a stance, pulled one of my limbs back. Since I couldn't make out which of my limbs is my leg, I applied a bit tension in my muscles and swinged it with all my might. Crack. A huge white chunk fell on the ground and dim light poured in the pitch black world of mine. I still couldn't see much, but in the dim light I could at least make out some of my surroundings. There were bare rocks all around, and a jagged ceiling looming above. The ground was strangely bumpy and uneven. I took a deep breath and my vision was kind of bit strange. It was not human at all. It felt like a more 360 degree view. Could it be my superpower? The all viewing eye. Well, I couldn't come up with a good name instantly. Now time to see who my parents are. Ah, uh, I forgot to cry. Should I start now? I looked around a bit. It sure is bit dark, but that will do. It's better than seeing nothing. Now back to my search finding parents. What's that thing? My jaws dropped, and my mouth was left wide open. My breath caught in my throat. A monster? No it's a lizard. Is it really supposed to be that gigantic? I almost fainted. But I need to keep my wits up. This is not a situation to fall unconscious. My danger senses are ringing. Wait what's that? Do I really have such a thing? Could it be another power of mine? The sixth sense. 235. I took a deep breath. It helps me keep calm. During emergency situations, my newborn instincts were screaming of how unsafe the situation was. 
I need to survive if I want to meet the person I have been waiting for all this time. I was inside a small white in case which was half broken thanks to my super ultimate fast power jacked kick. A huge red lizard, with a long tail and a boulder attached at the end of it was rolling this small oval sheath with the help of his nose. I could feel the warm air entering and leaving the two huge openings. Good. It hasn't noticed me yet. I took a look on the other side, and I was about 15 feet above the normal ground. It seemed more like a mountain cliff with a downward slope. I had decided at the next bump I will start running and jump down before the lizard monster could make a move. All I could do was now hope that my simple plan works. 3, 2, on dot dot le, bump, and jump. A chill went through my head and my ears or whatever body part it was, were left in shock. It saw me. I am still in midair. There's still chance. I fell on the ground on my head. But it doesn't hurt much. I need to run. 236. I don't know why but it seems that all my limbs are being used for running. Well that actually makes me move faster. The place is huge. But this road is straight but I cannot ascertain how long it is because of the lack of light. I was running at my full speed I could muster, just after birth. There was no time to think about parents, or why there is a monster and why I am in a place which mostly resembled a cave or a ruin. What's this sudden howling about? I turned back and saw the huge lizard taking a step back and making a huge leap for me. It was surely angry and frustrated to see its food escape literally from under his nose. Run. All I could think was to save my life and wonder how I messed up during my reincarnation ceremony. 237. Epilogue. I was visiting the Tree of Life on my usual morning stroll. It has been two days since the reincarnation took place. I hope they are all doing well. Why don't you show yourself? I felt a long seemingly forgotten familiar presence just behind the tree of life. Could it really be? A tall woman with white hairs, crystal blue eyes. A beautiful young lady appeared from behind the trees. Nothing escaped you. And here I was planning to sneak up and surprise you world god. Urza I never thought you would ever come back in the divine realm. Well I totally agree. But things turning out like this. I couldn't resist myself. What are you talking about? You know, why I'm here. Do you really want me to say it? Fine then. I wanted to know about my daughter Suki. What happened that she ended up in the divine realm and also broke the first seal? Ha'ara, she and her whole class was chosen for the reincarnation in Idlegard. As for the first seal, I think it's because she had an encounter and a small scuffle with Fenra. 238. What? And you are telling me this now? I thought by placing two layered seals on her I would be able to keep her safe from all kinds of trouble. I think it's fate, that she ended up being reincarnated in the same world where once you commanded an army during the holy war. I think she will grow up to be even stronger than you. Really? However, during the reincarnation ceremony I lost track of her whereabouts and am not able to locate her by any chance. Is it because of the second CL you placed on her? Who knows? But I will be looking forward to where this goes. I hope you will too look after your granddaughter. Yes, why not? Saving pretty girls is the duty of every man. By the way are you leaving by any chance? You are too old for that. And yeah, I am having fun exploring different worlds in the mortal realm. So let's meet someday again. And so the two supreme beings just vanished in thin air. 239, afterward. Hello there. This is Noel Alicia. I'm not really the type whom you would find out on streets or pose in front of a camera, so forgive me if I speak my mind a little louder and make you feel like I am a ditz. Whoops, maybe I am underrating myself a little. Um, well then, this work is an improved and revised version of an adventure I always imagine myself being in. I originally began writing this story completely as a hobby. But at the end I thought to put it up on online publishing for others to share my journey on which I had embarked and create new bonds with unknown discerning eyes of the readers. As I write this, I'm actually still worrying that the book will never actually make it to completion or put up. But, well, if you're reading this, then that must mean my worries were misplaced. I hope they were. When I got reincarnated as a spider with my goddess is a story set in a fantasy world where gods often have descended themselves to purge evil and partake in wars. 
People worship these gods who bestow upon them super incredible powers and uphold their legacy by creating new 240 legends. Whether it is the war between two empires or a massacre between races, the beings of this world has always admired and feared the strongest. This is not your story of a hero defeating the demon king, or a leader building his new kingdom. The romance between a knight in silver armor and a princess or an expedition of crazed adventurers in search for mysterious relics that are beyond comprehension holds no value. This is a story of reincarnators who were once the part of not a peaceful but a quieter world, who would later on give up their humanity to save their own hide and become the pawns of gods and devils of hell to orchestrate a new holy war for their own amusement. At the end of their journeys, what path will they finally choose? Whether they will sacrifice themselves to protect the other or abandon the hope and will of others to protect themselves? Will it be determined by the will of the gods or by those who will foolishly challenge and defy the will of these all-powerful absolute beings? Anyway, I really have guts to bring a blindfold child's work to the reader's table like this, but that's just how I feel about it. I've already gone and done it now, though. All that's left is to hope that this first volume was to the liking of anyone who read it. Did you enjoy it at all? I plan to continue adding more. 241. And more eye-catching characters to this saga from now on, too. Something like a homunculus who became an assassin maid and an elven princess as a guide. For starters, if you enjoyed this volume, then please continue to support when I got reincarnated as a spider with my goddess from now on. Thank you so much, really. Another thing is that, I am still a student who just got infatuated by reading Eyes Kai Light novels and decided to write his own story. After coming from school and completing my homework, I would sit down with my rough copy which had a layout of different ways I had planned to move the story forward. I still remember the time I was always in a hurry and made several typo mistakes which took several hours to fix which is very unfortunate. I always imagined myself that I'd look a lot cooler sitting at a desk, typing up my novel while sipping coffee. I already know that wouldn't really suit me, though. It's totally out of my own taste and thrill of a busy workaholic man. Did I really call myself that? I'm aware that Siki didn't really make much use of her own powers in this volume, but don't worry, she will start gradually powering up from now on. She is going to be the most top, overpowered character in the entire history of fantasy adventure genre. 242. From volume 2 the story will be filled with thrill, action, adventure, mystery, fights, sword battles and magic combat. Believe me or not I am sure you will enjoy each and every move Saki takes in order to survive in this harsh world and make strong allies to help her in time of her need. Anyway, here are my special thanks for this time. To all those who read my work. You have my deepest gratitude. Noel Alicia contact me. Noel Alicia 14 at gmail.com. Volume 2. Synopsis. Suki continues on her journey in the Great Tathile Labyrinth, while defeating powerful monsters and adapting to the harsh and cruel environment of the labyrinth that always puts her on trials. Fighting the human army 5,000 strong or defeating the Apostle of Hell and becoming the wielder of Dual Blade of the Dawn and Dusk. But after an encounter with the ex-true demon lord of this world, it seems that her life has come to a standstill again. Whether that will be the end of her or not is soon to be revealed. 243. See you in the next volume. 244.